ไอ้เหี้ยจอกจัดใช่แค่ไหนจริงก็ไม่เก่งกว่าน้องสัตว์จริงแล้ววันนี้ทุกวันมาดิมาดิมาดิมาดิเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเบ่งเ
Jangan dia, jangan dia Masa naik Help, help, help Ayo dia lah Tak, tak Ayo turun, ayo turun, ayo turun, ayo turun Mati, mati Nice Tak suat dia aing Dia aing, dia aing, dia aing, dia aing One, one, one Pakai one别动！我跟别人。别动！别动！别动！别动！别动！别动！别动！别动！别动！别动！别动！别动！别动！别动！别动！别动！别动！别动！别动！别动！别动！别动！别动！别动！别动！别动！别动！别动！别动！别动！别
Doesn't get much higher than that for me. So yeah, one cup of tea, that'll do me. That's uh, that's all good. That's it. I'm a little bit jealous. I know Genome's probably caffeinated like I am too, but you know what? We finally made it a Genome. Five weeks of the group stages and we are now here in the regional finals. Are you excited to find out who will be making LAN? Oh, I'm so excited, Lace. I mean, you know, once upon a time, we didn't get to see this, right? You didn't even get the best 20 teams uh, in the lobby during these splits. And I think it's been a great addition to... The split and the schedule in ALGS ever since it was introduced. You know, it's that that awesome end to the season where all the best teams get together and you get the highest skilled lobbies that Apex South has seen. Exactly. You know, just looking at the schedule now, I feel like we've just blinked and we're now in the regional finals. Mm. Like, you know, I know the days go long for us playing sometimes 12 matches, but I do, uh, you know, feel like this whole split one has just been, yeah, a blink of an eye. Um, so it's been absolutely amazing. But you know what? We're finally here. We finally made it. Uh, and you know what? We're going to go and head into the production. Data. But at the end of the day, you know, what are all these teams sort of playing for? Uh, but it's, of course, to make it to land. That's what we're going to be keeping our eyes on today. Uh, but, you know, etched in the back of their minds is some dollar signs. You know, that's on the horizon. It's about $125,000. Not AUD, but USD spread across the teams. A massive $20,000 going to first place. And even if we look at the, you know, the teams there at 21st and 30th, um, they'll be walking away with some money as well. So it's an absolute great achievement uh, just for our players to be here. And, of course, very very exciting as they walk away, you know, with some money too. Um, you know, however, fame and fortune doesn't come easy. The teams will need to dominate, collecting as many points as possible. Um, and here is how the match point scoring will work in the regional finals. Um, so we do still have like traditional ALGS scoring, 12 points for first, etc. cetera. Um, but, you know, this is where things will change. So make sure you're listening up. Teams who reach 50 points will be eligible for match point. Uh, once a team or, you know, the teams are eligible for match point, all they need to do is win a game to win overall. Giving that team a one-way ticket to LAN, then the top seven teams with the most serious points will join the winners and head through to LAN as well, Gino. Sorry, do you just say that's all? As if, uh, I you know, say it's that's so, as all, if but... <laughs> getting to match point and then winning a point in the in the hardest lobby it's in the easy. region is that easy? <laughs> all right, well, okay, okay. Look, Laces showed up next split apparently to take it all out. Uh, that's what I'm hearing here. But yeah, no, it's uh, it's the the most hype format you can have in Apex Legends esports, right? You know. Uh, you got to play well to get above that threshold, and then you have to be able to clinch it to take it out. Exactly. You know, our teams have to be on their A game. Um, so, you know, it's, of course, we've got teams that will take out the win as well. You know, and like I said, it's a, it's straight through to land. But we also have to keep a close eye on the teams that will take the rest of the spots, um, which, you know, after that, we have about seven spots. Um, you know, it's it's tricky as is. But you know what? Like, let's take a look at our, our scoreboard. Let's have a look at who's playing today. And hopefully we can give a little bit of a further breakdown for you um, how match point works. But, you know, having a look at these teams here, um, you know, we've got, uh, I know it's led Legends Gaming up there at the top, uh, Elfish, uh, you know, Boogie Borders in third at the moment. Um, you know, there's going to be a little bit of a tight race. Yeah, there's a few teams that are pretty safe. There's a few teams that are going to have to do a fair chunk of work. And there's also a few teams that basically have to win this lobby if they want to make it through to, to land. In saying that as well, it's also important to mention that there are a couple of teams that are basically locked in. That would be Wonton Dumpling and Legends Gaming based on their regular season performance. It's basically impossible for them to fall outside of the top eight. So congratulations to them. Doesn't necessarily matter how they go today. But of course, you know, there's money involved. There's prize money and stuff like that. So you'd want to be kind of keeping as much on the on the gas as you possibly can going into this final lobby. You don't necessarily want to rest on your laurels. And you've also got to remember that this will essentially be your best practice going into uh, those international competitions. This is going to be, as Genome said, the best lobby that we get out of this season of APAC South. So a lot of work to be done, obviously, towards the top end for, for teams like Wonton Dumpling, for Legends Gaming, uh, thinking forward. But also for teams, as you mentioned, like Boogie Borders, Tom Yum Kung, they're kind of on that cast. They, they're definitely teams that we're expecting to make it through. Uh, and it just takes, you know, a semi-decent day today to pretty much ensure that is going to be the case. Yeah, exactly right. You know, we've got teams like uh, Boogie Borders all the way down to X and Y and 13th place that really need to uh, make sure that they keep it together to get those series points to stay atop that bracket. Um, but let's head more into it and talking about our teams. Um, so, you know what, uh, Elfish, which team are you hoping to not give the caster's curse today going into today's games. 
Yeah, certainly hoping not. Uh, Dreamfire was, was my pick actually here to, to talk about going into today's match because, look, I think for me, Dreamfire has always been one of those teams that has been a really strong competitor. And I was a little bit worried about them at the start of this season. I thought things started pretty slow. Their first two lobbies were kind of bad, 16th and 15th place respectively. And I was thinking, is this the, the end of what was a once great team? Uh, but as we saw them go through the season, they got better and better. They had a 6th, a 4th, a 7th, then a 1st. The most important thing to re realize out of that is that they have peaked toward the back end and we're getting some footage of that that lobby that they won at the end of last week. It was the final lobby of regular season and I tell you what, there's no better time to be peaking than basically right now. And I tell you what, they also were able to uh, do really well for themselves in that final lobby, not only just to keep themselves in a position where, you know, they're, they're, they're peaking well, but they also kind of kept their season alive in a way because the, the season was... Look, it was looking pretty rough, but they got those 25 points out of the last week and that shot them right back up into the top eight. Now, they're in a quite a comfortable position today where they don't necessarily need to, like, for example, win this lobby, which might have been the case had they not performed last week. Uh, so they've done enough work last week to make things a little bit easier, uh, but still a lot of work to be done, obviously, going into today and just ensuring that they at least have a decent day today that they can keep those scoreboard ticking over and get their spot at land. Yeah, exactly right. I know Genome, uh, you know, was uh, having a look at Dreamfire right at the start of this split, and uh, mm. we were a little bit worried for them. So I definitely agree with you there, Elfish. But yeah, they brought it home, which has been mm. absolutely incredible. But uh, you know what? The one team that I want to talk about, I'm going to ride the wave once again into the action, and it's one of our Australian teams, and it's the Boogie Boarders. This team is not new to land. They've been on the main stage. They've been in the pressure cooker, so they know that they definitely have what it takes to make it through. And who make up? this powerhouse of a team well it's none other than Racky, Bussy and Panna um, I know that this team traditionally plays out of Mirage uh, and Command Center on Storm Point uh, you know we've seen an exceptional start to Pro League with the Boogie Boarders um, they were the winners of the first week uh, in groups A versus B you know they did drop down to about an 11th the second week but you know turned it around quickly and went back up to about a third place uh, following that you know they, they always show consistency always being one of the top performing teams Teams. Um, and after, you know, following this team closely over split one, they seem to have a bit of a slower start in the first few matches. Um, you know, as as they, when they play on, you know, World's Edge coming from Mirage, they always seem to have one of the furthest rotates because, you know, we've seen a couple of zones uh, pulled to overlook. So sometimes this can kind of take them out. But don't let that fool you um, because once, you know, they pick up the pace, they'll be able to collect KP and they'll turn into a deadly unstoppable team. Um, so, you know what? I have full faith in them. They're sitting about third place now, so they're definitely contenders uh, for land. But, Gino, you know, we've had five weeks of exhilarating passion from our Apex South teams. Who do you have your sights set on? I'm going to talk about X and Y today. Um, this team started off the season in, in shocking fashion, right? I think they were a duo in the first week. I can't remember why, but it meant that they, uh, you know, picked up essentially no points, but then they bounced back with a win the very next week. And since then, uh, it's been a bit middle of the road for them. So uh, they kind of made the job very hard for themselves with that week one. But I've been really impressed with what we've seen beyond that. And now that we've moved into season 20, uh, X and Y being one of the teams... Uh, with, in my opinion, one of the better coaches uh, in the reason uh, in the region uh, in Yuri's. Uh, I think that gives them a big advantage moving into season 20 because we don't have a lot of coaches here uh, in our region, um, and you know, being able to work on your rotates. There's so much that teams had to change up. Um, going into this new season, and I think that's allowed them to adapt a little bit faster than some of the other teams, and I think that might just get them over the edge with a good performance here in this final game. Yeah, exactly right. You know, they did have a tricky start in one of our blessed little duos. But yeah, as you said, turned it around completely, which has been absolutely incredible to see. They've definitely been a fun team to watch. Um, now, what we're going to have a look at is exactly how everything's going to run today. We have uh, the same maps. We're still following with World's Edge and Storm Point. But as you can see, we're going to start two matches on World's Edge. Then we're going to flip the switch and we're going to go to Storm Point for match three, four, and then back again for match five, six on World's edge everyone at home please remember that this is match point so it's going to be a little bit different um but we're, as we keep a close eye on these teams do you know why you take a, us through the beacon and tell us where some teams are landing well do um as you can see here this is uh you know things have changed up right it's a regional finals it's not those are uh, the groups that these teams had been 
uh, you know, playing in for the rest of the split. And so they have to start worrying uh, about where they're landing. Obviously, the stronger teams get to, uh, you know, keep their landing spots, um, you know, where they're comfortable in. Lightning Unicorn, there's one that, uh, you know, they're not going to be super comfortable there, um, having to switch over to Fragment. Team Burger, who played very well from Trials and Skyhook West in some weeks, uh, have, a have actually had to move over to Skyhook East. Had a quick chat to Pricey about it. He said he doesn't think this POI is as bad as it was now that we've taken armors out of uh, the map pool, um, so it's a little bit better than it was um, pre-season 20, um, maybe not still the best. Then you've got teams like Boogie Borders and Dreamfire playing from Lava Fisher and Countdown. These guys uh, know these POIs so well, they've been landing at them for literally years. Um, you know, Wanton Dumpling in a powerhouse coming from Thermal Station. Um, that has uh, a POI that's seen some very strong teams in APAC South over the years. And obviously, Wanton Dumpling being no exception uh, with their domination of APAC South so far. Legends will start uh, in Siphon. Uh, you know, there's been some, some discussion about is Siphon really, you know, like an S tier POI anymore? Um, with those changes coming through, uh, other teams like X and Y might, uh, you know, potentially even be better off down at launch sites, uh, having more options there. But uh, yeah, that's uh, that's kind of the the beacon of where these teams are going to be landing so far today, at least on World's Edge. Yeah, exactly right. You know, we talk about, um, you know, we, we used to have like high tier spots to land and that was definitely when, you know, purple shields and blue shields, you could pick up drop genome. But like, oh, as we've had season 20 changes, sometimes that doesn't matter as much. Some of these POIs are still going to be, you know, fundamental due to, I guess, lots of stacks of guns and, you know, uh, ammo and etc. So, you know, it's still going to be vital for this, but I feel like it makes it a little bit more of a even playing field, Elfish. Yeah, definitely. I mean, I think everyone now is kind of starting to get to that point where they're feeling pretty comfortable about things. And it's obviously a good point for us now to actually be having the finals of the split. You wouldn't want the finals of the split to be the first games back sort of thing. But now players have had, what, it's been at least three, sort of three, four weeks kind of thing almost uh, since that, that patch dropped. And they've had a lot of time to start getting used to things. So it is looking good from, from my perspective. I think most teams are kind of prepared with what they're ready to go and jump into to this game and this lobby with. And uh, they've been able to match test that as well last week, which has uh, presumably been able to help them uh, get ready for this week, which is exactly what you need because everyone needs to be yeah. in fighting fitness today. That's it. Yeah, nobody can uh, slack off today and you need to be fighting mm. every single match. So, you know, let's uh, take a look at the scoreboard and we'll see where everybody's sitting in our series points here. You know, we've touched on match point and how that works. Uh, Elfish said earlier, Wonton Dumpling and Legends Gaming um, ultimately have a ticket through. Uh, what we want to definitely take a look at is Boogie Board is there in third place all the way down to about X and Y and 13th Genome. Um, these teams really do need to keep up their A game so they can either push their way into that top eight slots. Um, and then, of course, you know, we've got teams um, that can get the match point eligibility and then the match point win. Yeah, of course. Um, that is a very good summation of uh, where the standings are, Lace. Um, yeah, I mean, you know, SWQ, um, you know, could they take out the win? Yeah, I absolutely believe it. Um, you know, definitely an outside chance, but any of those teams in the top 20 do have a chance to make it over to land. Of course, if we do get one of our powerhouses winning, say like, you know, let's say Wanton Dumpling, probably the, the odds on favorite um, to take it out, um, then it just goes to the next seven teams. Um, so, you know, if Wanton Dumpling are already qualified, which they are, they, them and Legends Gaming, mathematically uh, impossible for them um, to jump out of that, that top eight. Um, it'll just go down from there uh, and we'll just grab, you know, the, the top eight to, to take overseas. Um, and have that opportunity to, you know, they're shot at the best over uh, overseas at land. Yeah, exactly right. And uh, I would do want to ask a quick little question uh, to Elfish and then you, Genome. So, Elfish, any mm. teams here? Obviously, we had a bit of a scouting report today, but any teams uh, you think might take out match point first? Um, Ooh, you know, you have any yeah. sort of, uh, I guess, little insight for us and maybe how many games they might do it in? I mean, that's the hard thing to really... To really answer isn't it like that's almost an impossible question to be quite honest we with love you. the impossible um, <laughs> pull, pull a name out the hat i don't know like i said i've got Dreamfire. i think they're always an explosive team that kind of shows up in the big moments so i'll kind of keep them as my team to to sort of watch but the thing is going to be like first of all i mean as far as how long is it going to take that can range anywhere between 
or realistically maybe is four is about the fastest you're going to get tonight uh to anywhere up to i think 13 is the record that we saw which was uh in apac north back in the day so um there's there's a huge range i would say we're probably looking at somewhere around the seven eight mark has been kind of the average for when that match point will actually be confirmed uh but obviously you know we'll have to sort of wait and see how things go sometimes one team just pops off on a day like today we saw that back in uh split one of last year i yeah. think it was when moist just won in they, they got match point in game four and then they won game five and it was like we're done already it was a, the fastest day of apex legends i've ever cast so <laughs> um you know i was pretty stoked about it thank you thank you very much for that one moist easy day right but um look yeah it's it's one of those kind of fluid things when it comes to this kind of a format it's very hard to call and really, I think that's the beauty of this format is that anyone can win on their day and today could be anyone's day. Yeah, I absolutely love that. Obviously, Dino, you know, we just saw, uh, was it APAC North uh, four games, right? So um, yeah. that was something absolutely crazy. You know, do you, uh, like, do you think X and Y could do this or what team do you think, uh, you know, might be able to get that match point immediately uh, and how many games? Uh, look, I think the one of the reasons I put X and Y there was because I think they can make it into the top eight. Do I think they'll mm -hmm. win the match point today? Oh, yeah, not, not sure I'd be putting my neck on the line for that one. Uh, you know, if, I, if I'm making a guess, honestly, I'm probably saying Wonton Dumpling in six is uh, is what I'd go for. I think um, Gugu is the best, uh, or I'm not going to say best, because I think, you know, that starts bringing in conversations about, like, IGLs and, you know, the other things you can bring to the team. Um, but the most, uh, the most feared, the most damaging, uh, you know, the most dangerous player in APAC South right now, I would say is Gugu on the roller from Wonton Dumpling. So, uh, you know, that is the kind of firepower you need, um, to just blast through a final lobby here. And I think Wonton, uh, you know, despite some detractors and people saying, you know, they didn't have the macro, um, to pull through, I've continued to pull ahead of the pack here in APAC South, and I think they've got a chance to... Um, to really to really take it out and cement that first place finish. Yeah, exactly right. You know, uh, we're, we're obviously going to be having a look who's going to sit above that bracket. But yeah, we just can't take out once on Dumpling and Legends Gaming. They're sitting at the top there. They're still going to be, you know, huge contenders going into that, um, you know, so they could still potentially get that uh, eligibility for match point quite quickly. Like you said, Gino, you know, we've seen once on Dumpling absolutely steamroll uh, everybody in their path and winning on top of that. So um, they're definitely very, you, you know, I wouldn't say kill hungry. That's what you would kind of want to do at Apex Legends. But, uh, you know, they definitely like to pick up KP along the way. So they, I do have, you know, a, a large feeling that they might be the ones to get to match point first um, shortly, you know, followed by Legends Gaming, obviously our two top contenders there. Um, but of course, you know, I, I just have high hopes for the Boogie Boarders. I did sort of touch on that they do start a little bit slow on World's Edge, um, but, you know, it's crunch time. They're third place at the moment. They want to stick up against that. If you look at, mm. you know, Tom Young-kun, um, uh, Team Burger are only six three points away, so it's very close. But you know what? This is the regional finals. We are here to bring you the hype in the Apex South. Let's head over to World's Edge for match one. Oh, yes. Let's get into it. It is one of how many we don't know there could be 14, 15 games tonight. Let's go. That would be uh, an interesting night, that's for sure. And we might be well into the early hours of tomorrow morning. But of course, it is the APAC South Regional Final. And we've got eight spots to give away at land. So every team is going to be running and gunning as best as they possibly can coming into this one. And look, one thing that I wanted to highlight there as well, uh, which I don't know that we talked about too much, is just how tight it really is in that middle of the pack. I mean, Dreamfire at 77 points. You go all yeah. the way from there in sixth place, down to 13th, which is X and Y, and it's only a five-point gap. So, you know, you, you look at you look at Dreamfire and you say, well, they're in sixth place. They should be pretty comfortable, pretty okay. But the realistic thing is, like, that gets knocked over in, like, even just one half-decent game from literally any team. And if you just, if you have one bad game to start things off, all of a sudden you're outside of that cutoff point. Wow, look at that 100% Bangalore pick rate. There is not a lot of variety in our lobby right now. Teams have been using that regular split, regular season split um, to experiment. And it feels like now that the, you know, it's 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 the, the really important time of the season, right? The chips are on the table here. You can't take them back. Uh, you know, teams are sticking with the tried and true. That's, that's what we're seeing here. So much blood bang. Caustic, um, a sprinkling 
of Watson, Crypto, um, and, uh, you know, even one lifeline pick for MDY Black, which I'm very excited about. We certainly saw uh, a lot of that in the EMEA region this morning, and, uh, you know, it's always fun to have on board. It's very interesting to see going week to week how things kind of change up and what I would say is I feel like just having a quick look at that, it, it does uh, seem to me that there is uh, a little bit more of a lean towards what would be, I guess, considered the meta composition, the meta trio, which as you said, that, that Corsic, Bangalore and, and Bloodhound and a, and a bit of a diversion away from maybe some of those off meta picks. Uh, and whether or not that's because, A, this is a stronger lobby, therefore better teams, therefore teams that realistically probably are following the meta because they consider that to be the best and it, quote unquote, is the best. Uh, or is it because, well, teams have had a little bit more time to actually get familiar with what they think is good and they have kind of come to that conclusion uh, themselves as well. Obviously, like you said, there are a few that are sort of bringing something a little bit different, but... Yeah, I mean, it just is interesting to see how that, that sort of changes from mm. week to week. And it has only been seven days since our last uh, play day, but it does feel like it's a little bit more dominated by that one composition, which is, uh, I don't know, like, I, I don't necessarily mind it. Obviously, it's still early days, so uh, you can't get bored of it just yet. Uh, and I like it as a composition. I feel like it makes a lot of sense. Uh, it's certainly the one that I would be running if I was in this position. So uh, no complaints from me to see the vast majority on, on that setup. Yeah, um, you know, lots of discussions to have about that. I'm sure we will have through the day. Um, just to touch on the circle that we saw there before, uh, it does seem to be heading down towards launch site, um, X and a Y. Uh, of course, we're sitting here on them because they start at launch site, so they get to take one of these very premium positions over here, uh, overlooking the front, which gives them options depending on whether it sort of pulls, um, you know, further towards Siphon or down towards uh, launch site itself. Also, I guess it should be noted, uh, you know, you had uh, Strafing Flame and Co. as right here. Uh, getting into the action straight away against MDY White. They weren't sure where to go because they didn't get a ring console this game. So they've had been uh, just having to watch the other teams around them. Um, it looked like they were thinking about going down to, to uh, towards XMY and Co. at uh, launch site. But in the end, they stick around and they've been rewarded with some KP for that. Yeah, got to think about it. Obviously, in the context here for Legends Gaming, that every single point is going to be mattering. And they've already lost strafing flames, so things might start to get a little bit awkward as that third party does come on through. SWQ were hanging around MPY, causing some problems, and that threw the attention away of Easy Flash. And so, end up getting a little bit more awkward here for Legends than they would have liked in that fight against MDY White. This was supposed to be a pretty easy setup, but actually it's kind of become a little bit more of a bigger problem for, for Legends Gaming, because not only are they now down player, but they're also kind of sandwiched between a couple of teams, so even if they win this duel, I don't know that they get out of here alive, and that would be shocking for Legends Gaming, considering they were one of the front runners at the end of the season, and as you can see here, it's just player K that's trying to get out. I mean, they're going to be kicking themselves, Elfish, like, for, of all the games to not get a ring console, when you probably have, you know, second priority, maybe third priority, to get into launch site and take a spot. Uh, that is so rough. But, you know, that's how Apex plays out sometimes, right? You've got to be able to play out in those different um, situations as we get the uh, the information of who did get those ring consoles and has that option to rotate a little bit earlier um, safely and surely in the knowledge of where the ring is heading. Well, SWQ will be pretty happy with the proceedings because they obviously just able to take up residence in Lava Siphon and have a couple of this is a loot out of some of those boxes, get the info off the wind consoles and continue their way forward relatively unhindered. Keep going gaming I a member there to War Monster Firebird. So it's starting to kick off relatively early. You can kind of get a bit of a, a sense that maybe this lobby is going to be a little more tightly contested than what we would have expected. A lot of early engagements. And I also think that part of that is just because of the nature of the beast when it comes to uh, this zone. You've got a lot of teams that need to come up, down, obviously, from the northern side. And there's only so many choke points that they can go through. So, kind of bumping shoulders, running into each other. And, uh, yeah, unfortunately for Boogie Waters, they are one of those teams that suffered a loss. Now, look at this. A lot of teams, uh, you know, taking a casualty on the way in. Just as a little update, Legends Gaming... Uh, went back to Geyser, where they have actually managed to respawn um, the teams in. Unfortunately, of course, that's not going to be happening for Boogie Boarders as they get taken out completely here. Uh, Walmart to Firebird, and uh, who was that? Uh, Once on Dumpling combining there um, to finish that one off. 
Ooh, they've got, to, they've got to worry about this, though. Serenity actually coming through the geyser choke. They've noticed this. They can see the smoke there. They know that um, they're crafting nearby. Um, so definitely Serenity could potentially get the drop on uh, Legends here as they pop into geyser and take up position. Oh, I don't think Legends have stopped them just yet. They're making their way across now. But I don't even know if Serenity... Ooh, well, they're going to get in front of Legends. I don't know if they're necessarily too eager for the fight at the moment. It looks like they're Surprised. kind of more interested in going all on their way. And yeah, I don't necessarily disagree. But either way, these teams, I guess they're focusing on the long game, right? It's still pretty early days. You may see that strategic thinking change up as teams start to get a little bit closer to the match point. So, you know, if you're on 45 points going into a game, you might be a little bit more inclined to just take some early fights, <sighs> get those five kill points on the board. But at least early days... You might be playing the long game a little bit longer. I don't know, but here's my question, Elfish. I mean, so Serenity move in right now, okay? There's about 14 teams in the zone, something like that. They're, they're absolutely not getting a priority position. Um, they can stick around and, and maybe get another scan at Big Maud, and that'll help them make their next decision. But yeah, I, I find it strange that they had such a good spot to pressure uh, Legends Gaming back into the ring and potentially pick up some KP. There was even an Evo Harvester down there that they could have grabbed. Um, and instead of doing all that, they just they they uh they continue on into a, a very uncertain future. I yeah I don't know. I'm not sure I agree with that decision. Well, either way, we'll get to see whether or not it was going to be worth it for Serenity if they can you know go on to potentially win this game. Then I guess who are we to question the the method? But obviously you know that with that you kind of need some results to actually confirm whether or not it was worth it. Uh, either way, we'll take a departure away from that one and talk about one of my favorite teams, which is Dreamfire and. They've set themselves up sort of halfway into the next ring. They are kind of using that as, I guess, a bit of an information gathering platform. And they'll look to move further forward in, in just a moment. So they don't have zone really knowledge. Up to a whole lot. Yeah. Here. I think that's one of the big reasons why they're over there. Um, obviously, they didn't get uh, the ring console um, down at countdown. So I think they've, they've kind of hedged their bets to sit uh, up there, thinking, you know, it, it could potentially pull back there, which it, it definitely does sometimes. Um, but unfortunately, yeah. And not able to uh, um, to to see that it's definitely going to pull more south of where they are right now. It's a bit of an interesting zone, isn't it? It's not one that we're going to mount this season, but once the firebird, I want to get into the thicker things by the looks of it. So the hunt was popped. Yeah, it looks like they're shuffling over here. Dreamfire might actually be getting into a fight with Lightning Unicorn, potentially. Um, a lot of these teams sitting around in the buildings uh, this way. You can see they're just trying to take some of the pressure over here. But a lot of ultimates used on the bridge, and Dreamfire have actually been pushed off by that. So Lightning Unicorn shoved them out of position uh, by using all three of their ultimates. I mean, that's fair enough, though, for Dreamfire, right? It's a bit of a push-and-pull game at this point in time, and they were sitting up there for quite a while, so... They would have been doing their scouting. They would have recognized, okay, if we get pushed here, where do we go? What positions are going to be safe? And you could see that they very quickly made that decision. It wasn't any sort of level of hesitation that cost them anything. They just drop off their position, move further forward. They, they move into the next position, and that's fine. I think that's a good choice from Dreamfire. Lightning Unicorn knew that they had to take a position inside Ooh. the zone, so it's also okay for them to be dumping their ultimates like that to take positioning and you know what elfish it might work out for them because when we look at this next ring position it continues to pull towards launch site um dream fire i don't know if the the balloon uh sort of south of their where their position is is safe to take um but if they continue round down that southwest side um they may be able to actually find their way into launch site and get a half decent spot kpg um that fight with the, uh them and walmart's of firebird did eventually um, come to fruition there, and they definitely got the better of uh, Wall Monster Fiber, but they, they took one um, they took one, one casualty. Inferg are fighting pretty hard here. Price is very low indeed, and Sharky, where is Sharky? He's having a bit of a crack at things, and it looks like it might be okay here for Team Burger. Way he's been finished off. Uh, but the mana will be collected. Getting a little bit chaotic all over the map, actually. Still got 18 teams alive, so lots of moving and shaking to be done, but. I doesn't feel like a lot of teams are very healthy at the moment. There's a lot of little, little small skirmishes going across and, you know, no big commitments necessarily here and there. But we're listening ready for Serenity, so we'll see what they're up to and hear how they're going heading into game number one. Getting her back. 
Captain Owen walks yeah. up. We need to play for the fucking, time. like, down here. Yeah. We they can't can let anyone play it. They evac. Yeah. Let him evac. The oh, this shit's the last guy. If yeah, we yeah. Can. I'm grabbing nades. I can't see him. I'm shooting the last guy. Know. Yep. I can run him. He's going low. Nice. It's fine. He'll die. He'll die. Bats here. Bats here. I'm leading quickly. Yeah. We have to be careful no one comes from our right side. That building is a big threat when we play the ditch, okay? Yeah, careful yeah. here. I'm just I'm waiting to make sure no one's coming yeah. from my building. Mm -hmm. Oh, good. There was a team that flew down here. People yeah, they fighting in the uh, trench over here. Okay, yeah. okay. Oh, yeah. Get slide forward a bit. Yeah, people... Okay, so Bugi and Co there discussing how to make those next rotations. Um, obviously, there's uh, some nice shots onto the guy on the, uh, the evac tower here, but all of a sudden, uh, the ground is disappearing underneath their feet. Everyone up the top here in Siphon going to have to move into launch site, and with that next circle having so much of it, um, essentially in the mountains, there's not a lot of room for these teams. Well, Tommy, I'm Kong. We haven't really been seeing too much about them today, but they're also going to be a factor in this lobby. Three points already on the board, but that might be about as far as it's going to go. Kaziki is getting pushed. He's not going to be able to get out of there with that extra speed coming through from the Bangalore passive, and Akuma will pick up a pretty handy third party. They only have the blue shield, so they need to be working hard. We'll jump over to X and Y, and my boy Streamfire eliminated in 13th place, so not a great start to the day for them. But uh, your fellas, your lads, you picked them X and Y, topping the lobby at the moment. Indeed, five points. Uh, obviously, you know, they're getting a home circle here. That is a big deal. Uh, but being able to convert from that is uh, a skill just like anything else in competitive Apex. And X and Y are doing that at the moment. They, you know, when you get one of those circles, because you're probably only going to get one in your entire series, if any, um, you have to absolutely make that count on the scoreboard. I mean, we saw, um, you know, we had that famous moment here, this split Elfish, where uh, there was a launch site-ish zone, and on this particular zone close, like we're about to have, the, the kill feed just lit up, right? There were like 10 teams that died in about 10 seconds, and I think we're about to get one of those situations. Yeah, I mean, there's at least, what, five, six over to the northern side, still just underneath Lava Siphon, and they have got a long way to go. So it should get pretty messy in just a second. I don't know if any of them make it. Well, VK Gaming's kind of the, the tip of the spear in a sense. They're the first team that's moving. I can see Pricey, Pricey Sharky and Way are flying their way through the air, so they might have a bit of a better chance of at least getting somewhere, but as to whether or not that'll result in much, I'm, you can see for yourself, <laughs> they've just been made mincemeat of. Might have been better off taking the ground route. Aircore Gaming down, a member right here getting harassed by X and Y, who are set up really nicely inside of the command center of launch site, and XD finishing them off with the Mastiff. See 12 Doesn't points stop, now though. for XNY. So look, they get taken out, but hey, at least they picked up a couple of kills on this zone close, uh, which will help them still have a decent game. But they have been usurped by Legends Gaming, who come in and take that spot away from them. Very important. I mean, imagine that they were down to one player, and now they've uh, they've pretty much got God Spot here with this next circle pull. Um, in terms of how other teams made it out of that situation. There were pretty much only two methods that worked. One was an evac around the outside of launch site through the east side. Um, uh, Serenity made that in, made that work. They're still safe right now. And then there was the slow walk up as well. So VKG, we saw that do that on one side and then Lightning Unicorn uh, on the other. This is a tough ass though for Lightning Unicorn trying to fight an uphill battle in every sense of the word. Metaphorically speaking, it's never going to be easy either. Just trying to sort of jiggle peek that uh, that roof and get some information. Sooner or later, they're going to have to push their way in. Serenity don't really have to be moving. They can actually quite happily play the bottom side. And it doesn't seem like anyone's really going to contest them for that. So, can they just keep their heads down for the moment? We might see them in the top few teams. No, I think that's a, that's a fair point uh, in that position. They've got evax actually, which I think now that they've resupplied, um, they're actually going to use that to take the high ground. Um, so, yep, there we go. They've just moved up onto the bins, as you can see. Lightning Unicorn try and take some space inside. They're actually going to fight Legends Gaming right now, who we said, sure, they were in Godspot, but they have to hold on to it. Well, it's gaming. It's a miracle in my mind that they've even gotten to this point, so I have to congratulate them on at least salvaging this game. 
Might be able to go one better, as we know Legends generally have been able to do. They've been a very, yep. very strong team this season, so certainly you can count them out. This is Akuma on the outside. There were the team stopping anyone from rotating through this part. They're struggling to stay alive with Serenity on their outside. As you can see, they're blocking that lane, but they're also shoving VKG in the inside here. Uh, and pushing them against the gas. So there's a very tenuous position for all of the teams inside this command center. They get very messy in a second. One's got their little patch of safety carved out, but eventually as that zone starts to push its way in, that's going to deplete and the outside there with the next ones to go, obviously. He got with the 2x Sentinel. <laughs> I don't know if it's exactly the weapon that you'd want it. Wow. Uh, you can't uh, doubt it. You, after the Monsoon show the other week, you just cannot doubt that gun and that uh, that sight anymore. It is, he's, he's almost making it meta by himself. Yeah. Uh, certainly some teams picking that up now. And, you know, obviously we haven't had a lot of vision of Wonton Dumpling so far, but they've already picked mm. up seven points here. Um, and they are in a good spot. They, you know, it's them and Serenity on the outside with the other four teams. You know, saying, hey, you're not, um, you know, you're locked in there together. Yeah, not the place to be, really. As we said, though, every point matters. How many, how many instances have we cast where we've seen a team go to 49 points? Well, it was oh. maybe even Team Burger. It they was. got to 49, yep. and then they won the yep. next game. And then they got to 50, and they couldn't win a game since that point. So it was, uh, yeah, a little painful. But that's where, like, it, you know, even one extra placement here or one extra kill would potentially make a massive difference to your fortunes and potentially can actually be the difference maker between going to land and missing out. So, as I said, you know, every point matters and it sounds cliche, but it is true, especially so in the match point format. Oh no, not coming through. Player came from Legends has found 951 of VK Gaming and that'll be VK Gaming out of the picture down to the five to remaining team. Akuma in the fight right now. That's some good tracking. Not coming back on through. Of course, does go down, but at the day, damage is being done. And Akuma uh, out of the picture as oh. well. Legend felt like mutually assured destruction, really. It was just a bit of a mess. Both teams go down to final three remaining. Lightning Unicorn is the team that does take control of Command Center, and they have time to reset before Ooh. the zone pushes them out. Yeah, that's so important that, you know, not only have they uh, they've left, been left alive as the only squad inside, but as you say, yeah, no knocks, no anything. Um, they are all good to go, so now it's actually a pretty fair three-way fight uh, between Wonton Dumpling, Serenity, and Lightning Unicorn. I mean, we saw Legends gaming there. They didn't even get the chance uh, to use a lot of their ultimates. We had the uh, Shield Jammers going out there, um, you know, or, or should I say stuck um, and, and not being able to be used. Who's in the better sh uh, position out of these squads? Honestly, very hard to tell. So much caustic gas around. I think I'd like to take uh, the bottom. I think I'd like to take the bottom down there with the Wonton Dumpling because Serenity at the moment lighting up against Lightning Unicorn and they do win that fight but they lost the player on their way through and of course it's Wonton Dumpling to decide well now's the time to go and now is the time to take the victory in the first game of the day and they do it quite easily as well. It has to be said a very solid start for Wonton Dumpling today. Incredible! Match one, done and dusted. Look, Gino, we knew Wonton Dumpling were heavy hitters, right? And uh, we had a, a quick little discussion about it, um, but just absolutely insane for them to take the first game. What an exceptional game from them. I feel like we didn't see too much, uh, you know, going into, uh, you know, watching watching the match fold out there. Um, but, you know, they're just sitting in the shadows. They're waiting for the perfect spots. You know, usually they steamroll and take down, uh, you know, every team in their path with a bit of KP. But I feel like they played this quite um, quite intelligently uh, and to get that position. Uh, also, you know, Legends Gaming here, losing player K and strafing Flame mm. early on in the game, losing, um, I think it was Easy Flash to try and recover the team. And what a recovery it was. They they had a major reset. Um, you know, they, they claimed a really strong spot there in launch site, um, but they were the meet between, you know, Akuma and VK Gaming. They held on for as long as possible. Yeah, it was a pretty uh, pretty amazing effort for them to get back into it, as you say. Uh, at the start of the game, you wouldn't have expected that, but they convert into quite a few points, and that's what the top teams do. And I think also, as you said, um, Wonton Dumpling playing that very intelligently, and that's also something you need to be a top team, and certainly a bow to their string that was probably missing in years past. Um, when, you know, they, they weren't necessarily competing for land spots. They weren't in that sort of rarefied air but you know landing mm. at thermal station it's a uh you know a shorter walk for them 
um, to, to get over towards uh, launch site where we finish up and they just sort of, yep, yeah, just slowly work their way in from the west. Uh, and yeah, oh my god, that final fight didn't even look close, man. Gugu just trained his vault sites on a couple of players and they were no more. Yeah, the cohesion is exceptional. Like, I feel like every time they take a fight, um, they win. It's it's absolutely insane to witness. And, you know, we always touch on that they like to sort of collect kills along the way. Um, but, yeah, just the fact that they are now hitting <laughs> that placement and uh, look at them go there. Again, once on Dupling in the front and the forefront, then Gugu, of course, with the lots of damage. <laughs> Oh my lordy, I mean, <laughs> yeah, like, they're a great team, and I think what I was saying before about Gugu is kind of getting proven right here in this stats sheet. He is just looking around, yeah, like, by far, uh, you know, the player with the most damage here in this entire lobby. Legacy actually picked up more kills than him uh, with five, but yeah, it's 1700 damage. Uh, oh, a JR as well, uh, a player I was, I was going to talk about, but, uh, you know, we were sort of uh, pushing through that X and Y. Um, scouting report before he's certainly mm. been uh, amazing for X and Y so far this season, and a breadth of uh, uh, of player pool as well. But let's have a look at this uh, this series scoreboard here, Lace. Yeah, so uh, I want to go down to the bottom of the leaderboard there, and a little bit of a difficult start there for the boogie boarders, and even Tom Young Kung. Um, they were they were eliminated quite early on. It was a bit of a tough start for like some of our you know top leader teams uh, in the overall series. Um, so, you know, even Team Burger there having it a little bit tough. Um, but you know what? I did say that they, they start out uh, a little bit slowly, so we'll keep an eye on them. But let's head to the top of the leaderboard. Of course, Wonton Dumpling um, absolutely smashing that game and securing first place. Um, and like you said, X and Y, what an amazing yeah. job they did there. That is exceptional from them. They, they just you know obviously placing in third place there but collecting that many kills uh, obviously they to have that many kills there they start in launch site obviously we had the zone pool to launch site there yep. so they were taking names as everyone was rotating in yeah it was really just they had that you know like the the windows that open out towards the entire field as they push towards you and clearly getting a lot of last hits there um, to make that work for them. So even though they do get entered and, uh, and and can't stick it out, um, still a fantastic game for them. I think the other thing that really uh, interested me about that scoreboard, Lace, was how many teams had one and two points, right? And that was because mm. we had that situation early on where so many teams were just picking up one or two kills as other teams were rotating in. There wasn't actually a lot of clean wipes. And, you know, it's hard to say uh, why that is from a macro level. We can only, uh, you know, speculate maybe... Um, you know, teams are playing their lives a little bit more because it's regional finals. Um, or, yeah, I don't know, perhaps they're just a little bit scared and not willing to fully commit to the fight, again, because it's regional finals. Yeah, exactly right. You know, I know there was a part where Serenity had a, had the chance to sort of clean up. Uh, I think it was the rest of um, one of the teams there in Lava Siphon. But you know what? Everyone's just taking a little bit slowly, and that is totally fine. We're going to take ourselves a short little break. Um, so we will see you momentarily back for regional finals. Nice, Left it. 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 Left we just walk out here, we just walk out! Yep. Yeah. I can one on this. Going, I'm going. Oh up, up, up! What's the one? Knock, knock! Just get the kills! I can like this guy! Whoa, oh, right. Man, no, no, no! Last guy walk! Oh, oh. <laughs> ah, 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 let's go! Kill him, take him! Swallow, swallow! Oh, 
，杀了杀了杀了杀了！我家我家又碰了又碰了，黑侠有一个，黑侠有血吗？等黑侠。对对对，我被烧死了。好了，那到了那别急，一起打一起打，别怕，别怕。他他他他，我他妈的，他我他妈的，他快他快，那是不是不是？我他妈的，我他妈的，我他妈的，我他妈的，我他妈的，我他妈的，我他妈的，我他妈的，我他妈的，我他妈的，我他妈的，我他妈的，我他妈的，我他妈的，I have no ammo. I have zero bullets. What do you need? You need to go. You need to go. You bet for him. Bet for him. Bet for him. Oh my! No! 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 Let's fucking go! It's last. I need more bullets. I need more bullets. Here, here, here. Welcome back everyone. I hope you're all geared up for a massive day of Apex Legends as we just reached the regional finals here in Apex South. Uh, and if you're just joining us and you don't know what's happening, we're doing things a little bit differently than previous weeks. We now have match point scoring. So the hype is real. Even, you know, the teams right down at the bottom do have a chance for a spot at LAN. But that is if they get 50 points at a win, which is, you know, something that uh, can be incredibly difficult. Uh, we've just witnessed our skills and spice filled team, Wonton Dumpling Genome, take out the win in match one. We did. Um, and oh, I don't know. I, I keep thinking about the APAC North, uh, you know, regional finals that we had yesterday, Lace, where there was, mm. uh, you know, it was Reject Winity that just came out and absolutely dumpstered everybody else. I don't know, man. Have, have Wanton Dumpling got that kind of fire in the bag? If they, if they bought it today, well, game one's certainly gone that way. That's it. It definitely goes their way, uh, you know, all the time. But, you know, yeah, like we said, we've got six uh, games lined up, but it could be seven. It could be eight. It could be nine. Um, you know, I know us casters probably want to have a nice little break, but I know you guys at home just want to see the passion and the energy. And we want we want some tight knit games. We want to see those, you know, those teams really, really power out. And that's exactly what we're going to do. We are hitting match number two. We'll see you over on World's Edge. Yes, indeed. Here we are again on to World's Edge. It'll be the last one, at least for the, the foreseeable future. We've got a couple of Storm Points coming up right after this. So four teams that do excel on this map, one of those being Legends Gaming. And we're wanting to get some maximum points right here, right now, to you know potentially put them in, in striking distance, maybe going into Game 3. But realistically, obviously, I think for me, I'm looking at Game 4 onwards, probably Game 5, something like that, as uh, where teams really start to unlock that match point capability yeah that's uh that's probably how it's uh it, it does usually shake out but you know there's uh sometimes you get some outliers in apex of legends and want on dumpling certainly trying to make that case for themselves 19 points in the first mm. game is a good way to do that Ooh, okay interesting ring pull here as you can see that uh you know the second circle sort of toggled on and off there um, you know, you get the sense yeah. of, uh, if you didn't have a ring console in this game, maybe, you know, you think it's a, it's a geyser pull or something like that, right? Um, it, it is kind of heading over there a little bit, or maybe down to Big Maud, but no, it's very much center map, yeah. um, and should be, uh, should be finishing, I would say, north of the mountainside here towards Monument and Fragment. 
Yeah, so I'm reliably informed as well by the production team that there's been no composition changes coming into game two, which is probably in line with expectations. You would think if you've made it to this point in the season, if you're going into finals, you'd probably would be wanting to be pretty set in what your ethos is or how you want to play your game. We'll potentially see some change-ups obviously going into Stormpoint. That, that's a different story, but at least as far as World Edge is concerned, you'd hope that teams aren't making changes from one game to the next because that, I think, would be a symptom of a bigger problem. Yeah, no, I, I have to agree. Sometimes teams just kind of feel it, I guess. And, uh, you know, they're just, True. they're more of like a, I don't know, an emotion based team, a well, uh, momentum based team. But no, I would, I would agree with you. There was that, that famous, uh, Sutraiku, uh, True. The crypto change? Swap. Yeah, the crypto back at, uh, when was that? 2021? Split two playoffs, I think it was. Yeah. Yeah, in yeah. Sweden, for sure. And they went from, like, doing nothing on day one and then picked up crypto and then just started doing really well. So that was a strange one. But, uh, yeah, look, not, not the thing that you're likely to, to see every day of the week. No siree. Oh, that was Lightning Unicorn just hitting the survey beacon over here. And they've spotted out Kassa from VK Gaming with it as well. So Kassa was pulling down from Overlook to try and get that crypto scan himself. Uh, but as the beacon gets hit first there... Lightning Unicorn, oh, they're going to throw the shots out at him. He's got about 50 health left. He's all good. I'm surprised they don't chase him there, honestly. I am surprised. Mm. Well, VK Gaming do rotate their way down as well to help him out. So it would have actually ended up being a pitch three on three, though. Yeah, Lightning Unicorn just going to take a little bit more of a reserved approach. And again, this is one of those situations where I almost feel that teams don't want to be overly aggressive and potentially tank an entire game and really get zero points out of it if they can look at themselves and say, well, we're reliably able to get three, four, five points out of this game if we play this a little bit slower. And uh, Lightning Unicorn uh, may, may sort of have that kind of same mindset where they want to play a little bit of a longer game here early on in the piece just to keep that scoreboard ticking over. It's a fair point as well. I'm sure there's a lot of the teams on the cusp who, you know, might want it to go one way or another a bit shorter, a bit longer. Um, if that means that, you know, the difference between them going to land or not, uh, they'd gladly make a deal with the Devil for that one. Not kill Devil, of course. They unfortunately did not make it into our top 20. Well, outside had a little bit of a slower start, but we've got some points on the board in that first game. Also, as though it is actually just a, in general a little bit of a slow start to this game. I, I guess part of that is just because less teams are having to make that early rotate down from the north. Um, there's a, a much wider portion of the map that's inside of the initial ring, so a lot more room to play at least in the early stages of this game. I think you see that with central rings sometimes, right? Because uh, if you've got a ring all the way down one end of the map, uh, you tend to be forcing more people through just a few chokes to get to that situation whereas if you've got a central ring the center teams can kind of just sit where they are and then there the teams that are coming here. from each um you know end of the map aren't dealing with uh you know as many other teams because they can at the start at least uh rotate um just into the fringes of the circle uh and then it gets a little more hectic when you're getting around to, to zone three or zone four Yeah, once on Dumpling, they got 19 points in that first game. Quite on the pace for a, a game three match point availability, but that would be pretty extreme. Set themselves up in the harvest start. Maybe not going to be the biggest long-term play for them. They do have the information as to where that next ring is going to pull, so I'm not sure they'll be too keen to even fight for this position too hard. Or wants to fireboard it. Or wants to fire bird rather, of course, the team on the other side of that engagement, but neither really too eager to, to fight over this position, which is fair enough considering where the ring is pulling. It's still a bit of a 50 50. I mean, uh, there, although you think it will go up towards Fragment. There is a, a ring console within uh, the next ring, however, at Harvester, so I think there's, there's a case to be made that, uh, you know, taking out these guys and, and therefore getting access to that next uh, round of information could be. Um, quite a good play for these guys because uh, as you said, you know, like it's going to be a hard rotate you, You're there's almost certainly going to be a team sitting in the choke to the north of Harvester at the moment. That's uh, KPG 
So I think, you know, sort of just getting that, uh, that notion for sure. Because, you know, there's still a chance it goes towards, let's say, uh, you know, budget siphon um, over there or something like that. So if they get uh, an interesting pull, um, could be the ticket. But no, nope, it uh, very much is going to be uh, centered around that north side like we initially speculated. Well, said he wins the race at the moment. Heroes on their way into safety inside a fragment. Probably still a couple more buildings that are ready to be occupied by the, the late arrivals in fragment. It is one of those points of interest that can really allow, you know, maybe a 10, 15 teams at, at any given time. Depending on how things are set up, even teams can sort of hold multiple floors in the same building. So it's going to help out in keeping the stock look relatively healthy. And as you can see right there, we've still got everybody alive. All 60 players. Not a single player has gone down just yet. It's kind of interesting. But that is going to change fairly shortly. Sorry, I was just going to point out how Lightning Unicorn's position over there coming from Geyser. You know, you'll remember mm. they were, uh, you know, they went to scan the beacon over at Ghost Town. Um, and uh, yeah, they, they, you know, they've left their home in Fragment here um, to kind of put themselves in a, in a worse situation basically but who knows maybe there's some kp that'll come their way um sitting in the geyser choke it's possible you have to move on from there though uh, at some point i think it'll be a pretty tough position to move out of obviously there's a lot of open territory in front of them which a lot of teams are going to be looking at Oh, that's a good shot on the pricey. He's very low, but he is at least going to get to the ground safety. And Team Berger with three alive and made it into Fragment. Hoping to do a little bit of a better job than their first uh, first round here of the day, which uh, unfortunately kind of just blew up in their faces as they tried to make that rotation quite late through the air. And it felt like they didn't really leave themselves too many options. So I don't mind that they've gotten in a little bit earlier this time. Having a look at the teams uh, in very uh, enviable positions in the middle of the map here. Uh, we've got Team Burger, who are, oh, okay, not in the most solid position. Um, can they stick here for a while, though, potentially? Um, but we've got Kong 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 over here at Ghost Town going right at it. Oh, that's a good start as well from Dexter. Nice clean knock initially onto Boogie, who was pretty isolated and kind of still is, so I'm not sure what the communication was there but it seems like he was either left high and dry or went a little bit too keen himself some young kung more than happy to take that free kill point and actually maybe look for a little bit more Dead df also uh managing to get rid of mdy black there just down to legacy now for serenity try and move it out So I'm not sure that this is going to be too recoverable for Serenity. We saw Legacy... Sorry, Legends, I should say. I'm looking at Legacy's name. We saw Legends get back up off of a position similar to this one, but it was certainly a lot a lot earlier in the round. So it's going to be hard to recover that one. And outside, still kind of doing it tough at this point. Three sets of blues. Not really where you'd want to be. Most teams are starting to get to purples. And they're also pretty well outside of the zone. Long way to go. Wow, a lot of teams to go through as well, so it won't be easy. That is a very... That's a mean zone as well. Yeah, central pool there. I think we've seen something pretty similar to this already in Apex South so far this split. There was definitely one uh, like this, similar to this, the Boogie Borders one. Uh, that was the one, I think, where we had Fussy just sort of walking on the top of the tracks and it just seemed like no one was looking at him. He had invisibility hacks and just, like, never stopped shooting his gun for about two minutes. It's starting to get a bit a bit awkward for Tom Yum Kong, but got gaps will go down and it's still looking relatively healthy, so they're all good. Next are again on the front foot of it. 
They're doing a really good job of clearing out their edge of the zone around Ghost Town. There's really not a whole lot going on over there actually anymore for Yom Yom Kung to really be too worried about. Oh, I mean, look down got... south here where things get a bit busier. They got four kills already, right? So that's a yeah. that's a pretty decent start to the game. Legacy did manage to spawn Pugi back in. Uh, didn't get the banner for Jesco, of course. They're not playing, you know, no conduit, no lifeline. So no support class, therefore uh, only the one banner he's able to get. Now, once on Dumpling that we were looking at earlier, they are, uh, looks like... Are they trying to take this fight? I think so. They're going around the outside right now of War Monster Firebird. Jackie Chan um, is trying to get on top of the building, but they're taking shots here from the Sentinel of Tree Cleaner up on the hill. So, once on Dumpling, they're for sure they want to take this fight because um, they're about to move out of zone and be in a really bad spot, but it's kind of hard when you're getting griefed uh, by KPG. Almost the Firebird. Oh, they're trying to find any possible way to move forward, but there just isn't really a way for them to do that when they've got a team right in front of them. So they're kind of in the damned if you do, damned if you don't type situation. It's like, you either have to try to fight and probably die to the zone, or don't try to fight and probably die to the team that you're fighting. So once on Dumpling and one wants a Firebird, both in an awful position here. I mean, yeah, this is so bad. Once on Dumpling, oh, they almost make it all back into the zone there, actually. You've got Boring. He's literally just putting his shield up to block nades for Jackie Chan so he can uh, get back on his feet. I don't know if they even want to res at this point, honestly, because uh, the knockdown shield is uh, is doing work here, keeping them alive when you've got KPG and Bearclaw Gaming literally just pinging them out, being like, hey, we know there's some some spots over here. There you go. Scan goes out. They understand they're doing the res now. Um, so they might actually be able to get up to back up to a two-man. Uh, meanwhile, on the other side, Tom Young Kung have picked up even more kills. And not only that, they're moving into a fantastic spot in this final zone. Yeah, they really are farming their way through at the moment, aren't they? Keep going gaming have got quite a bit to worry about. Two teams actually still on the lava siphon side of this engagement. And they're going to have to go through, pass over, not sure. But it is keep going gaming that have to try to deal with that. A quick look at Wonton Dumpling here who have managed to get at least one more member back up. They've got two players and they have got two opportunities to make their way out to safety. They're going to go over KPG as well. So what could have potentially amounted to quite a, a big fight actually there for KPG kind of turns into a whole lot of nothing as both teams actually fly over their heads. Yeah, I mean, they don't have a Moby. Um, they are flying sort of close to a, a respawn beacon, but the chances of them getting that off, I think, are, are pretty much nil. So uh, most likely going to have to play out as a duo unless they sort of randomly come across a Moby in a box at some point. Rough for them. Burger. They're in the thick of things at the moment, aren't they? They're sitting inside of this train caravan, and I'm not sure they're feeling too great about it. So let's see how they're feeling at the moment with the listening. Looks right here as well. Kill that Corsix. Crack them. Is it two teams under? That Corsix one. Literally one. One shot. Oh, That's one under. Can we jump? Oh. Can we jump? Jump from the boy. Handle. Handle. Shoot. 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 Corsix. Corsix. Come back. Come back. Come back. Come back. I'm chilling under right now. Yes, it's all you. Oh. We're pussy got it. Yeah, hurt. Yeah, it's a. If the other car's staring at us. Can I loot now? You, no. 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 Fucking, he's getting medicine pricey. I did, 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 I did. Yeah, heard. Okay, wait, here, wait. Uh, bat, three cells. I need cells, I need cells. Here, two cells. Oh, I, stand. I think it's the duo, right? You could be first, yeah, yeah. didn't you? Yeah, there's two duos in this game. We gotta, just... kill them. Yeah, we gotta yeah. kill them and play for this ledge here. Okay. Yep. Can we start trying to work them? I have yeah, no I, dog. I have 64% on my bang out. Oh, I'm, I'm trying to smack the top so we can fucking fuck with these guys. I need to heal again. It's fine. I'm gonna scan them now. Look at my scan. Yeah, it is a duo. We I'm just... gonna take an- Can we take an angle out here, maybe? That's all you guys. Yeah, I'm on, maybe. I'm on, I'm on blue. Shark has to do it. I'm coming with you. Fuck it. I'm in the seat. They're just, they're just they're sitting not, there. I know I'm out of it. We can't see them. They're like- Scanning one. Playing. Scanning it for you. Oh, back, back, back. I think we did the suicide for this. Yeah, we do. Yeah. Do to make it? I've only got one bat. I got a medi, I got a medi. What do you guys think? This oh, I'm, gonna have, I'm gonna have course code in 5%. Okay. There's, there's guys yeah. dying out here, though. Yeah, I'm 5% on my own. The top left of their caravan, and we swing around left and get above them, yeah? 
Yeah, yeah, I'm gonna bang on. Yeah, get ready. I'm not gonna bang on. Top team can't do do anything. I'm bang on. What's going on the left side? Can we can we chuck a smoke here? I'm guessing go for them. Let's go. Matthew. Get an aid in. Scanning, scanning. You should get active on this. I got 100 pumps. 18. Getting them. Behind you, behind you, behind you, behind you. Behind me. Back in the lava. You flash. I did, I did, I did. He's inside, I died. Back him, back him, back him, Percy. Get the kill. Nice. He died. Nice. Can you rest? Can you rest? Rest, rest, rest. Amazing. Just crawl in, mate, crawl in. Smoke ahead of a shocky when you can. I got gold res. Yeah, yeah. I'm gonna res away straight away. Keep crawling, mate. Just keep crawling, keep crawling. I'm gonna do shooting these guys here. On you. Nice, boys. Just come down, come down, come down. You're coming down. Hold the here. Hold on, hold on, ping. I fucking cut yeah. the caustic. The shield price, play left. I cut the caustic on you. Ping in, ping in. Oh, you fucking shit on them. Well, Pricey fighting hard at the moment and keeping his team in the fight. Team Burger somehow are just holding on. Wonton Dumpling has been eliminated. They're inside of the top three, and I think they actually get a full res here. I don't think anyone's. I don't think anyone's pushing them. No, there's nades coming out, which you know could spell trouble. Oh, oh my God! A full kill knocks Pricey Sharky on one health after that. But oh my God, that was a good clutch to honestly even get into that position. Um, wow. I mean, you know, just barely winning that Still fight in the midst of, like, a bang ult and then Wonton Dumpling, the duo, swing them, um, but luckily get caught in the crossfire for Team Burger. So now they survive, but unfortunately, yeah, it's, it's as a duo. Tom Young Kung, they're holding that amazing position that we talked about before on the top of the hill and then keep going gaming, who are holding the Harvester Choke, our other team in the top three. Honest with you, it's definitely still a salvageable situation for Team Burger. They're, they're probably against the ropes once the zone starts to push its way in, but if KPG and Tom Yong Kung for some reason end up coming to blows before that point, then Team Burger is still in with the shot and either way making it to the top three off the back of that. I mean, we could hear how chaotic that was in the listening. Tom Yong Kung doesn't look like they want to shy away from these fights. You know, they're, they're really trying to get in on top of KPG, which is. Taking some of that Ooh. pressure off. Great beam from Dexter Huge. with the car. And all of a sudden, the circumstances change quite substantially. KPG are really under the pump, and Team Burger are kind of hunting and looking for some KP of their own. They know that if at worst case they can get one or two kill points, yes! that would be useful. Yeah, they know that what they're winking, they, you know, essentially just playing for second here, right? So they see that KPG are under pressure and they help uh, Tom Young Kung to take them down. Yep. And that is going to be an easy one for Tom Yum Kung in the end because they really did have to just win a three on two, but uh, they had to do the dirty work onto KPG to begin with as well. So overall, solid, solid start from Tom Yum Kung. I mean, we were obviously highlighting how strong they were looking playing around Ghost Town and. Uh, yeah, that was a, a, a super solid game from them. Very, very good stuff. Yeah, what a turnaround for them. I know they got knocked out about 13th in that first match. Uh, Elfish and Exceptional, they, they they had that position. They played that, you know, that God Rock there and, um, you know, took the win for it. They just had to wait, I guess, for the flies to sort of come into the spider web. Um, and yeah, Exceptional from them. I do want to sort of touch on, though, Team Burger absolutely frying, uh, collecting, you know, a couple of souls along the way there. You know, they took out, I believe it was AGL under the bridge, some excellent calls out by the team and then eliminating the team. And uh, I think it was the broken terrain with the reset on the gold knock. I was just on the edge of my seat that whole time. It was very close for them. You know, you can't really do too much with the nades coming in from, uh, you know, the teams just waiting patiently in zone. But Elfish, that was just exceptional. Yeah, yeah, super solid stuff. I mean, a great game, actually. Like, the way that that played out was really fun because as we were sort of talking about, it was uh, a little bit slower to begin with, right? A lot of teams felt like they were in a position where they could play the zone, and eventually, as it started to pull its way in, it just became more and more chaotic, and it was a pleasure to watch that from Team Burger's perspective. Uh, very nice push and pull from them. I was, you know, almost thinking that they were going to be able to get all three back up, but yeah, obviously the nade coming through from KPG sort of denied that possibility, but either way... Um, yeah, it was it was still a very very solid stuff. Yeah, kind of hard on that. I guess that's that slope little the the little slant there. Any nades can sort of roll in. And Tom Young Kung, like we said, just had a, a bit of a tough start in the in the first game, just to really turn it around and you know I guess collect uh, a couple of kills along the way there and solidify the win. This is something that they do need. Um, you know, sitting in that uh, bracket, I guess, where we want to see them sort of 
hit the top eight. Um, you know, no one's really going to take too much over Legends Gaming or Wonton Dumpling at this present time. But uh, teams like Tom Young Kung um, do really need to pre uh, perform well. And they did that exactly in that match. And let's take a look. It's 13 kills overall. L Fish, absolutely wow. exceptional from them. Yeah, very, very big game. Uh, you got to give them some credit for it. They didn't do it easily, that's for sure. They were fighting their way pretty much around the map and from the middle stages of that. So it was a, a rough one, but it was a worthwhile one when you can do that and, and do it successfully and get 13 kills on your way, then you're more than happy with how things played out there. Obviously, the other big winner out of that round was, of course, Team Burger. Um, big game from them as well with a nine kill second place. Um, you know, I guess we, we kind of want to keep a bit of an eye on Wonton Dumpling. They keep the scoreboard ticking over and... Speaking of, I think that will be enough to keep them up the top. But uh, yeah, not quite number one. 28 points now for Tom Yum Kung. So just over the halfway point. So is Wonton Dumpling. And everyone else really at this point is playing catch up. Like I was saying though, it does feel like we've probably still got at least another two games here before we get to a point where anyone will realistically be on match points. Mm. So... It's still a bit of a building platform at the moment. Exactly right. We still got a bit of time there, and uh, unfortunately, you know, an another tough game for the boogie boarders there as well. Mm. Elfish. Um, I know they had like quite a nice rotate in match two, um, making it to the monument building quite early, um, and then they had a, a bit of a devastating zone pull. You know, out into the middle, they had to, uh, I believe, cross the likes of Dreamfire, um, which were just sort of playing out the side there. So unfortunately, I just feel like they couldn't make it just then. But you know what? Hopefully, they can uh, do something when we head over to the Storm Point map. Um, mm. But again, you know, Tom Young Kung Burger sitting at fourth and fifth in the overall standings. Huge games from both of them. Um, they're definitely here to solidify themselves in those top sorts of spots. Even Dreamfire in that game sort of, uh, I think having about 6kp overall in sixth place even, um, are still great contenders. And again, with uh, MDY White too, sitting at seventh, um, had an exceptional game. So, you know, these teams that are sort of sitting in that top-hand bracket know exactly what is needed from them today. Yeah, I mean, it's interesting, actually, that you, you should mention MDY White because as we are moving on to Storm Point, they are one of the teams that tends to perform a little bit better on that map. Uh, as far as the lobby itself is concerned, they're the third highest average placement or third lowest average placement, depending on which, argument, you know, which way you want to say it. But third best average placement, let's just go with that, uh, for that map. So uh, a team that, you know, we haven't really had much to say about so far uh, they're on world's edge but moving into maybe a little bit more of a comfort map that's where we can see them hopefully accelerate and get back into the discussion yeah exactly right they are a very strong team you know our other strong teams are of course wonton dumpling and legends gaming they do extremely well on storm point as well we find like wonton dumpling usually edge hunters they will sort of sit around uh, that that you know side of the zone and sort of collect the the kill points along the way and you know we've seen legends gaming as well they they tend to win on storm point as well so we're going to in for some really exceptional matches we're going to take ourselves another little short break and we'll see you in a moment. You don't need to peek it, don't. I'll give you on the ground. I'm in. I'm on the I'm off angry. Uh huh. We can play. Use the fucking. Six kills. Front, front. Fifty plus one. Pick the wall. Pick the wall. Pick the fucking wall. On the. I'm pushing. 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 I'm one one! Fuck you one! Get out! 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 Get
打我两个了，我觉得可以打了。哎，对了对了对了，我打了这个，打了这个，最后一个，最后一个，最后一个，我打。他他妈，中华中华，打，我没打，我打我打我打能。我打我打我打我打，我打我打我打我打我打我打我打我打我打我打我打我打我打我打我打我打我打我打我打我打我打我打我打我打我打我打我打我打我打我打我打我打我打我打我打我打我打我打我打我打我打我打我打我打我打我打我打我打我打我打Welcome back, everyone. We are here for the regional finals of Apex South, where a lot is on the line for our 20 teams tonight. Match two was taken out by Zicky, Asians, and Dexters, but you might know them as Tom Young Kung. And as this is the match point format, uh, we are going to be heading over to Storm Point for our third match. We just seen uh, match one, two on World's Edge, once on Dumpling for the first, and of course, Tom Young Kung, they're taking out the second. But as we switch things up over to Storm Point, Elfish, why don't you take us through where some of our teams will be landing? Yeah, big ones, obviously. You know, I'm a big fan of Dreamfire, the mill. I think a great spot to be dropping still. So they'll be hoping to kind of bounce back. They had a little bit of a slower start when it came to uh, the first map of World's Edge and hopefully moving on to uh, map two will be a little bit of a better one for them. I think the thing to sort of keep an eye on coming into this map of Storm Point is that there is a potential hot drop contest on the cards and that is going to be Akuma and War Monster Firebird when we do... Uh, have a look at checkpoint you'll see that there's dreamfire at the mill like we said always going to be a, a pretty important drop location legends gaming as well fairly central over towards Sito station so uh, the, these are the teams that are going to be feeling happy and comfortable about going into uh storm point and in particular i'd say actually legends is one of those teams again that you know they show an incredible level of consistency not only are they the, the strongest performer generally speaking when it comes to world's edge but uh top two when it comes to storm point so no Real surprise that they will be uh, a big team to watch coming into this map as well. Yeah, they can kind of do it all, can't they? And, uh, you know, we, we as we sort of swap over to the map, uh, you know, last, I think last week, we would have seen a couple of, uh, you know, uh, pulls to Devastated Coast. Um, you know, we've seen a couple of down beast rings as well, Elfish. I am still very hopeful that there's going to be that zone that pulls in between Zeus Station and Lightning Rod. It's right, they see that tiny little island there and there's a massive zip going over to Zeus Station's Elfish and a zone can pull there and i am hoping so whoever sort of gets that gets that little spot on that island generally wins the match uh you know i know the teams are probably not going to want that but you know us at home want to see something as exciting as that um you know because rotations can matter here but let's get ourselves into match three take it away this is storm point this is storm point and it might be one of the only two times we get to see it we'll have to find out obviously We'll just keep going if we don't get to a winner after six games. And if after six games we are at that point, we'll go back over to Storm Point. But uh, there is a potential for four games of World's Edge and then only the two of Storm Point. So those Storm Point teams, teams that favor this map a little bit, are really going to be looking at this one as a very big point scoring opportunity. And we Ooh. do indeed get that contest. It is Akuma that are doing well to start things off. War Monster Firebird already losing one. Yeah, talking about scoring points, uh, they're looking to pick up a couple right here with Akuma. And they've got War Monster Firebird on the run. They will finish off Shark. And Azu is running for it. The remaining two members of War Monster Firebird, uh, yeah, they've booked it. They're just uh, looting those buildings down the bottom of Checkpoint. And I think they will be continuing on their merry way. Will Akuma let them? 
Mm, I think so. By the looks of it, they're yeah. happy to just loot the rest of the checkpoint, get it to themselves. Um, you know, you've got the they've got an Evo harvester. It's actually pretty accessible for them, so they're all ready on blues. Oh, 95% Bangalore here for Storm Point. Ooh, so who's the one? Who's the one? That's the big question, isn't it? We've got one team without, which was not the case on World's Edge. AGL. Ooh, thick boys. Thick boy alert. We've got uh, Bloodhound, Gibraltar, and Caustic for AGL. That is uh, an interesting one. Well, I mean, AGL, they, they landed down beast, right? Which means mm. they've got a trident. As you can see, they're currently in it. They're riding it over the top of the down beast, Fast and the Furious style, right now. Special cover. Um, and, yeah, I mean, not only do they get the ring, which is obviously a big deal, uh, but I think that is one of the reasons why you picked Gibraltar on Storm Point, literally just for those bubble rotates. I can't remember who was there. Who was... Who was um driving the car when we had that mill circle last I can't week? Remember who that that, maybe was. that was AGL, yeah, and they made the the rotate like r literally into the middle of the mill with the with the bubble car. That was great. Um, Ooh, but yeah, that so that's sense. that's one of the reasons why they're, they're they're picking the Gibraltar. But so yeah, that's amazing. Now they get the the spot on top of Down Beast, um, and they can fortify it. Right, they've got the bubble to play. I'm going to be keeping my eye on which perks um they get because we haven't seen a lot of uh Gibbies make it to purple armor and get that that level three perk choice yet. Uh, but yeah, teams already just are uh, throwing themselves at the beast, heading towards that direction. Yeah, I mean, it's a pretty standard down beast circle, isn't it, right? You see that second zone pull. It really starts to make you think. Straight from flame. First couple of shots looked really good. Then he started to get peppered back in response. So that uh, didn't help his aim. But by the way, Legends in for this one. Easy Flash is having a bit of a look. I don't know whether or not they got the res off. His opponent is really aware of that push, that flank coming through. But Legends, yeah, they recognize their window has closed. And so, going to reset. And he's back to full health. Yep, there we go. As you say, the window is closed there. MDY Black will continue making their way towards Down Beast. Um, again, Legends Gaming. Not too far from where the zone is, but they don't get a ring console. And yet... They're still sitting towards the top of the leaderboard. They're one of those teams that I think will be happy enough to play the edge and just fight their way in, back themselves in those engagements because they're generally pretty good at winning them. Don't necessarily need to be crashing for a position in the zone. They're on the move at the moment though, so we'll keep an eye on that. But speaking of, I'm going to rock up nearby Serenity. So Serenity will actually be a little careful about that. Those are the shots that are coming through. That's a great one, two, three. Legacy is the knock on the Warmonds of Firebird, but Legends is counting down, and I think it was Bugie that got knocked in that meanwhile. No proper commitment, though, from Legends Gaming as the uh, Util comes down, the ultimate. Oh! Never mind, don't need it. Bugie finished off, and that's it. That's Legends Gaming. Just They, they just they just one, two, three him. Nice way to do it. They head back now. Obviously, uh, there's a chance that they can go back for the banner. Still within the circle. Which makes it a lot easier to do. Um, but sometime, make that happen. But we'll, we'll see. Keep an eye on that one. Deadclaw Gaming. His houses out the front of Down Beast. Super premium in this circle, I would say, Elfish, because the circle is not going over the back of the Down Beast. So we're not going to get one of those circles we saw last time where, you know, Dreamfire will hold the back platform, um, which can be uh, a very good place to be. Now it's more the inside on top of the Beast. Um, Akuma's inside at the moment. AGL, as we mentioned, uh, have driven on top. And then, of course, these... Uh, houses out the front, especially if you're running, you know, Watson outside. Have uh, one of those with a Watson at the moment. They're called Gaming with the Caustic helps. And then, yeah, pretty much every other team. If you, if you don't have a Watson, essentially, I think, I think every single team who doesn't have a Caustic is running a Watson. Okay, not Tom Young Kung. They don't have a controller character. And not SWQ. They don't have a controller character because they're running Fuse. That is a Bangalore Bloodhound use composition for our launchpad team. 
Mr. SW who? Crazy Kong? Might be a fairly uh, relevant name, I guess. Doing something crazy, maybe. Where's Yuling? What's he up to? He's inside the zone. He's coming. He's not too far away. Don't you worry. This will be a little bit of a slower approach for SWQ. They are the team that's pretty much the furthest away from the zone. Still there at uh, the command center, as you can see on the top right of the minimap. Uh, once again, another pull right over the down beast. So you don't really get any special prizes for guessing where this one goes. I feel like on Storm Point, this is probably the most predictable zone. Yeah, I think that the closer it gets to sort of the edge of the sea, the more predictable it gets. So this is probably close enough that it is fairly predictable. I, I would agree with you there. And, um, you know, so just touching uh, one of those key indicators. Uh, almost a firebird. Not finished off completely, but uh, yet another kill. Um, Serenity, by the way, just managed to grab that banner and they have just respawned down in Barometer. Congrats to them. Welcome back, Bugi. Yeah, they've got a bit of a ways to go now as well, don't they? But hey, I tell you what, it's better to be there with three than maybe already knocked out. Plenty of uh, looting to be done on the way through as well. Should set them up nicely for what will ultimately have to be an edge-based style this game. Shots off here from MGYY. It doesn't look like they want to hide too far away from this fight. I mean, War Monster Firebird have already got control of that building, but maybe MGYY want to try their hand at taking it away. I mean, they're rocking up from Stormcatcher, right? Um, it's a fairly far rotate for them. So they've taken their time and got up to purples on the way. Uh, you can see not even popping the spiders above them. Might be a little bit too greedy and, and you know, it's not necessarily going to get them to... Well, it's definitely not going to get them to red, so uh, that makes sense. So <laughs> we've got War Monster Firebird. Uh, Azu just like, oh, I'm gonna get out of here. Grabs that tried. Dark Star, good one. The Boogie Borders, they've been having a really tough day so far. Just two points at the moment. And it doesn't look like it's gonna be getting any better. Tom Yum uh, A little bit of a messy way to start things off there from Asia, but he might have more than enough to finish things off right here, and that is. Boogie board is gone, done and dusted, and again, another bad, bad result for them, which now three games in, I think is really going to start to weigh heavily on the mindset and be quite problematic for the mental strength going into the rest of this lobby. Yeah, I mean, Boogie Borders, they, it, like, a lot of things would have to go wrong for them not to qualify for LAN, but as you say, that is not a good start. They want to be able to lock it in, be able to... Uh, you know, like honestly, one good game probably you know, secures them land. That's all they need, but they definitely have not had that yet. Um, Tommy and Kung, they're still looting in the zone here. KPG was sort of involved in that fight as well and went down to a duo. Um, potential to sort of cause issues for Tommy and Kung coming out of the zone, but they're not. Uh, they, they're going to prioritize themselves rather than the KP or any uh, chaotic options just for now. Well, SWQ certainly made a rotate, didn't they? They were the team that we were talking about at Command Center that was the furthest away from the zone. They've gotten all the way into the trenches just over from down Beast. Not doing too bad for themselves. Outside of the zone, having to move in right on top of yeah. SWQ in a moment. I'm not going to lie, they took their time. Um, that was actually quite a long looting session there from Tong Yang Kung, and now they're walking in on zone close, taking zone damage, and it's going to be really tough for them to get past SWQ, who have just scanned them and worked out there. There, uh, you know, meanwhile you've got uh, Pricey and Co, who don't exactly know where this ring is going, but they've taken control of checkpoint. But yeah, here's that fight coming out from SWQ, and uh, frankly, this was just uh, a little bit of greed coming out from Tong Yang Kung that I think is going to see the end of them. Yeah, SWQ, I mean, they've, built, they've lost one player, but it's looking okay for them at the moment. Donut's just not shying away from the fight at all. And that kind of tells you that the confidence was there, that the fight was going to be won. And indeed it was. Tom Yum Kung, pretty swift exit after a stellar last game. Uh, don't really yeah. manage to add too much to the total. That was that was kind of a me effort, I'm not going to lie. Like, that's I, I am such a, a loot goblin that I will absolutely stay in zone to grab, like, every single attachment that's there. But you cannot afford to do that uh, in, in a lobby like this different when you're playing in your your plat pubs isn't it mate oh shots fired yeah all right well heroes uh enough with 
that result. I don't need to chase. You slow down a little bit. Uh, there's only a couple of teams still having to move. And Burger coming in from checkpoint will be an interesting one because Serenity is also just arriving around near checkpoint and they're going to have to move their way in as well. So that'll be a three team pitched battle against KPG or the connector to down beast. It's on dumpling. Once again, 2x Sentinel for Beach Guard. Needs to be a big fan. And I, I guess on a map like this, especially with a zone like this, it's a great choice. Really, a lot of long range angles. So, oh man, <laughs> four Evax? Is it someone's birthday? That's a lot of balloons. Oh, some dumpling. They lost all their shields, and they might lose all their players in a second as well. Though Pete God's at least been able to get that bat off and can pop a beast of the hunt to try to fight for survival. Really much of a push coming in just yet. To regroup a little bit with Jackie Chan. Not going to be an option now though. Is the is the last man standing? Want on dumpling? This does look like it might be their first game where they miss out tonight. No doubt about it. MTY around the corner. There goes Pete God. That was too easy. Gugu's good. But he's not that good. MTY White. They finish off their fight down the bottom. You got XNY pulling up on them though. I'm sure YC will be coming in with the scam pretty soon. And then JR, the man we were talking about before, very dangerous. He's on the bang. He's got the lock here. That's ah, the last one. Go on. JR can't even make it there in time. XD. He's gonna finish it with the Mastiff. Alright, let's just gave me. Currently sitting on 14 points. Generally a pretty good Storm Point team. Uh, they're being made to work for this game right now by Team Burger, who are essentially gatekeeping them. It is definitely Team Burger that are on the front foot here. They have the positional advantage in Legends Gaming. They have to fight their way into Team Burger, though. It has to be said, they're doing pretty well about it. Legends Gaming, I think they might win this fight. Although the initial knock is going to go back in the opposite direction. They help. Health advantage for a moment, but now they have the player disadvantage and Team Burger push them back. And this is such a, a crazy fight here. You got three teams in the middle uh, of, of all of this. Serenity are a duo. Team Burger have safely navigated it though, and now with the three left up and 20 seconds left, they should be able to finish off Serenity unless Boogie goes crazy with this wing man, but he can only get one down in the end. Four or five death boxes in one spot, so a bit of a dangerous area of the map to be in, unless your name is Team Burger, because there is actually no kit. one else that is headed in their direction. SWQ have heard those shots. They will be aware that there'll be a team coming in from checkpoint, but they didn't want to go and do any exploring of their own. The issue is going to be now for Team Burger that that zone is pushing at their back as they move, so this will be potentially a quite an ill-fated oh, no. rotate. Pricey needs to hit a shot with this Kraber to open things up for them. And he misses the first one, so it starts to get a bit awkward. SWQ causing some real problems on this way in. But that smoke was a good one from Team Burger and allows a little bit more progression. They're going to have to leave Sharky for dead, and I'm not even sure that the rest are going to make their way through. SWQ had such an advantage. That dueling going low is not going to matter. It's Team Burger out of the picture. They had their time in the sun, but it didn't last for very long. As soon as they left checkpoint, they were done. No, I mean, way he had time to pop a medkit when they were resetting there, and he just didn't do it early enough. Had to walk out of the zone uh, with 10 health and gave himself no options. That's crazy that we've seen two such, uh, you know, easily fixable loop issues cause uh, some of these big teams and, and very, uh, you know, uh, amazing teams in Apex South problems here in this game. Defensive bombardment. Getting a knock or a kill in there. Pi also just getting eliminated on the back end. Uma feeling pretty healthy in their position. But X and Y have some fighting to do to get off of this beach. It's never a fun place to be trying to work from. Oh. Actually not with all those Bangalore ultimates. Tossed around the place with the Rolling Thunder. Not going to cause too many problems. Just wasting a little bit of time popping a couple more bats. 
push out though from Laheem of Heroes is a big problem indeed. And JR, you could see, just got stuck. Or was YC. Or maybe JR. Either way, one of the two. They both got stuck in a huge crossfire. Nothing to be done. I think that was the easy cleanup. It might have been the second Bangalore ult that really came to just put the nail in the coffin there for XNY. And XD's managed to get out. He's got a Kraber. So he's trying to scare people away from that and show some presence here. But obviously, you know, as the only one left in the squad and with a couple of seconds left to make his next move, it's not looking good now for XNY. You know, we touched on Akuma before. Um, they managed to... Uh, take out Dreamfire. Dreamfire essentially in Godspot in one of those, or, you know, at least in one of the buildings, I should say. Uh, maybe not Godspot, but like obviously uh, a very strong position in this next zone. Akuma able to take that away from them. That is a big deal and a big win for them. They haven't exactly been popping off so far today. Nothing yet to come. Rudine on the floor. Could be reasonable for both floor gaming. AGL up on top of Down Beast still, or what's left of Down Beast. Trying to put some harassment onto Bible of KPG, but they themselves need to be a little bit careful of Akuma, who one might argue are in one of the best positions in the zone right now. There is a looking solid. Either eight, long range, distance. Works well, love it. There is a pretty healthy as well, so quite a few solid looking teams going into this final zone. Five remaining. AGL's got three off on top of Down Beast, Akuma in the, the tri building, Heroes on the beach, and MDY Black in the other building are the three teams that are fully, four teams I should say, that are fully healthy. Aww. And then you've got Bear Claw Gaming down to just a duo. Come on, XX, don't do this to me. Our, G our Gibraltar is still on blue armor. He's 381 Evo off the next. Um, <laughs> they don't have a lot of ammo. So I guess that's why they haven't been doing that much poking. As you can see, there's just a couple of clips in, you know, barely any attachments. They've literally just sat up the top of down base for pretty much the entire game. And now they have to make a move. They'll take an isolated fight here with the bubble. Oh, heck, I mean, they're going to set that crossfire angle up quite nicely. So AGL, they walk straight into it. Bearclaw Gaming, they're not going to go down without a fight. AGL, have they gotten and bit off a little more than they can chew? It certainly seems to be that way. Uh, Last man standing won't salvage it. And Bearclaw Gaming win the two on three. That was expert positioning from Heck. Just sat himself on the other side. And uh, a huge crossfire for Bearclaw Gaming. <laughs> that just tore AGL to I, shreds. I mean, it, it was it was very good uh, nades as well. As soon as they walked out of that bubble, essentially they got hit with a, a barrage of nades, well-timed nades there from BCG, obviously waiting for that push. Um, but damn, man, my quest for Gibraltar stats continues, apparently. Yep. Maybe you're the problem. Uh, either <laughs> way, Bear Claw Gaming, they have got problems right now because it is just Heck who's alive. So, look, I mean, you got to be happy with what you've been able to achieve there. They've gotten themselves a little more place for the rest. They've got some more kill points. They're going for the res behind that smoke. And yeah, you actually, they, they've got it. So maybe there's still another chapter yet untold here for Bear Claw Gaming. The unlikely heroes of match three of the night. Yeah, actually, heroes. They went for the armor swap just so they could juggle, uh, you know, a little bit of health there. And, uh, you know, one goes to make it, one goes for. Uh, they're literally like looking for shield cells and stuff right now. Uh, Bear Claw Gaming definitely in shambles here, but they have a spot down the bottom. Uh, we'll see how many teams recognize that. You can see the other teams just shoved towards the northern side here, or should I say the, the western side here, with Heroes uh, now going up against Akuma and MDY Black getting caught in the crossfire. Nobody can see anything. I've got to be honest with you, actually. Bearclaw Gaming on the outside of this. They're not a bad outside chance. Akuma trying to climb onto the roof will start to take that fight. It is a massive cluster of fun. Let's just go with that. I could think of a wor much worse word to use here on the broadcast, but I actually think Bearclaw Gaming might be in it to win it because they are now in a position on top of the building where they have the advantage. It's two on one. They get oh the win. God. Can you believe it? Out of nowhere. <laughs> Amazing from Bearclaw Gaming. They win a 2v3 against AGL to keep their positioning. They're so scared they don't even, you know, they wait to get the res off on Belkun. And then after that, they come out on top against three full trios, Lace. What do you make of that?
Imagine just sitting there and having a nice cup of tea and then seeing a gigantic Gibraltar bubble just drop down on you. You know, you would kind of shake in your boots there, but they held it strong. They kept it together. And I think it was uh, Heck there that absolutely annihilated everyone just popping out of that corner. And then to have this dynamic duo take it out. Um, you know, Dino, it's just exceptional. The skill is just amazing coming out of that team. You know, it, it means you don't always need a trio in this game. You just need a little bit of passion between two players, and that is exactly what they did in that game. Um, you know, it was it was just awesome to see. Um, you know, I think another another thing I wanted to touch on was another huge game there from uh, Team Burger. Um, you know, they were sort of cleaning up what was like left out of checkpoint. Um, but as we can see, SWQ here just absolutely popping off. They sort of waited for Team Burger there coming out of zone. So it was a little bit of a tough rotate here for Team Burger as they patiently waited and collected these kills. Um, you know, I don't know if there was too much that they could have done with this zone pool when everyone's sort of already, you know, uh, rotated in. They've set themselves up. Um, you know, it was tough for Team Burger, but SWQ again getting knocked out of there as everybody is just sitting. I also wanted to uh, have a look at Wonton Dumpling having that difficult rotate passing. What I'm going to call, Genome, the apex definition of the movie Up. Like, what was with all those balloons um, that they have <laughs> deployed there just on the outside of Beast? Yeah, yeah, who's, who's going on a snipe hunt, I guess? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, we saw, we saw who was a strafing flame uh, doing pretty well with the Sentinel before, so maybe, maybe it's him. Um, but yeah, that was, a, that was a little bit of a fun interlude in the game there. This a new a, strat. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it was a fun finish as well, though, with Bearclaw Gaming coming out with the eight kills rudine not able to contribute a lot uh having gone down earlier but to convert from that position incredible honestly from bear claw gaming so big props to them uh akuma and heroes of course with six and seven kills and picking up some good placement points um very well done dreamfire usually so good at playing those down b zones um mm. because they got shoved out uh by akuma and then lost it it's actually been a rough one for them, and, uh, you know, they certainly would have hoped for more points out of that X and Y. With six uh, place and nine kills, they're going to be picking themselves up uh, quite a few points of moving up into sixth place now. Will that be enough for them? Mm, I'm not sure, but, uh, uh, you know, certainly they're, they're sticking with the rest of these mm. teams here as you look at the top of the scoreboard. Very competitive lobby today. Yeah, so we can see there's just bare core gaming, you know, after an exceptional game as well, just sort of creeping their way up to second position. And that's all it can take in that sense. Um, again, Tong Young Kung, um, you know, they, they sort of got, I think, knocked out a little bit uh, earlier there. But, you know, collecting all those those kill points can sort of solidify you in that top spot. Again, with Team Burger, um, you know, pulling out some, some huge kill points they're collecting you know all, all that sort of skirts but again you know i said it was a little bit of a tough rotate for them to go in and again once on dumpling um you know they had uh, a, a, i guess a tough rotate there from mill um being one of the later teams into down bees genome you can definitely see that it is difficult to get in um you know you've got teams on on the height of beast those buildings are already sort of captured by caustics so the teams that are making that rotate late are generally, you know, taken out for that, but, you know, they can make it up with kills, I guess. Yeah, yeah, definitely a couple of teams going that route and uh, just trying to pick up the KP. Uh, yeah, you know, Team Burger sitting in, what was it, six, I think. Um, you know, they were fifth coming into today with 80 split points overall. Uh, that kind of performance will definitely see them through to land. Um, you know, other teams, Dreamfire, um, you know, probably mm. need to pick it up a little bit, but again, like a middle of the pack uh, performance for a couple of these teams will be enough. Yeah, being huge from AGL as well, sitting there about ninth at seventy-five. You know, we want to get them over that little that little cusp uh, of the of the eight teams. So they they're performing, and that's exactly what they need to do uh, in this match point. Uh, but we're going to take ourselves another little short break, so you guys get yourself some snacks and shake off those, I guess, that energy, because we're going to bring you more energy when you get back. See you soon. 我我我我我我我我我我我我我我我我我我我我我我我我我我我我我我我我我我我我我我我我我我我我我我我我我我我我我我我我我我我我我我我我我我我我我我我我我我我我我我我我我我我我我我我我我我我我我我我我我我我我
，快打！我操，牛逼、啊！什么都没干，我操！我两个两把枪里面子弹了，我操！我两，我两个子弹，我还想拿不？来，来来来，哎，等一下，等一下，等一下，等一下，等一下，等一下，等一下，等一下，等一下，等一下，等一下，等一下，等一下，等一下，等一下，等一下，等一下，等一下，等一下，等一下，等一下，等一下，等一下，等一下，等一下，等一下，等一下，等一下，等一下，等一下，等一下，等一下，等一下，等一下，等一下，等一下，等一下，等一下，等一下，等一下，等一下，等一下，等一下，等一下，等一下，等一下，等一下，等一下，等一下，等一下，等一下，等一下，等一下，等一下，等一下，等一下，等一下，等一下，等一下，等一下，等一下，等一下，等一下，等一下，等一下，等一下，等一下，等一下，等一下，等一下，等一下，等一下，等一下，等一下，等一下，等一下，等一下，等一下，等一下，等一下，等一下，等一下，等一下，等一下，等一下，等一下，等一下，等一下，等一下，等一下，等一下，等一下，等一下，等一下，等一下，等一下，等一下，等一下，等一下，等一下，等一下，等一下，等一下，等一下，等一下，等一下，等一下，等一下，等一下，等一下，等一下，等一下，等一下，等一下，等一下，等一下，等一下，等一下，等一下，等一下，等一下，等一下，等一下，等一下，等一下，等一下，等哎，你是 fucking old dude！ 啊，准备打！我人到，我人到，我人到，他们在那边，好不好？快点，快点，快点！解封，解封，解封，解封！咪个三，咪个三，咪个三！来，打我，打我，打我，打我，跟你，打我，跟你！慢点，慢点，慢点，慢点，慢点！我到，我到，慢点，慢点，我到，炸了，炸了，扑了，扑了，扑了，扑！什么意思？点三，点三，点三，点三，点三！呜呼 ！Nice！ 三、二、一，炸了，炸了，炸了！谁能杀老白？他们怎么？他们怎么？能回去吗？能回去吗？不用不用不用，别打别打别打别打！哎你妈个逼的，给我吹起来了！兄弟你俩你俩二打二打二打二打二打二打！快上！快上！快上！快上！快上！快上！快上！快上！快上！ Hello and welcome back, everybody. Game number three, nothing short of incre incredible. As Bear Claw Gaming, playing that uh, that game mostly as a duo. They, you know, they managed to fight off uh, what I'm going to say an Australian drop bear team, uh, which is AGL jumping down, uh, you know, that Gibby bubble and then going up against. I think it was two full teams to take that win. Um, absolutely insane and skillful plays from them, Gino. That was crazy. They managed to fight so well there. I mean, I guess the, the Gibby bubble almost provided a little bit of a, you know, uh, an easier way to get your nades in because obviously mm. the nades stop at the edge of the bubble. So as soon as they walked out, I think, uh, you know, they just walked straight into uh, this this barrage and uh, that, that really started um, uh, the fight off for them. So yeah, look, uh, good one there for Bear Claw Gaming. You don't often see that uh, a duo winning when there's multiple trios alive and ready to go. Exactly right. They're sitting about 16th uh, on the overall leaderboard as well um, at 61 points. To you. So if they could do that as a duo, imagine if they, uh, you know, keep this up as a trio, they they could potentially even have that chance to sort of jump up that bracket. Um, mm. But, you know, only time will tell in that sense. Obviously, you know, we've uh, got about seven places um, to fill here. Once on Dumpling Legends Gaming, um, you know, have kind of solidified the spots. They, they're they still going to uh, perform the way we know they can. You know, they're, they're huge, heavy-hitting teams. Um, you know, we have Tom Young Kung um, sitting quite high on uh, today's leaderboard. They're sitting about fourth in the overall standings um you know these these teams are what they're about three points difference um if we have a look at the overall standings genome so mm. it, it it's so close um that it it could potentially shuffle um quite a bit on this leaderboard yeah definitely in the middle of the leaderboard is quite close uh you know where you're sitting mm. down with bear claw gaming with 61 points it, it is almost impossible for them to win uh with anything but first right um, you know, they like they'd have to have you know MDY White, Serenity, Dreamfire, Team Burger, like all of these teams would basically have to get uh Choke. you know like twentieth, nineteenth, eighteenth in the lobby to sort of make that happen, right? That's when we say uh, you know, mathematically possible, but realistically probably not gonna happen unless they can uh grab a couple more of those dubs and win the match point day all up. And someone who is, uh, you know, certainly looking okay for that, but as you can see, has been on a downward slide since that first game is Wanton Dumpling. Yeah, exactly right. Now, I guess we'll touch on match point as well. So if you're just joining us halfway here, um, you know, we have match point uh, format, which is uh, first team to 50 points um, and then claiming a win after that um, can take a one way ticket to land. So even though, you know, we have our, our I guess our brackets here, it's still going to be, um, you know, anybody can take that. Um, 
obviously we're seeing uh, some some you know heavy hitting teams, um, not sh- overly shining, um, but it still is doable. It is still claimable for these teams in match point. Um, this means we might not even know how many games we're going to play today. We haven't got anyone in match point yet. Obviously, that was just game number three. Genome. Yeah. Um, you know, we're we're sort of uh, we're, it's a little. I wouldn't say it's a equal, but it is it is going. It, I feel like it's going to be a long one. Yeah, it's definitely shaping up to be that. As you say, no one's there at match point yet, which means we need at least another two games to finish this one off. Yeah, exactly right. You know, we've seen uh, APAC uh, North do it in four games, um, but that's fine. We're going to take ourselves into match number four. This is the uh, next game on Storm Point. Let's take it away. Yeah, still a bit of ways to go. It still feels like early days. Have to wait and see how things shape up in this game. Look, it is possible. It is possible that someone gets there off of this game, but it would have to be a pretty damn big game. So I guess I hold our thoughts back for the moment. Again, things to touch on at the start of this is going to be that contest over checkpoint. I can already see that that is occurring. War Monster, Firebird, and Akuma both keen to take that fight to one another again. Hmm, I think maybe a bit of a difference this time. We've got War Monster, Firebird, uh, all three of them is like uh, sitting in the one building, whereas we've got Akuma. Um, they've split to get a bunch of the bins, maybe to give themselves, you know, more loot, maybe a, a higher chance at a weapon and some um, some options over there. But now they'll they'll start collapsing on War Monster Firebird, who is sitting in the building, and they do get the first knock. Oh, Akuma, receive one back. It's Killapol's down. You play quite low as well, but Crusader... This peacekeeper is looking pretty threatening. He's trying to be patient with his shots. Knows that everything really matters at this point, and that's a good one. All wants the Firebird will go down again. So Kuma, twice in a row, essentially win the contest over checkpoint. Yep, that's uh, that's two from two. I mean, sure they only got the one kill the first time, but you know if the other team gets completely routed, running out. Doing? running out of it yeah i think you, you have to count that one for them right so two to zero um of course uh, both teams will be happy that they'll head back to world's edge next where they have safety in their drop spots and where no one is currently contesting i mean you do see that less right when you uh when you play regional finals teams are a little more wary of going for the contest because there's so much at stake and uh you know it can be quite risky to take those early fights Burger have been quietly plugging away. 25 points on the board so far today, so not doing too badly. But with that in mind, if they keep up that pace, then they're only just going to hit match point after the sixth game. Which might be a little bit off the pace and potentially starts to put you in danger of some other team just picking up a win in game five, game six, something like that. They really want to have the best possible crack at it. They're going to have to go a little faster. So is Legends Gaming. One of the, the favorites going into today, perhaps the favorite going into today. But uh, despite one pretty good game, it's uh, you know it's been Sorry, relatively slow going actually. Yeah, not, uh, not a dominating performance so far from them, but uh, it's definitely not a dominating performance from Boogie Borders, who's sitting in twentieth spot. Some smoke. That that would mean zero split points here for the overall standings. Mm. Two points. I mean, you'd think they'd been contested, but they haven't. We should probe that sector over there. Oh well, I tell you what, you know, we can maybe get a bit of an insight as to how they're feeling because boogie boarders do have a listening ready to go, and we'll get a bit of a good idea of how things are going for them today when we listen to this. Enemy over there. Nice. I'm on here. Three team flash, moving forward. That's this guy. Just gotta look back. back. Gotta look back. Down the roof. Yeah, I'm looking back. I need energy when we're done. Carrying away. I'm gonna try loot it. Going for loot. I had kit cannon, maybe? What the fuck was that? No. I'm scanning for you. I, can, I dropped all my energy there. You can take it. Just take my energy. Yeah, I, need to. I literally can't do anything for a bit. I got ammo now. I need me. Yeah, it's chill. Looking. Yeah, I'm chilling. I'm chilling. Just stay healthy. I think it's super safe. Yeah. I have dog. There's traps there. I don't yeah, know, he's still there. It's fine. 105 on him. 
Nice Good shot. shot, bro. He fucked off a bit. What's off full safe, guys? I've got over here. Okay. On me. In this like they can pick from here, but they safe. should get fucked. Can I loot it or no? No. Is there anything left? Not really. I got everything I can drop bats. I got the two X here. Nice. And they have one bat. <sighs> How much energy you got now, Rocky? I yeah. dropped my energy, I dropped all of it. Okay, cool, don't worry. Okay, so Boogie Borders have found a relatively safe spot, as you can hear there, understanding where the sight lines are. It's it's a bit of a tricky one here. You're not in a building, right? It's not really easy mm. to tell uh, exactly where you're going to be taking damage from. But um, as the ring is pulling over this uh, this this way, and there's a good chance it does end up on that hill underneath Thunderwatch, um, I think this is a yeah a relatively a smart spot for boogie boarders uh, to stay, uh, especially considering you know, they started off with with uh, the one KP. That's uh, you know that's something. Um, considering, look, they didn't sound like they were in uh, you know too low of a spirit. Uh, Elfish. Uh, hopefully, they've got that yeah. faith in themselves. Yeah, hopefully. Uh, we'll have to see how this game plays out. I think this could be a good one for them. Uh, you know, they'll be on a bit of a quieter side of the zone, that northern side. There shouldn't be too many teams coming down from that area of the map maybe one kpg's up above them uh but it's kind of about really all they're gonna have to deal with so i think they might be okay there to just sort of play a little bit of a slow game here maybe get some more points on the board we'll keep checking in with them as we go through this one uh, but as you can see storm point it is one of those maps with quite a bit of verticality always makes it interesting moving around the map particularly in this area of the map uh, around Stormcatcher, there's just a lot of, like, terrain changes. You do have to be sort of extra careful, particularly when you're going up. When you're going up these uh, these hills, there's always a possibility that you can get stuck in a very awkward fight. Yeah, 100%. There's so many teams that talk about how hard it can be to play on the south side of the map, not only because of rotations, anything. Valk ult, evac balloons actually get you less far when you think about that, right? Legends yep. Gaming going for their 18th respawn of the series. Um, and Zone actually does pull up very much towards, uh, Stormcatcher and that hill. So, uh, Boogie Board is actually in a fantastic spot. SWQ may not be, though, as they have uh, run into Wonton Dumpling, and they're a little bit isolated from one another. Donut has, though, been able to bring back a knock with the nade. He himself will fall as well. So it's just Crazy Kong who, like I said, a little bit isolated away from this fight on the outskirts of it. Hasn't really been able to do enough, and, yeah, some chip damage is nice, but... It is definitely not going to keep his team alive. And Whoa. On dumpling. Uh, who's that flying in? It's MDY Black. What are you doing here? Ooh, yeah, that's a good question, actually. <laughs> that's Looking the... Uh, steal some kills. That's the edge of the zone, guys. What's going on? Why are you evacuating that way? Opportunity. They saw an opportunity. They're going to take it. But they've got to make sure that they actually convert this. Otherwise, it will look a little bit silly. Oh! Uh, already, it's starting to blow up a little bit in their face. This one's on Dumpling has secured the first knock and kill on the JoJo. It's a two-for-one so far, and that is just <laughs> really not very impressive from MDY Black. Unfortunately, one's on Dumpling sweep them aside and say nothing but a fly to me at this point. I mean, you're going to mess with one ton Dumpling. You better be ready, man. Like... You can't just roll up on that team and I don't expect it to go your way. That is an interest. I mean, look, I think what happened was is maybe they uh, scanned the, the survey beacon at launch pad and they were like, hey, there's a fight going on on edge. We can go third this. And then, you know, well, you saw what happened. Yeah, well, what it did actually do is allow SWQ to get at least one res. You can see them down at launch pad, so their game's actually been somewhat saved by what you would maybe say is a bit of an int by MDY Black, but by the way, it, it'll be a slower rotation, obviously, for Wonton Dumpling than they would like, but they don't have too far to go. It's just going to be, obviously, it's uphill that they're going to be having to, to fight, but okay for the moment. And here's a little bit more of that verticality that we're talking about, Stormcatcher. You can have players down on the ground, you can have players down on the building level, and you can have players on the roof as well. It can occupy a lot of teams. And if you would look at the mini-map, or if you would look at the, the map in general, you would see that there is a lot of teams hanging around in this area. So it will get pretty busy once Stormcatcher starts to get pushed out of zone. Yep, which it will. Can't end on the building in Stormcatcher, of course. That'd be crazy with all the different levels to that particular dwelling. So that means 
like Legends Gaming that are playing very far away from the ring right now. I mean, these guys have to go all the way through. Uh, ooh, they're at, looks like they're actually going to wrap through the top here uh, and come around try and zone wrap essentially on someone. And I like this. And I like that they're doing it in zone 2. If it was zone 3, it starts costing you a lot of meds um, just for the you know, for the sake of a couple of syringes or maybe a med kit. I think this is uh, not a bad option, honestly. So it'll get them right on top. They'll be able to play top command center. And then you can, if you get control of this, you can actually drop down. If, uh, let's say, uh, yeah, the, yeah, they've got evacs, right? You can see that already on, on uh, Easy Flash there. Um, so you take control of the gravity cannon at the top of command center and you can literally just jump on the evac tower and, and oob. It's a, it's a really good play. I like this from Legends Gaming. It's definitely an unorthodox one that can potentially catch a team or two out as well if you come from behind them in the zone. They've obviously done the math. They've got the they've got the meds. Need to be a little bit careful of Lan, who at this point is he really paying attention to what what is happening behind him? Not really. I'm also interested in what's happening down the hill. I don't know. If Legend are going to be seen, so it might just be a case of whether or not they're heard. Oh, they've been spotted. There you go. So, KPG have got the information. They've done their due diligence. Well done. That would have been a little bit unfortunate if they would have allowed Legend to really just push their way in without getting any information at all. Okay, well, there goes all my theory crafting about uh, top of command, but... Uh, this is also a reasonable spot to play from. That said, uh, once they do get set up, it does become a little harder. So, setting up here underneath, they're just... Uh, I mean, I'm surprised they've got... He's got the gen out, but I think that's just in case someone drops on them. I don't think they're... they're like, obviously, they can't stay here for anything past the next minute. Um, but they have to go down the hill and take on, say, Serenity or Boogie Board. I think this is actually going to be an interesting... Uh, they've run out and of flesh meds. Yeah, yeah, exactly. That's that's why I guess they're so keen on this. Um, you can see that in their backpacks as well. But it's going to be an interesting rotate. They kind of have to kill someone to get those flesh meds. Um, I reckon we should get a listen in here with Legends Gaming to see how they navigate this with uh, less than ideal circumstances. Wait until they evac and then we evac as well, okay? Maybe I, cool. I drop my evac so, so they can... Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh -huh. Nice. Good idea, mate. It's out of ring though. We can't take that. We'll die. They're gonna fight us. Can we slide down to this spot? This spot? Yeah. Yep. Ready? One, two, three, slide, slide, slide. There's a spot in the middle somewhere. It's empty. It's, huh? it's right here, oh, yeah, I mean. no. We got fucked from Stormcatcher, guys. I'm trying to put Jim down. I'm safe on me, I'm safe on me. I'm safe on me, they're getting shot up there, just play on me, just play on me! I'm in sight down, Mark, oh, Mark. Uh, sight down, sight down. Maybe they... Yeah, uh, I don't know, we die trying to go there. We can maybe go there. Try, leg it oh, to I'm, that. I'm, I'm following Mark. We're safe right here, Mark. I'm safe. Yeah, yeah, we're, we're safe, Mark. They're like, 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 I got the you think you can, you think you can come to us? Uh, they, they're here. I'm about to they're third, fighting on me. We do. Side down, player. Yeah, yeah. It's only one guy. Yeah, yeah. It's only caustic. It's only caustic. Just myself. Okay. Well, Legends Gaming really threading the needle in the haystack at the moment, trying to find every possible little nook and cranny of cover in there. To be quite honest with you, doing a decent job given the circumstances, but they might have been given a little too much to do, and Legends will be eliminated. It was some nice map knowledge displayed by Strafing, but at the end of the day, they just had no flesh meds and way too many teams crossfiring them that there was really nowhere to go. Yeah, I'm a little surprised by that, honestly. I mean, uh, you know, I was, <laughs> I was sort of talking about how I thought it was a good decision, but if you've got that few meds in the backpack, is a zone wrap really... Uh, the best plan of attack. They had to play the rest of that out as if they had like less than white armors, essentially, right? Like that's how you got to think about it. Um, then again, you know, some other teams kind of in shambles as well. Fussy's got eight ammo left. That's that's two bursts of the nemesis there. Um, 
or the boogie boarders. His teammates can't help him. Um, none of them running energy weapons. So a little bit, uh, a little bit suspect there. But as you can see with that zone pull, wow. this oh, is, is just about the best possible result that a team burger could ever get. They are holding. Do we actually, I'm not. Do we have a name for this place yet? The secret facility is what it's called in the game. Um, and yeah, it's so it's like it's unassailable, right? Like you put some caustic mm -hmm. barrels up the top there. There is nothing else that the teams can do to take that back. It is so hard. Yeah, I'm not sure what that's uh, going to mean really for everybody else, but for Team Burger, at least they're pretty happy. The thing is, though, we've only got the blue shield. Oh. But we'll talk about that in a moment because AGL a little little booked on that rotate through. Ooh, currently, the lobby leaders. And again, from Asia, a nice long-range beam bit or is eliminated. Guess who just went down with blue armor? Who was that? XX. Now Gibraltar. You're cursed. Every time, man. Every time. Come on. Mm. Just, like, just play play Edge and, like, hit some Evo Harvesters for me, please. No, sir. Well, we'll see what happens here because... This is going to get pretty messy pretty fast. DK Gaming have got some level of control over their circumstances, but they will have to move pretty soon. Setting up for that. Arkstars headed in the direction of MDY White. Yum Yum Pool. Oh, in trouble here. Dexter goes down pretty quickly, but Akuma will be eliminated straight away. Quick trade there from Yum Yum Pool, who looks to be safe for the moment. A lot of teams floating around though, so I don't know that they can reliably get that res. They may have been able to. No, Dex is still on the floor. VK Gaming. Oh, oh big one from Ziggy on to Shao Kai. Yom Yong Kung not going down without a fight. They are holding on to first place for the moment, but it really comes down to what Ziggy can do here with this Kraber. There's another connection. This time running out though, as the zone pushes at his back and he's eventually going to have to drop into his own smoke. Might be enough to allow a res. Risky. Maybe. But it'll make it happen. Yeah, it looks like uh, outside. They're going to manage to reset off this boogie borders. Mm, doesn't go their way. They get locked into a fight with keep going gaming. And you see, they were struggling a little bit. And just bring it back here. Tom Young Kung just constantly under pressure. This is so hard for them. Lightning yeah, Unicorn, Dexter. though, also only one of them up, so... Yeah, Dex has been pretty much crawling this entire endgame. Ziki's the only one that's been really able to stay afloat for Tom Yum Kung, but every second that he stays open is another potential kill or another potential placement point, and that's getting to you just one step closer to the magic number 50. We'll give you match points. Not really the same circumstances necessarily for Lightning Unicorn. They are very far away from that. There you go, outside eliminated. So Ziki doing, he's doing God's work at the moment for his team. And there's another knock. Is there going to be a finish on that one as well? You can see every single one of these kill points matters to him as he tries to find it. And it's now three teams remaining. A bunch just falling in unison. Going gaming. We'll get time to reset. We talked about Team Burger up on God Spot and MDY White also getting a reset at the moment. All three of those teams have three players alive. APG have managed to pick up eight kills so far, doing phenomenally well as Tree Cleaner. He's actually the closest, uh, sorry, Bible is the closest to getting red out of them. Um, as you can see, Team Burger, you know, they were all sitting uh, with a lot left. They've done a bit of damage, and now Sharky and uh, Pricey are reasonably close to getting purples. But, you know, will they get them in time for this end zone? Hard to say. MDY White. Um... They're sitting by themselves as well. Both teams are on various edges of the circle, but it ends so close to Team Burger that they just absolutely will not have to fall off this high ground at all until the very last moment. So in this situation, what would you rather have? Would you rather have the purple armors or would you rather have a height? You'd probably rather have the height still, at least as long as it's three teams remaining. When it comes into that, that 3v3, the, the, the two teams, the last two teams, then maybe the extra armors can be valuable, but you can see they're actually not too far away from the, the purples. The Sharky and Pricey have just hit the purples now. I tend to agree. 
really not too far off. Yeah, just forcing out that damage because they were close, and I think that makes a lot of sense. As you said, way not really uh, anywhere on that. So, yeah, um, not gonna happen. And also, he's got only 33 uh, energy left on his Havoc, so... Not, uh, not a lot there, um, you know, for way to do is he uses half of that last oh, clip. He's just, the rest of it really is just going to charge up this PK on the top. But in terms of ultimates, now we're going to start seeing them come out. You got to give them options to get up the top here, but MDY White are taking the first blows. Yeah, that's at the hands of KPG, who are the other team on the ground. KPG need to be very careful that they don't sort of overextend on this one because they will start to receive shots from Team Burger up the top. Team Burger are the kings of the hill at the moment. And, well, they're going to try to push the issue here a little bit. This is the perfect spot to be in, really, for Team Burger. It could not get better, really. They are just wailing that damage down upon their opponents. EMP, not a bad timing for it. It's going to force some of the resets, force some bats out. There's a... Forcing ultimate coming through. KPG wants to take this fight and at least secure second place. Doesn't really matter though, because it was always going to be Team Burger to take the victory. And a solid, solid game from them. Look at you might look at it. You might look at it on paper and say that was relatively easy for them. They got the the hard feet, but yeah, hey, you got to you got to convert those kinds of games, right? When you get that kind of opportunity. Yeah, T Burger having the knowledge on the zone was like the gift that kept on giving. Um, they were a little bit tight on loot there, but the height was enough for them just to take that victory. Elfish, a um, little bit sad, I guess, for uh, the likes of like Legends Gaming. I was watching making that zone rotate through cave. Unfortunately, you know, having a fair few teams on either side. Um, been nice here though seeing Akuma win the contest again against uh you know War Monster Firebird. Um, you know, it's uh two uh, two zero as Genome said, so it's something that uh you know we're gonna probably see moving forward on Storm Point. Um again a huge game uh from Tom Young Kung and Ziki absolutely annihilating with this Kraba. It was sort of enough to get maybe, you know, another placement there. It's a quick reset on Dexter, but again you losing Dexter quite soon on but uh you know like popping up there to fifth doing the damage that we love to see from ziggy but uh you know i guess not enough as a little solo warlord elfish yeah no not quite but look i mean the thing is every single point really matters at this point in time because we're kind of getting into one game territory mm. where there's a few teams now that are like well next game we should be getting that match point locked in Okay. It's not necessarily going to happen, and we'll get a look at the scoreboard at some point here, and, and, and we'll sort of break that down. But there are a couple of teams that could reliably look at that and say, well, we, we can we can do it in one game. Uh, and, and that's kind of what you need to be doing so you don't run into a situation like what Team Burger did in that, that fateful day where... I, and I was talking about with Genome during the cast, mm. and I said that they won from 49 points to get to match point. They actually won two games in a row. They, got, they won one game that got them to 49. Then they won the next game got over 50 and then couldn't win again. So you don't want that. You want to be getting to 50 on this next game. If you are Tom Yum Kung, Burger, Wonton Dumpling not too far away, keep going gaming. It's going to take a big-ish game from them. But these are teams that are now sort of starting to get within striking distance. Nine points in one game is very achievable. Yeah, exactly right. And uh, I guess Ziki there with the Kraber was still enough for them to, uh, I think they had about six kill points uh, with a fifth uh, placement still to sort of uh, push them right to the top and keep them there. Um, and then Team Burger just climbing up their way. Um, you know, again, they waited patiently. They they had that zone knowledge in, uh, I guess, in that, that new zone pool. Again, I'm unsure and unfamiliar with the name or what we're going to call that little area. But, you know, a few zones do pull there. You do solidify that height and it is a huge one. Most teams will sort of play around that tree area as well. And then you just watch everyone rotate and storm. And yeah, Team Burger just really showed us exactly how to play um, that zone. And again, once on Dumpling, um, getting knocked out a little bit early, but, uh, you know, again, still collecting a lot of kills. I think it was uh, MDY Black um, that sort of mm -hmm. flew in uh, and just kind of gave them uh, all that uh, all that KP. Yeah, that was a very interesting choice from them. But I guess, I don't know. Look, if I'm trying to grasp the straws, if I'm trying to play devil's advocate, they must have thought that they had a third party opportunity because they had heard a lot of fighting over there. The issue was that Wonton Dumpling still had three strong and they were basically uncontested really by SWQ who were getting farmed. And then MDY lands on them and it's like, oh, sup, by the way, it's a 3v3 and we're better. 
Yeah, and at the end of the day, you don't know what team you're landing on. But uh, yeah, I think SWQ mm. sort of made it away with two players. But, you know, that's just how the cookie crumbles. But we're going to take ourselves another short break uh, and we will see you back on... Uh, actually, we're going to see you back on... Um, World's yeah, Ed. World's Edge. It is World's Edge. Let's go. Yep. All right, we'll see you shortly. <laughs> Look, I mean, this is what this has been the most competitive year of Apex. Is only going to get Who is going to be the team to challenge the titans of TSM? From a legacy to a dynasty, it is now complete for TSM. today. fear anything. Can you say the same? Welcome back, everyone. Game number four it was action packed with Team Burger taking the win from, uh, you know, from hype from the God spot, pushing them up to second place um, for today. You know, we're here to cover everything Apex South uh, here in the regional finals. We are obviously having the match point format, um, so things are a little bit different. We need our teams to hit. 50 points to be match point eligible. Um, we have not yet reached that yet, Elfish. Yeah, but we're not too far away. We've got nine points required for Tom Yum Kong Team Burger. So I think that's very achievable in one mm. game. Wonton Dumpling, the way they've been playing. Yeah, I can see them getting that done. I mean, yeah, high placement definitely gets it there. A couple of kill points in there and, and you're pretty much set. And for keep going gaming, the job gets a little bit harder. You'd really start it. You'd be starting to look at like a top two or a top one to actually make that happen. Plus a decent number of kills coming through as well. So beyond that, like unless it's a really, really good game from like Akuma, Bear Claw, Serenity, mm. or maybe KPG, I think it's probably the top three that we're kind of looking at here and saying, okay, they just need not a not a middling game. It needs to be like a semi decent game. But we could reasonably go into uh, the next game with like two or three teams potentially that are uh, on that match point. 
Yeah, exactly right. So yeah, we could even just have a win, I guess, from once on Dumpling um, to solidify themselves to hit the 50 points. So we're very much really there, very close. Um, but you know, we know our heavy hitting teams. Um, now let's take a look at our big damage players. Of course, we've seen that name before. Um, it's Goo Goo, uh, you know, absolutely yeah. an exceptional player there for Wonton Dumpling. Um, yeah, we guess we could touch on it's the first time we probably haven't seen uh, Easy Flash uh, up in, uh, you know, these high damage things, Elfish. But, uh, you know, Sharky and Pricey uh, for Team Burger, and they've been uh, performing exceptionally well today. Yeah, indeed, indeed. Team Burger are having a bit of a... A bit of a day, and that's exactly what you want to be doing, all right? This is the day that you need to be turning up. Now, that last game certainly has helped out. I mean, it's it's beneficial to them that we look at this graphic after the game, which they just did so well in. But, you know, we'll obviously have to see how things continue to shape up over the next couple uh, of games. Would it have looked exactly that way prior to that game? Maybe not. I think, as we've said, Gugu has been kind of the standout, obviously, for not just today, but really for the entire season has been one of those players that we've been looking to and saying, wow, that, that guy is... Um, certainly a talent and Wonton Dumpling already, yeah, like we said, have, have kind of locked themselves in for uh, an international spot. But uh, tonight they're also doing well for themselves, which is not necessarily something we can say from Legends Gaming. Like, like to that graphic there, you would normally see Legends Gaming players on that, that graphic. And uh, tonight they're struggling a little bit more. So uh, it's, yeah, once again, I guess that argument between Wonton Dumpling and Legends, who's at the top of APAC South? Well, right now, I think the argument has to be going to once on Dumpling because they are doing well in the strongest lobby that we have. Yeah, you know, you know Legends Gaming are, you know, still doing, uh, I guess, a little bit of work. But yeah, are they taking more of a backseat because they kind of know that they're going through. But then you look at once mm. on Dumpling, you know, being that team that just wants to be able to do it all. Um, you know, I guess at the end of the day, you, you want to get yourself through the land. You want to get the uh, the prize money as well. Um, and you, and you want to do it with style. So that's exactly what they're trying to do. I guess they solidify a win. Um, I, I think they had a win already. Um, on, uh, I guess, World's Edge. So we're going back to World's Edge shortly. They might be able to do it again. That will put them in the, the match point eligibility. Um, and it's just going to be super good from them. I guess Team Burger as well, um, sitting in second. I think they're only nine points uh, away from hitting match point as well, Elfish. So with their performance today, it is definitely doable. Um, they just took out the win just before. Uh, and they have seemed to be sort of collecting the kill points. So nine points. Um, I guess points away from match point eligibility is is not um, not too difficult, and we will definitely probably see it this game. Yeah, something that I'm looking at as well going into this one is like, where's Boogie Borders, right? Like, when when do we get to actually see them pop up? Because that last game, again, they were in a pre pretty rough spot that we saw them having to push down the hill and sort of play like. Uh, you know, I think they ended up being like maybe around eighth, ninth, something like that when they got knocked out. So they got a couple of points on the board at least for that, uh, in comparison to some of the earlier games that we watched where they just one point or no points so and it's an improvement but it's not up to scratch for a team like boogie borders who has been one of the best teams in the region so far look at this tonight 19th 13th 20th and 9th so two games they've gone last or or second last once they've gone 13th which is nothing to get excited about and their best game mm. is a ninth with one kill and it's just like what has happened to this team tonight again they were in such a solid position going into tonight 86 points on the overall standings that it's yeah. pretty unlikely that they get knocked out of the top eight but i mean they're not doing themselves any favors like i haven't done the maths you know like it's kind of hard at this point like so many teams you have to think about and stuff like that but i mean they're not in a position where they're gonna get like barely any points out of today they might have gotten like they might have got one point or something if they if the games ended now mm. they'd get like one point i think they were in 19th or something like that so that's barely anything so yeah I yeah i mean it's tough yeah i've sort of touched on you know they they always have a little bit of a slow start yeah. but uh you know what let's hope they can turn it around in this next game we're heading back to world's edge this is game number five yeah well all it takes really is one good game from them and hopefully that's going to come sooner rather than later but uh, they're probably not the biggest of talking points at the moment because really what we're focusing on is whether or not those teams toward the top end can now get themselves to match point. And I would hope at least one team is going to be able to do that this game. Yeah, I think that is quite likely um, that we see one team there. It's it's not it's not certain. I mean, you know, nine points is still, uh, you have to work for that. And the fact that, uh, you know, we've only got, um, there was a team burger on Tom Young Kung uh, up in that sort of situation. I mean, shout out to Tom Young Kung. Those guys always show up in regional finals. Uh, like when it comes to the hardest lobbies, uh, you know, 
those guys are, are definitely putting in the work and um you know the harder it gets it seems like almost the better they will do um and you, you were having a discussion about boogie borders there um a little bit elfish i have done the maths uh and i can tell you it is not impossible for them to fall out of that top eight right um okay it, it is impossible for like legends gaming and for um mm. and for wanton dumpling um but it's not inconceivable uh that uh the boogie borders don't make it through if they don't improve they probably only need like a, a 15th or a 14th or something to get through i would say mm. um nice nice zone for them so definitely we'll keep our eyes on them this game is war monster firebird pull out the conduit pathfinder revenant okay let's uh, go well, they uh, i'm pretty sure they're the team at the bottom of the standings right now and they would also have been one of those teams that was pretty much relying on winning this lobby to actually yes. go to land so i think you know if you put two and two together here genome they might have checked out a little bit after the first few games and now they're starting to just go well we're not gonna make it let's have some fun <laughs> i mean that's point man you just, just win every game from now on like that's the fun oh, of it yeah okay with this comp yeah yeah I mean, if, well, listen, uh, hello? If they did it raid boss revenant i mean i don't know if you've it. seen yeah, that guy just it. like full send you with an eva 8 in season 20 but he's uh he's pretty much unbeatable here. we'll see we'll see uh, i believe I my doubt i believe yeah Here's Boogie Borders, five points right now. You talked about them maybe needing to hit 15, 14, which would give them five or six season points overall. Yeah. Right now, they're at 19, which gives them one season point. Yep. So that is, yeah, that is, a, like, if, if there was ever going to be a time where the third place team going into the day didn't make it in the top eight, it actually could be today if they sit there at 19. Like, that's, that's how it happens. Unfortunately, and I, I, I regret that we're having to talk about it, but look, it is one of the big talking yeah. points of this lobby right now. Absolutely. Well, they've, uh, they've found position early in the ring. They might be okay. Um, and as we switch over to our Pathfinder friend here, you can see Azu has picked that up with Shark. He's going to be, uh, you know, he's going to be sniffing for blood there on that Revenant. I mean, this is going to be one of the first time we see uh, Pathfinder Evo picks in competitive Sorry. Apex as well, which is obviously kind of fun. True. Um, and, uh, yeah, what do you... Yeah, so yeah, he'd gone for Survey Beacon, Build Research, and now obviously, uh, you know, so for the, his level 2 Evo upgrades there for Pathfinder, you can either choose to be able to, to scan ring consoles or survey beacons, right? Mm -hmm. um, and I think that makes a lot of sense there uh, for War Monster Firebird because they started off at staging. Um, and yeah, they started off with a survey beacon. They didn't have a ring console, right? So um, it, it's it's kind of, it's a, it's a bit funny because you have to get the Evo before you can actually scan it so you know you'd like that 200 to upgrade your armor but you don't actually get that yep. chance um but you know they've already um picked up two survey beacons uh and now they're potentially actually moving back to, to take a fight with wanton dumpling because you know they're looking for those kill points but lots of other action going on around the map so we'll try and follow as much of it as we can as teams uh just zoom into skyhook as the zone moves over there um uh, but some of these teams are setting up some of these teams are setting up for fights further afield as well. It's going to be one of those games where I'm kind of looking at Dreamfire again. Uh, I know I had them highlighted as one of my teams to watch at the start of the day. They were dropping in Countdown, uh, so it's not been a very far rotate for them. They should be pretty happy with the position that they've been able to find themselves in. Like, they would have had, if not the pick of the litter, at least the sort of top two kind of position, if that makes sense. Like, they should in theory be rotating faster than almost every other team if they're coming through from the countdown so i look at them and say okay if you're going to get a, a ring pool like this one you need to get some value out of it particularly because it's been you know it's not been an awful oh, night no. but it hasn't been an amazing night sorry i was just watching uh yeah no you're absolutely right there um i just got a bit of a jump scare as raki got knocked in that building that we were looking at just before from boogie borders obviously we keep talking about how how they really just need a uh, honestly one good game would be enough one big game um would probably do it for them and uh put them beyond reproach or land mm. <laughs> yeah. well let's keep, uh, 
keep an eye on things. Legends also have not been at their best tonight. Ooh, okay. Yeah, it's been a tough one for them. Watson, Conduit, Bangalore. This will be a, you know, a composition they have been playing with throughout the split, or at least for Season 20. And I think it's a decent comp, but it's not one that many other teams have been opting for very much. But Straight from Flame is uh, you know, no stranger to that. Oh, well, that was a close one, but MDY White, they're taking this fight. And it's not going too well for them. Team Burger eventually do fall. That'll be their first big exit. That's the first game that they really miss out on. It looked awkward for a moment for MDY White with uh, first player going down pretty quick. But Feiju and Mingyu were able to hold on. Mm. Just a chaotic fight, you know. It's one of those where the, the difference is split by very, very tiny little pieces of that engagement. Okay, ring pulls up towards the north of Skyhook. Trying a good spot. Gosh, does this, uh, does that go? Does it come back? Honestly, I, I'm going to reserve judgment at this point. I think, you know, there's a chance Legends Gaming still could be okay under the Raven there at the bottom of Trials, but we'll just wait and see. Should be mentioned that... With Team Burger going out there, that's one of the teams yeah. that we thought might be able to make yep. it into match point. Now, not able to do so out of this game. So, that's great news for Tom Yum Kung, potentially. If they uh, if they can do well this game, they can be maybe the only team with the chance in the next game. Uh, we'll, we'll keep uh, you up to date with how that one's going. All Monster Firebird with a grand total of two points tonight. They've decided to pull out the cheeky comp. Yeah, so they've been kind of mirroring uh, Wonton Dumpling as they pulled out of Thermal Station. They they met them in the choke uh, that joins Thermal Station and Mirage Etoile. And then Wonton Dumpling honestly didn't want to take the fight straight away. So they went around uh, and now they have kind of once again locked them in um, over here at Lava Fisher. Crazy. Do a bit of pressure here. Okay, well... I guess that is one of the benefits of Pathfinder is that when you are pretty much losing that fight, there's still a chance you can get out to some degree of safety if you're knocked mid grapple. But uh, maybe I'm grasping at straws a little bit here for Azu. I'm not sure that he's going to be getting picked back up. By the way, Wonton Dumpling. You know, they're also in with a chance here. 12 points on the board required to make it to 50. They get the finish. Yeah, that's one more. All right, so it's 11 required now. Yep. Full kill for Wonton Dumpling there and Walmart to Firebird now. We'll just have to back out. I mean, they've got the conduit, so they can just pull back to maybe, say, landslide um, and grab that uh, the banner and, and res over there. But, uh, you know, once a dumpling, they've been, you know, their plan has been waylaid by War Monster Firebird. So do they want to let them get away with it? it? Seems like they will. And they'll probably just slowly make their way through Love Fissure through Countdown and then uh, eventually into Skyhook. Hmm. They're called Gaming. have been, uh, you know, obviously doing pretty well with that epic duo win over on storm point um they're up the north of trials so i guess they were kind of hoping that maybe it would uh it would pull a bit more that way um and they're gonna have to try and wrap through trials itself uh which is currently free because agl are on top of it no one's inside of it well bear Call gaming is gonna they're gonna be a team that's going to have to keep pushing right now they uh they'll be feeling good about the night so far but they were 16th overall coming into this lobby and 61 points if they wanted to make it into the top eight, they would have needed to get a differential of 14. So plus 14 over the team that was in that position at the start of the day. They are doing very well for themselves. They're what, were they third overall, I think I saw just there. Um, so they're actually in with a pretty reasonable chance of kind of making an unlikely play into the top eight if they can continue to play the way that they have so far. And it also does depend, I guess, a little bit on when does this lobby actually end? Does it end at the sixth game? Or does it end at the 8th game or the 10th game? You know, yeah. how much time do other teams have to catch up to this lead? Or how much time do they have to build that lead? Uh, we'll have to obviously keep, uh, keep an eye on things. But yeah, Bear Call Gaming, look, they, they're still a bit of an outside shot, but it's not impossible. Nope. It's, it's been uncharacteristically even so far today. Mm. And that's why we're in here in match 5 and no one is at 
uh, match point, and you know there's still a chance that no one's at match point in in match six, right? And that you know the points have been really evenly spread across the board. Usually, you will see one team popping off or one team having you know two very strong games, and therefore I'm um, just reaching match point a bit earlier than everybody else. It's just kind of out of 20 teams, it's almost like statistically likely that that happens to someone, right? Oh, nice oh, stick the there! Stick. And there we go. You goes down. Uh, yeah, that'll be enough for the knock. MDY Black, they're not out of the hot water just yet, though. They can't really push down the stairs to capitalize on that knock. But really, all it does is it kind of buys them a bit of time. Killbot's out. Jojo's going to be getting some value out of that one, and you can hear the Arcstars getting tossed on in. But it's from Akuma, who is holding the stairs, and oh, there's a push to come through. Solo push, really, from Beyond. Uh, there was a little bit of a follow-up, but... Oh my it's just god, not gonna work for MD White. Well, it was a I think it was a bit of an ill-fated push for MD White Black. Um Yeah. Okay. I thought it was I thought it was the other way around. I thought MD White Black with a MD White was on top. MD White Black was on the roof. Oh, the okay, sorry, floor. my bad. I they pushed yeah. down. Yeah. That makes more sense. They were then. two only and they had that uh, they they sort of I guess they recognized they had that window where they were like, well. We have to try to push down while they're resing so we can take the two on two. Right. But it was always going to be a tough kind of a fight because there was like, there was caustic gas, there was arc size, everything getting tossed at the bottom of those stairs that they had to push through. Yep. No. You're right, you're right. Okay, one wants to Firebird. Uh, I haven't managed to uh, recover actually. In fact, they're even in even more dire straits than they were before. Um, now down to just the one member, just the party left alive as Wonton Dumpling! Taking some shots from our friends over at Legends Gaming and getting helped out by AGL on top as well. RE45 with a DG threat. Okay. Ooh, he's, uh, he's not feeling too oh. happy about oh, things. No. There's a lot of spam going back and forth. Oh, and God. God. Not even just spam because he can see everything. How has this gone so wrong? Oh, it seems like everything's going wrong tonight for Legends, unfortunately, there. Meat in the sandwich between a couple of teams. Once on Dumpling, just a duo. But again, once on Dumpling, they need these points on the board. They're looking for everything they can get. There's another couple, but I'm not sure they're going to make it to match point now because VK Gaming is charging in their direction. Yep, will they get the finish here onto Boring? They do! That's another team who was potentially looking to make it to match point, not going to. So there's pretty much only one left in the lobby now, Tom Young Kung. Um, and if we do get a look at that next zone at some point, uh, we'll be able to see what their chances are of making it there. Because uh, honestly, there is quite a bit of ground for them to cover in the middle of Skyhook, where there's currently a
Oh yeah, we're all one HP for that now. and loaded. Drop shocked and rocked. Say hello to the 4-0 first. Welcome back, everyone. We are here showcasing the talent in Apex South. It's regional finals, so that means we're very close to seeing what teams make it through to LAN. Another win was filed away for Bear Claw Gaming. They're sitting quite low on the leaderboard uh, standings, but they're not going to make that their final story, being one of our first teams to hit match point eligibility. Of course, if they win this next game, it's a ticket through to land, but if that's easier said than done, Genome. Um, so, you know, we're going to keep a close eye on them, but another team that we want to, uh, I guess, keep a close eye on is like Tom Young Kun um, and Wonton Dumpling, of course, being, uh, you know, very close as well. I mean, look at that. Four teams on 41. Two on 42 points. I mean, I think at the start of that game, it was Burger on 41 and Tom Young Kun on 41. Um, so they've added one point between them. Um, yes. And then we've got everyone else just storming up behind them. So, I mean, fantastic effort by Bear Claw to get over the hump there. Um, yeah, look, sorry if you guys uh, didn't catch that one as we were working through some audio issues in the last game, but uh, that's basically what me and Elfish were saying, right? They're like, they've just got to stand on the hill here and blast for every single um, KP they can because they might just grab 50 points. And in the end, they do. They make it. And all of the teams that we thought might get there did not. So now, Lace, we're getting to the situation where... Uh, over the next couple of games, it's gonna, it's really gonna start filling out that roster, right? Like uh, game seven yeah. and eight, there's probably gonna be a lot of teams on match point. Um, this one, where you're the only team on match point, teams tend to focus on you a little bit more. And it's kind of harder. It's kind of harder for Bear Claw um, to take this one out, I would say. But hey, they've done it with a duo so far today, so who knows what they're capable of. That's it. You know, team's going to be out for Bear Claw Gaming. But yeah, like you said, we have... I, I didn't actually look past the 42 point there, but I saw everyone on 41 points. Not going to lie, I skimmed over that. Uh, it's, it's yeah, it, it definitely going to see more teams hit that match point. Um, and with those top teams, they, they seem to always be uh, performing in, in these matches that we've seen. Um, you know, we've touched on Boogie Borders then being at the lower lower end and, and not really doing too much to jeopardize these, these teams that we haven't seen much of, like Serena are doing extremely well. Um, I wanted to touch on them too. They're, they've been absolutely annihilating in these last couple of matches. So yeah. once, you know, they hit match point, um, you know, it's going to be tight. Uh, obviously, uh, I think it was Akuma as well. Um, MDY White, I believe, are up there as well, doing doing lots and lots of uh, things throughout these matches. So it's it's going to be close. Like we've, we've just seen the same sort of teams in these, in these previous matches sort of take out victories so once they hit match point i just i feel like that top eight bracket um that, that we did just see on that leaderboard 
are in contention for match point and and taking it out. Yeah, I mean, you know, decent call out on Serenity there. I think mm. uh, AK damage for the team overall at the moment is uh, at a sort of a, at a decent clip. Uh, Tommy Young Kung just having a quick look at uh, at my stats. The only team to get over ten thousand damage so far uh, in this series, uh, and, and running out that with uh, twenty four kills, which I believe is the most in the lobby, tied with Akuma actually uh, at the moment. So yeah, look, a couple of heavy hitting teams there. I mean, you know. Serenity, they're just, uh, they're playing it safe there, playing the Bang Blood Caustic composition, right? Mm. Um, so, yeah, uh, look, let's, uh, speaking of it, why don't we have a look at, uh, what the teams have been picking so far. So, this is just for World's Edge, uh, and you can see definitely the, uh, the, the most common pick there is, of course, the Bang Blood Caustic, and it, it dwarfs everything else, right? Uh, next is, is Crypto Caustic and Bang with 9, uh, and then you've got uh, our favorite comp down the bottom there, uh, go to see a War Monster Firebird. Yeah, they do love picking a little bit of rev when uh, it comes to crunch time, that team. Um, but yeah, I guess in our first couple of matches when we were on World's Edge uh, for match one and two, Bangalore was uh, was all across every single team. Um, you know, we're, we're seeing a, a slight change up, I guess, coming into, uh, you know, match five and six from people picking Bangalore. Of course, Caustic, um, again, was a, was a solid pick as well. Now we're just seeing, I guess, more Watsons um, flow throughout there. And then obviously you need a counter to Watson, so Crypto are coming through, you know, being able to scan those beacons and get an eye on where all those teams are headed, um, and Bloodhound, you know, scanning through all the smoke of the caustic gas and the the, the Bangalore smokes that we're going to see. Um, but it's interesting to see, you know, Conduit was a massive pick um, for a lot of teams, um, I guess, before Season 20 changes uh, genome. And, you know, having, uh, I guess we're watching, I think it's Legends Gaming um, playing the Bangalore Conduit um Watson pick, uh, yep. and that seems to to be doing well for them. Still having, I guess, that crutch of uh, you know getting those extra shields from from conduit seems to be going okay for them. Um, I guess, like Elfish said, you know they're not doing what we've seen in the previous weeks, but uh, do they really need to? You know, I think they've already got that ticket through, so um, you know they're not doing anything too crazy. Yep, um, a lot of teams playing it safe here, Lace. Uh, only mm. a couple really trying to test the boundaries, like with that lifeline. And as you said, yeah, Crypto sort of being the alternative pick to the Bloodhound there in terms of people wanting to pick up recon characters. Because, you know, it gives you more, more access to those survey beacons, either when you're on your rotate and you can, you know, fly the drone uh, and grab that 200 uh, EVO uh, XP a little bit more easily, but also when you're stuck in the end zones uh, and you have the opportunity to, you know, wait until you need, uh, you know, the rotate to come through and then be able to uh, ping the survey beacon at a really critical time in the game. Yeah, no, exactly right. So, you know, I guess uh, we're going to have to wait and see and check out. We've got one team on match point eligibility. That is Bear Claw Gaming. Let's take it away to game number six and see if they can do it. Yeah, well, all eyes are going to be on Bearclaw Gaming, who have really just come out of nowhere today, haven't they? Two wins on the board. They were 16th going into the day, and now sitting on top, being the only team that could potentially prevent us from going one more game. We'll have to hold our breath and wait and see if they can do it again. It would be an incredible day from them, though, if they could win a third here and make it... 50% of the games won by one individual team, which is not a feat that uh, seems to get picked up all that often. It's tough to do, isn't it? Um, mm -hmm. um, having a look at where that ring is going, it's going to be towards uh, Big Maud, potentially down towards Stacks there. Um, so, um, as we can uh, glean from that, that's a big pull for Bear Claw Gaming, isn't yeah. it? Oh my word, it has gone right over the top of Big Maud. I and and they know as well. Like I'm I'm watching their POV. Yeah. I'm gonna be sitting on their POV this entire game while I'm watching uh, you know in game. And uh, they are well aware that this is right over the top. So look, it's still not gonna be easy. It never is going to be easy to win in a lobby like this, and it's certainly not gonna be easy to do it three times in one night in six games, but you really couldn't ask for a better opportunity than this. Certainly couldn't. That, that is crazy. Uh, so, look, we'll see if they can do it. It's come at such a crucial time. And 
Oh man, <laughs> Belkin currently running the uh, the double flat lines, including the Rampart uh, special. So I do want to just point out though, like we've done some analysis of the match point histories of like all mm. the regions mm. and how that's played out. One thing to note is that at least last year, of the teams that got to match point first, only four out of fourteen were actually able to convert that into the overall lobby. Wow. Game. So. It's not a great conversion rate. It definitely doesn't tell you that, you know, it's going to happen. So I would, I would still be like, you know, look, let's, let's be realistic about this. If it does happen, that's fantastic, obviously, for, for Bearclaw Gaming, but it's not something that we should be expecting, per se. Yes. Yeah, I'd have to agree with you right there. Legends. They've obviously read that this is, uh... They did... They once again did not get ring console. They have been very much on the uh, the receiving end of some rough RNG as far as that goes today. Considering you know they're running the Watson every game. Obviously they you know can scan if they get a beacon, but they just keep not getting beacons. That said, they've uh, I guess they've watched the teams around them and they have uh, correctly rotated two big mods. So that's a, a good pick. This? What do you think about this position for Bearclaw Gaming though? I mean with the ring, the knowledge that the ring is touching on this side. They've gone as far out yep. to the edge of the zone as they possibly can. I like it. Basically, they've, they've guaranteed now that they cannot get any more loot unless they get it from a loot box late in the game. So they have to be really intelligent with how they're choosing to take their fights, whether they're even choosing to take fights to begin with. And obviously, beyond that fact, they have to kind of hope that the pulls are going to come in their direction still. Yeah, well, it's a super safe way to play the game, right? They don't need KP. Okay, so they don't need to sit in Big Maud and try and push out people who are coming in. They literally just need a first place. As you can see there, that was Rudne actually taking some of those shots uh, from long range here from Ziki. So they've got to be careful of those angles towards stacks if it does end up pulling over that way. Um, but certainly if it uh, pulls anywhere towards the east side here, as they're sort of predicting, um, Bearclaw should be in a good spot. But yeah, as, as you say, you know, not a huge amount of, uh, of meds for them. Going gaming and not having a very good time here. And again, they were another one of those teams that we were saying they might may be a little bit close to uh, getting to match point. So to see them eventually suffering some losses early on to make that unlikely for this game at least. You are black here. And I almost feel like, uh, oh, okay. Gaming, there's uh, finished off completely. Yeah, kind of sister team actually pushing up near them now. That's MDY, uh, white and black on the ends of those tunnels. I like that the other game on Stormpoint where they landed on Wonton Dumpling. I feel like that's like it's basically like the dictionary definition of inting. Yeah, like I think we should actually just grab that clip. No, I don't disagree. I uh, really, it wasn't, it wasn't anything <laughs> that uh, inspired a lot of confidence, it's really. Uh, they're doing a little okay here though, MDY wide at least. I suppose the majority of what's going on around the map right now probably isn't happening right over the top of, of stacks and big mod, because there's actually still quite a lot of teams that are coming down from Skyhook, Countdown, Landslide. Staging, you've got teams that are still sort of working their way in from there. DK Gaming coming out of the geyser right now. Let's transfer to that spot. So probably don't need to move too much further. You can actually hold this position. It's not a bad one because you get good information. You can see both directions. They've actually got the crypto drone as well, which will help them to sort of do a bit of scouting. And it gives you options, right? Worst case scenario, you can go back up into geyser and essentially use the geyser to rotate in a different direction, or obviously you can just drop down into Big Maud. Which probably will be what they end up doing. There's not actually a huge amount going on on that mm. side of Big Maud, so they, they will have a, in theory, fairly safe rotate as long as it's you know outside of maybe Lightning Unicorn causing a bit of trouble. Mm. Um, now we had a little bit of an issue with one of our uh, the client that's running the stats feed for this game, so I, I don't know. If, I don't think we'll get that back till match seven. But luckily, this is an easy one to keep track of because we really only have to mm. be thinking about. Uh, Bear Claw Gaming, right? They're, they're the only team on match point. They're the only one can take an out. Um, and I, I guess we'll just check in with the other teams afterwards to try and work out how many of those teams on 41, 42 points will be moving up onto match point should we make it to match seven. 
pretty likely. 19 out of 20 chance, but uh, you never know. Yeah, Tom Yum Kung, Burger. Probably the two that you want to be keeping a bit of an eye on. Sort of track of their kills if you're interested in either of those teams, because they may well still be able to make it off of this game. Or an SWQ who are rotating their way into Lava Siphon. Comfortable position for Dreamfire as well. They like being the gatekeepers and they're going to try and do that, as you say, to SWQ, potentially even to Warmless to Firebird as well, who come in behind them. Shots, but Xiao uh, Kai's down on the ground, so BK Gaming might have some bigger fish to fry in that they need to sort of focus on themselves before they focus on their opponents. A lot of resources being invested here with the Util getting tossed out. No my nades, dark stars, everything. A little bit of a tickle. And we'll open up some info through that smoke, but realistically speaking, not a whole lot should be coming from this fight. Legends will also back away. Play K there, MK Watson, always nice to have on your team. You can set up those fences so much more quickly. More easily, more accurately with the MNK you can on controller, so it's a, you know, a good pick for a triple MNK team like we have in Legends Gaming. Very interested to see where this next ring pool is going to end up. Mm. So that that's going to give us an even better idea as to whether or not Bearclaw Gaming can yeah. actually just sit here and do nothing pretty much the whole game. Which I think if they do, if they do get the opportunity to do that, then I actually think they might win. I do genuinely believe they will win from that position. I've seen it before. Yep. I've yep. seen this position win before. With the right ring pull, it is it is very, very doable. Because everyone has to then fight over stacks, over big Maud. And you end up kind of just being isolated on your island and you come in for the third party and clean it. And it's, it, it's gonna happen. I can see it happening again. So let's just keep an eye on it, but AGL's been eliminated. Not a huge talking point at this stage. Well, it was by Blue Borders, though. Um, it was a fight over in Fragment, and so obviously they managed to come out on top. Any points for Boogie Borders are really good points right now, because as we said, they don't need that many to get up into, say, 15th spot um, and confirm that LAN, uh, that LAN ticket, Elfish, but they do need a couple. So um, honestly, starting out with that is fine, and that's cleared out there. Rotate all the way into Geyser. Three teams, four teams inside a big mod right now. Four teams. So it's getting pretty busy. One of those was VK Gaming, yeah. Made their way from Geyser. Team Burger. Well, they will probably be hoping that the game doesn't end right here. They'd like to get their nine points on the board and make sure that they can make it through to the match point for that contestion themselves. Okay, moment of truth. We should inspect that area. Oh, yeah. With that ring pull. Oh my god. Oh my god. Oh, uh, uh, all right. Look, look. Uh -huh. Maybe if we I could, maybe if we could pull up the map view. <laughs> I, uh, I know we had a little bit of a uh, some issues with it before. Hopefully, we can get uh, some vision of that because uh, that is a scripted ring pull if I've ever seen one, my friends. Yeah. Yeah. One wants to firebird has been eliminated. Rest in peace to the pathfinder flying through the air. Like an angel. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, now he's now he's in heaven, all right. Now he's in heaven. Wherever the robot heaven is. Do any teams actually are having a bit of a look? Okay. Oh, it's okay. so doable. Okay. <laughs> if they don't win do here, there? you you couldn't ask for a better opportunity. That's There's insane. no That's better opportunity than right this. Here. And this is like, it's almost destiny, you know? Something about the world, something about the universe wants this team to go to land, and it is giving them every possible chance. <laughs> Someone has put pen to paper for this game. Yep. <laughs> There's, there is no doubt about it, and they they are being aggressive here uh, to, you know, to to watch this uh, to watch this situation keep others away. As you can see, they actually get a kill onto VK Gaming who are playing in the broken house. That's important. They want to clear this space out. Um, mm. They want to relieve as much pressure on themselves as they, they can. Evos. They want their Evos That's as true. well. And heck, 
Heck is 94 away from purple, which is obviously where you kind of need to be getting. Issue for Heck is he's got 23 reloadable heavy ammo. So starting to really run low already on the heavy ammo for, for him at least. And for Rudine and Belkin, they're quite a ways away from that Evo. I, I actually have my doubts as to whether or not they'll even get it before the end of the game or maybe just during that final sort of fight. But, ah, man, you really couldn't ask for a better zone pool than that. That's the, that's the biggest takeaway. And yep. we'll see whether or not it'll be enough. We'll focus on that in a second, though, because obviously that'll, that'll be a factor for later on in the piece. And Wonton Dumpling is kind of doing it tough at the moment. Uh, they've got a decent amount of map control down to the southern side of the zone here with a 2-1 split, which is not something that you see all that often, actually, when it comes to Apex Legends, but they're pretty healthy, um, pretty pretty solid, able to help each other, and it's a quick rotate across if they need. It's not Dumpling. Again, same vein as Team Burger. want to make sure that this game actually goes at least another match so that they can fight for that first place. Yep. I mean, the, I think the, the split hole for once and Dumpling is actually going to pay off right now as uh, the players know that they need to pull back to that position the Boring had in the RV. It's not actually in that next zone, but it's probably close enough that they can stage from there. This is where it starts to get interesting, though. Now that now that teams are going to have to move out of Big Mord, move out of Stacks. I mean, we've got 16 squads left, but the next zone really doesn't have a lot of cover in it at all. VK Gaming have control of one of the small buildings, Wonton Dumpling is sort of playing around a caravan and some ruins. And that's kind of about it. Like, there's really not a whole lot else to write home about when it comes to this next zone. So it's going to get it's gonna get pretty disastrous pretty soon. And MDY, it's MDY on MDY. It's MDY White beating up MDY Black. Taking some points off of them. All the good it's going to do them because they still have to take one further step beyond this building. Oh, no. Boogie Board is out in 20th as well or well, the drama increases i feel like someone has written a script for us and it is tasty yeah, it's a fun one so far i wouldn't i wouldn't trust that just yet i think they it, i might have been 16th but obviously it's still uh an early exit oh, uh, you know they got they got three kill points so it's not nothing but if the game ends now it may as well be nothing um we'll have to see i, I don't know where that would put them honestly uh if it did end now heck has actually moved across to try and take our position on the rock as zone has shifted a little bit south of that position um the bear core gaming was holding uh and they'll get that information soon okay team starting to evac in now this is where it starts to get really important well they haven't really worried about tom yum kung who have taken up a residence on the south side of that cliff one want on dumpling are moving their way forward as well they've got some ruins to play around swq Bit of a mess for them. They've uh, gotten knocked out. MDY Black also lost their lives. And across the kill feed, I'm sure you're going to see some some zombie vomit basically at this point. Just get ready because there's going to be a lot of teams disappearing very, very, very quickly. As they are now having to push their way out from Big Maud as well. There goes MDY White as long, well, uh, alongside outside. Uh, at the very least for Tom Yum Kung, they themselves in a good spot and and you can see the minimap pull there it's actually gone south yeah it's actually gone yep. away from bear, bear claw gaming so their job actually does get more difficult now well i thought they should have thirded that fight actually so tom young kung um took out uh i think it was well i can't remember but either way they, they took out that and they you know there was some knocks going on there if bear claw gaming had have gone for them at that point they would have had an advantage uh, most likely would have been able to finish off the fight and then all of a sudden they've got access to a lot of loot and obviously that is one of the biggest factors um, that is working against them right now uh, if they've missed that opportunity I don't know if there's going to be another one I don't I, I agree I think this has definitely moved away from a bear claw gaming favored finish to Tom Young Kung potentially favored finish. It depends on Wonton Dumpling as well, what they do and what they have to play around. Legends are now flying through the air. They're going to land dead center, basically inside of the caravan, which was pre-trapped, by the way. And I think they're probably going to be up the creek without a paddle and unable to do too much. But what I'm worried about, or for Bear Claw Gaming at least, is these teams that have to come out of Big Ward and move down from the north because there's not that much cover for them to play. And one of them might just gamble for a spot on the cliff. Oh, absolutely, yeah. I think that's a very, very real possibility there. We saw Legends Gaming this up in the RV. Uh, once they get, there we go, just another a, a gen coming up now. I always say this, RVs, 
not too bad for Watson teams. For everyone else, they're a death trap, but they do have that Watson to play as Serenity try and fight for their lives over here. There's so many other teams doing it. Lightning Unicorn, um, even Team Burger over here, and they're all struggling, frankly. Yeah, I mean, no one has actually decided to try to in, in onto Bearclaw Gaming, so that'll be good news for our lobby leaders at the moment. Heroes out, Serenity out, Lightning Unicorn out. There's that kill feed vomit I'm talking Four about. Four teams are left! We're down to four remaining teams. Wonton Dumpling, Legends, and Tom Yum Kung oh my alongside God. Bearclaw Gaming. So if you're going to win this wow. lobby right now, you have to go through the best of the best. And Bearclaw Gaming... I mean, they've been given a chance, but this is a tough gauntlet to run. They have found some death boxes somewhere. Uh, they've got not a lot in terms of meds, but they I think they were able to resupply uh, with some of the ammo by the looks of it. But they are getting set now. Tom Young Kung, they sense blood, and unlike Bearclaw, they are not afraid to push it. Yeah, Belkham down. It's not looking good for Bearclaw Gaming at all. They trade Rune one back. did get the knock onto Dexter. There's no cross shots really coming across onto this fight. It's a good old fashioned two on two at this point. Asia and Ziki, they're charging their way forward and they'll be aware that Bearclaw Gaming is still in the fight. Heck, trying to save the day and he's oh. done. <laughs> it will go one more. Tom Young Kong, keep the dream alive for everyone except for Bearclaw Gaming. And you'd have to say at this point, Bearclaw Gaming will have done enough to see maybe Tom Young Kong and potentially Wonton Dumpling through to that match point as well. Mm. And it was so, a it was a clean 3v3 on the other side, by the way. Wanton Dumpling pushed into the caravan to take out Legends Gaming. And now they get to have that final boss fight against Tom Young Kung. And I just can't help but think if they had have pushed Tom Young Kung when they were down to two ten minutes ago, Bearclaw Gaming could have won this. Maybe, maybe, but it's so easy to say in hindsight. And so difficult to do in the moment. Tom Yum Kung down to just one member alive. Wonton Dumpling is a two on one for them. They're trying to give Jackie Chan some time to pop a bat. He's been able to do that and the push is now coming through. It should be an easy one for Wonton Dumpling and it is, but it is heartbreak really for Bearclaw Gaming because they did, you could argue almost everything that they could and they got all of the benefits of the zone pulls and they couldn't quite make it happen. Oh. Yeah, that was a little tough there for Bearclaw Gaming. They had that nice little nest on the rocks. I was just on the edge of my seat, Elfish. Uh, unfortunately, they, you know, just got pushed out of their position there. They just needed that win. But look, we go again. We're going to keep the games rolling. Um, another one, you know, close to match point, I think, was Dreamfire. But they got knocked out at about 10th position. Uh, also, Serenity, um, very close to match point eligibility. But... I don't think they made the cut. They didn't really solidify any KP, um, I, I don't think, and coming about eighth, so, you know, only getting about two, and I think they're about 40, 42 points. Um, but I think Wonton Dumpling have done it. Um, they had about eight uh, kill points there at the end with a, with a win, um, so I'm pretty certain that they might just have made uh, that match point. Yeah, I'm sure Wonton Dumpling would have been able to do so. I'm sure Tom Yum Kung would have been able to make it. The rest of the teams, I'm not too sure. Team Virgo got knocked out a little earlier on the point. They seem to have been having a, a couple of issues sort of getting these last couple of points that they need to sort of put it over the line. And beyond that, I'm not sure that there was too many other teams to really touch on. But yeah, that, that's got to be a painful one for Bearclaw Gaming. And here's the information, right? So we have Wonton Dumpling 65, Bearclaw 63, Tom Yum Kung 58. Those three now can find a win in the next game, end it here and now. And then MDY White, Team Burger, not too far away. Just a zone's throw, but quite a few teams now that are kind of like one game away, but Bearclaw Gaming, they, they would be sitting there right now thinking to themselves, man, we just missed out on the best opportunity that we're probably going to get to win a game today. If that zone pool hadn't gone south, mm. what, the, one, the one that sort of went over Tom Yum Kung, I think Bearclaw Gaming might have walked it in, but the fact that another team was able to set up on the cliff Made it a little difficult to play for Bearclaw Gaming. And, you know, might have been right in saying that they, they needed to third party that fight and sort of clear the cliff out. But obviously, as we saw, they didn't. And so it do be like that sometimes and you reap what you sow. And unfortunately, that game could have been the difference between them making it to land and not. And they haven't been able to do it there. So, but you uh, know what? Well, they've still got chances. But That's it. Yeah. 
Yeah, but this is where I guess it gets interesting. You know, we only had Bear Claw Gaming being the only one in match point eligibility, but now we've added, you know, Wonton Dumpling to the mix as well. Um, so, you know, this is where it could be any of these teams, Tong Yum Kung as well. Um, and I guess both, all three of these teams have taken out wins today. So it's, uh, you know, they're definitely going to be in contention for that. Um, we're going to take ourselves just a quick little short break as the Apex Games continue. We will see you in a moment.
Welcome back, everyone. You're witnessing greatness in the making as we've almost seen our first match point contenders, Bear Claw Gaming, take out a win. But you know what? Once on Dumpling said, no, that will not happen in our books. Um, you know, they they just wanted to take out game number six. Uh, we had Tom Young Kung, you know, have uh, come into the mix as well. Elfish reaching uh, match point eligibility. We now have three teams. Um, to watch out for who could potentially put a halt to the games today. Um, but, you know, will they be able to do it as we head over to Storm Point once again? I'm not going to lie. It's actually kind of surprising to me that we've only got three teams after six games that are match point eligible. Uh, I've done quite a few of these match point uh, formats. And normally at this stage, you'd have five, six, like maybe even up to seven or eight teams that are potentially at that point. But the thing is, like, we've been seeing like such a sort of uh, even kind of a lobby like the spread mm. of uh, numbers is just so good with the exception really being war monster firebird everyone has been able to at least get themselves in some capacity into the points and that's obviously making it harder for the teams towards the top end to like soak up the excess points that they normally would uh, i think that goes to show just the relative strength of the lobby overall so three teams i i would still say it's probably an outside shot to end here i reckon we go another would be like that would if you're a, if you're a betting man that would be the bet that you'd probably have to put here because Three teams is still not a huge portion of the lobby. Yeah, no, exactly right. You know, we we still have, uh, you know, uh, teams like Team Burger that uh, have shown us, um, you know, amazing skill coming over to Storm Point. So, you know, they still uh, only need to collect a couple more uh, points just to put themselves into the eligibility um, there. But you know what? We're, I guess we're going to have to wait and see what happens in that sense. You know, we love coming over to Storm Point. You know, we've got Akuma, War Monster, Firebird um, having their, uh, I guess, their their contest there. At Checkpoint, Akuma are at 2-0 at the moment. Elfish, you know, taking that contest. So, I don't know, will they be able to do that and, and put themselves into uh, match point uh, eligibility? Um, it's going to be i guess a, a tight squeeze for them um but again it could still be one of these three teams that are in eligibility to take out the win they've done it before all three teams that are in the match point eligibility have won today that is true there's a chance they might do it again that's it and we're gonna head straight in we're gonna find out this is match number seven we're gonna head back over to storm point let's see how this plays out You'd have to be breathing a bit of a sigh of relief, though, if you're boogie boarders, wouldn't you? Because at the moment, they're sitting in 19th on the day's play, and that would give them one point, which uh, certainly isn't going to put them in a favorable position with 87 total for the season. Uh, they would maybe even stand in the ways of getting knocked out of the top eight. I don't know what your thoughts are on that, uh, Genome, but at least if I'm, if I'm boogie boarders right here, I'm breathing a sigh of relief that they've got at least another chance to sort of jump up the standings a little bit here. And, and really all it takes for them is one good game, but they haven't been able to conjure any of that tonight. No, I mean, uh, one good game probably get them up a, a couple of spots, might get them to maybe 16th. Um, there's a couple of, you know, teams that aren't too far ahead of them as we uh, watch this contest play out for the third time today between uh, Wilmus Firebird and Akuma. Definitely some, you know, some juking going on depending on how the how the jump mastering going, uh, jump master ing goes. It's a, you know, an, a little understood art that uh, matters a lot in these contests because, you know, who manages to get there first and grab, you know, one of the tri bins over on the right hand side? It's a big deal. And this time we actually saw one more Monster Firebird, I think, maybe grab one of those. Um, whereas in the previous contest that Akuma has won, um, they've had control over pretty much all of that. Uh, now, Shark quite close to them, playing on the underneath here and uh, on the Revenant as well. Akuma's certainly having a much better day than War Monster Firebird, so if you any money on anyone at this point, it's probably them still. Uh, half, uh, half shields, Yukoi half HP. So, Akuma's doing it tough actually in this uh, initial engagement for the first time. It was two from two for Akuma on the last couple of contests, but this one might peter out into nothing. What War Monster Firebird want to do? Azu's sort of floating around underneath them. Yo, know, they finally get up and uh, decide to take the roof here. Oh, nice longbow shot here. Kilo hits two on, in a row onto Shark. But still can't find the angle. Aizu's tried to find a flank. More interested in going for a bit of extra loot. 
this played out in a very different way now that War Monster Firebird have changed up their team composition. But anyway, we're back in action, and it looks like we'll be heading back over to Stormcatcher once again. So, somewhat of a similar finish to one we've already seen tonight. Maybe not, uh, you know, going to go exactly where the the previous one did, which was uh, a win from Team Virga. Yeah, it may end up a little more to the east there. So maybe teams like uh, MDY White's in, in the compound up there might be okay. You can see VK Gaming zooming in at the moment. They've just exited the Trident. Team Burger, of course, won that one. Uh, and they are once again heading into secret. Why not? They, uh, they won from this position before. Mm -hmm. Let's give it another crack. I actually did see in the lobby chat uh, after the game they I won last it. time. Um, I don't know what you're going to say. Yeah, yeah, Pricey said, Way sat at our back and scanned behind us for three zones in a row. <laughs> yeah. Because that's the only yep. that's the only vulnerability, right? Like, here, where we're looking at, where MDY are pushing up, uh, you, you pretty much can't lose from that position. Of course, they did not. Um, but yeah, as long as you're watching your back, clearing your back, you are fine. But that, of course, depends uh, on the ring pulling that way, which it may not necessarily do this time. Yeah, I'd be a little surprised if we got an exact of that for your circle. Bearclaw Gaming, down on a member. Rune going to try to get raised inside of that smoke. Pop off straight away, Belkin. This could be Bearclaw Gaming getting knocked out very, very quickly in this subsequent game. Is it, is it Legends that they're fighting? That's not an easy team to go up against. Oh dear. Oh no. It's gone from 100 to 0 really for Bearclaw Gaming. It feels like, you know, they had every possibility in that last game and now they have to do it as two. Heck is being chased by Belkin. That's a tough one to win though. He got the bat off. Yeah, it needs to grab another one though. Oh, they're in the coffin right now and it might truly be in that before too long with just the duo. I mean, duo. there's so many teams, dude. Like, look how many teams there are around. Like, Falcon and Heck, they, they get they get set up, but... They're going for the banner. They're just pushing in their direction. Oh, this is so scary. Nice. He grabs it, though. Double time. Uh, sacrifices. Look, three of his seven remaining cells. Um, but I think that's worth the trade-off there. Um, you know, no, no time to loot, even. Um, just wanted to grab that banner. Where do you get the res, though? Like, it, it, if you don't get it now, you're not going to get it, I don't think, because there's teams that are already pushing their way into this area. Of, uh, this is this is the, the sort of the area of the zone that's expected for the final couple of circles. So yeah. it's only going to get busier from here. Super and tough. if you don't get it done now, it gets harder and harder as the game goes on. I mean, yeah, you, you either somehow have to take Stormcatcher off Wanton Dumpling, who are literally watching you with a Sentinel. They just hit a shot bleeding them further dry of their resources and if not then you kind of have to go down south right there's um there's a respawn beacon near the the triple house um below this near the gravity cannon um and there's also one just above launch pad as well so they're kind of the only two realistic options i would say even then still a, still a tough ask well, i mean just to keep everyone up to date with what's happening here, they have dropped off of uh position they were in and they are I think the spot where they can find a revive so at least they're attempting to go for it. Oh, Legends Gaming this has been an uncharacteristic performance from them tonight. It's not going to affect their chances of going through to land and I suppose everyone's allowed to have a rough day. If you're going to have a rough day you, would you prefer it to be today after you've already <laughs> locked things in? Maybe. That's one way to pump your Evo up. Hmm. Well, they should now be able to get that res because heading down in the direction of launch pad, there's not really a whole lot going on there. Serenity, you know, they're down toward launch pad, so is SWQ, but there is a revive. There's a, there's a respawn beacon there right in front of them. It's not even in launch pad, so I think they'll get this respawn off okay. They're going to have to sort of sack a bit of zone control off of it, though. Obviously, they'll have to take their time to rotate back up, which they may not get a strong position this late. I mean, the answer to, you know, whether it matters to Legend Gaming is basically they can't get third, realistically. Mm. Uh, they can't drop below second where they are right now, and they would have needed an exceptional performance and for Wanton Dumpling to do badly um, to get first place. So now the Wanton Dumpling is doing well, uh, it basically just doesn't matter at all for Legends Gaming, honestly. Uh, they, they, they're probably going to get the same amount of prize money, they're probably going to stay second. Um, and, uh, yeah, I think without glitching, I guess they could still glitch a match point win and, and take it over once on coupling that way. 
Um, but even then, that would, you know, once on dumpling would have to slip down further in the standings for that to work. Okay. They have a lot to play for. Match point is on offer. They've been playing very well tonight, actually. Generally been a bit of a hot and cold team, and I think maybe tonight even is a little bit representative of that, but the games where they've looked good, they've looked really good. So I'll say they're in with a pretty good shot. And they would sort of, I feel like, be one of those teams that would have maybe come out of nowhere. Like, in a way, like we always knew that uh, Tom Young Kung was a, a solid contender, but they haven't really felt like a massive threat this season. And then, all of a sudden, walk away with first place at the end of uh, the day would be, you'd be like, okay. You know, I'm not, I'm not surprised, necessarily, but they weren't the one on the tip of my tongue, at least going into today. It also speaks well for LAN, right? Because if you're doing well in this lobby here, in the regional finals, uh, you know, it's more like it is closer to a LAN quality lobby. And the way it plays out and the, you know, the amount of sort of zone knowledge and, um, you know, decision-making ability required to succeed in this type of environment um, is definitely more similar to LAN. So I think, yeah, I think that does speak to the fact that mm. Tom Young Kung are a team of that, that quality and that they have succeeded on that level before as well. Look at that zone pull. Their core gaming not really in a great spot to do much with it. Wonton Dumpling, I think, are going to find it tough as well. They can play Stormcatcher for a little bit longer, but... They're going to have a pretty busy side of the zone to fight it out in. And Tom Yum Kung coming in from Command Center right now. I mean, just from what I'm seeing on the minimap here, like if I had to freeze frame right now and say, do you think the game ends here on match seven? I'm calling no. Yeah, would have to agree. Definitely have to agree. I mean, Bear Claw even... Oh, they got the res, by the way. Uh, you can see down the bottom yeah. there. Uh, yeah, so they went for the, uh, the right option that I was talking about, the one above launch pad near the Prowler Den. Mm. So good for them. Ah, it was all a, it was all a ploy to grab uh, extra respawn Evo armor. Ultimate to go. Why? Quite far north. Going to see whether or not the zone at their back is going to bring with it any uh, surprises, but it looks okay. We want to still yet to get on the board this game. And they're playing the same position that they did the last time we saw this similar zone. So you can tell that they've got those sort of rotation paths down a little bit, but it hasn't really been coming together today. So I'm not sure that I'm super sold on it. Yeah. And outside are uh, causing problems for them now. And what they don't know is that, uh, yeah, once again, it's not cool to this hill. Therefore, it's not going to favor them. But all of a sudden, outside get the drop on them. Yeah, that's a lot of damage to start things off from a flow, and uh, there's more to follow where that came from. Oh, the Bangalore straight through is a good couple of shots in from Raki, but he gets eliminated, he oh gets deleted, and so does Boogie Borders. They have just, they've just had a, a, a tragedy of a night, really. I mean, as if it's not bad enough to have, you know, a Revenants jumping at you in ranked, now they have to deal with it in Pro League as well. And I mean, they're going to be furious about this because outside of being immediately taken down. And that, again, you know, we were talking about the definition of inting before. That's kind of one of them, right? If you go down immediately after taking another team down as the first team to lose, you, you're kind of liable to be mad about that. I mean, sure, you could have won your 3v3, um, but, you know, either way, you're probably uh, going to lose as a result of that other team's decision. And, yeah, Boogie Borders are just going to be, frankly, ropeable about that. Oh, it's just the nature of the game, unfortunately. Therefore, gaming, I feel like they might not be a bad chance still in this game if they can clear the southern side of the zone. It's actually not too busy. They might, with a couple of favorable zone pulls, still have something yet to say. And that's a good finish on Dreamfire. We'll give them all the loot that they need. VK Gaming aware. Hassa is just sitting at the bottom of the ramp, basically watching for that push to come through from Bear Claw Gaming. But he'll no doubt move his way back up the ramp as the push comes in. You gotta remember, they've got the Bloodhounds as well though, right? So if Belkin scans him and then they just like absolutely monk um, Kassa, it could be an issue. They've spotted them out now though, so it definitely knows they're there. Hey, we finally see that rotation I was talking about the other game. Uh, this time, it's, uh, it's actually Tom Young Kung who pulls it off with the evac outside. And sadly, uh, you know, it 
wasn't a Thunder Watch Hill zone, so they have to do it in round three rather than say round four or round five. Um, so Tom Young Clone. Oh my lord, that is not great. Oh, they survived? Really? I thought one of them was going to go down for sure. Well, they haven't exactly ended up in God's spot. No, let's just put it that way, but they've got a lot of loot though. Something to play with. I mean, once on Dumpling, or now also having to move their way out of Stormcatcher, so there's quite a few teams here that we have to really keep our eyes on. Once on Dumpling, and Tommy and Kung are kind of right next to each other, and then obviously Bearcore Gaming working their way up the ramp against VKG. Once the zone pulls in, this might not be too bad for Tom Young Kung. They can start thinking about playing on the top. But once on Dumpling are really doing it tough at the moment. Lobby leaders, as you say, uh, you know, doing it tough. They haven't been able to, to find purples yet, um, despite getting a little bit of damage for this team. They're up against War Monster Firebird, a team with nothing to lose, and of course. Again, they've got a, they're, they're going against those Forward Shadows. Uh, Shark on the Revenant has popped the ultimate. Wonton Dumpling, they're ticking away. We may lose another match point lobby leader right here. Yeah, P God, it's not looking good for Wonton Dumpling. Just the uh, one man standing. And there's just too much to do here. You can never win that fight. You don't have any cho options, any choices. You don't have any proactive play to make, and it's just impossible to win at that point. Tom Yum Kung. I mean, they're happy with it, obviously. They've got some cross shots actually on that engagement. You can see them coming in on the side of the screen. War Monster Firebird really causing problems for a few teams in the lobby right now. There's Akuma also down a player. A couple of players, actually. Dom Yum Kung surprisingly unscathed, and their side of the zone is starting to, to clear out. All eyes. All eyes on Tom Yum Kung right now because Bear Claw Gaming have been eliminated. Uh, two of them got taken down by VKG when they were pushing up the hill. Uh, Heck did manage to make a pass to the gravity cannon, but they cleaned him up eventually, picking up the scent, picking up the trail with the bloodhound. And, uh, okay, VK Gaming have eliminated another threat to uh, this game ending, or this series, I should say, ending here on match seven. There's only one team left alive that can make uh, that first place a reality, and that is Tom Young Kung. Well, they have a very rough rotate to make right now, and the zone is at their back, so I'll be very impressed if they can make this one work. Like I said, Genome, I think we're probably going to another one, but let's see what Tom Yum Kung can negotiate. They want to go for the balloon, maybe, but they're going to be one of the last teams to use that, so I'm not sure where they even will end up once they fly their way in. This is going to have to be a huge battle, and that's not going to help. Oh, dear! What has happened to Ziggy? He's landed on top of the orange, which is just in. Not, no, it's not even in. Oh man, this is a mess. He's, How does he even get to them? He's so far away from his team, but he's actually not being punished for it. The double it's time kind of working out. He almost makes it there. He may not get finished off. He's been scanned. There are teams that know he's knocked it on the ground right now. Legends Gaming, do they decide to peek over? The other two on the, on the roof. roof. Yep. He's got to try and crawl onto the roof somehow, or just hope no one's going to finish him off. I, yeah, I mean, it's. I think it's more likely that they drop down for the res. I mean, Asia's has his ult available. He could try and pop down and just like literally ult on top of himself to secure the res. It's possible. They're going to go for it. It's Dexter that's dropped. They're going to get that res by the looks of things. MDY White Arm pushing out of the building. I'm Oh, they've actually managed to get the res there. Tom Yum Kung. Oh my god. Somehow. Aegis went crazy in the building, actually, against MDY White and, and shredded two of them. And that's actually enough for them to get the reset. Are you kidding me? Oh my god. Hero play from Aegis. It's not done just yet. They've got to get the meds off as well. They've got to get the bats and the meds off. But Ziki, he was tossing Arcstars down at the door while that res was happening. There was no way they could have pushed their way out. And somehow, against all the odds, all three Tom Young Kung members get onto the roof. Nuts. Absolutely nuts. All right, so the, the zone is pulling to the northeast here, okay? That is towards Keep Going Gaming. They have the best spot. Currently, teams like Burger who have managed to hold on to Secret, but are now going to have to push out, Ooh. along with all these other teams, are going to keep going. Tom Young Kung, despite that fantastic reset, uh, don't look like they're going to be making it much further in this game. 
No, someone had shots on that roof and they were just getting absolutely peppered. I don't see that you're going to get the win as a solo. It, I mean, it's, of course, it's always possible. Let's drop the rolling thunder to try to provide a bit of cover, maybe even just from the smoke that gets tossed on up here, but I think we're going to go one more. And MDY White, well, they'll have to push their way out of the building as well now. Down to just a couple. This is a really tough zone to play. No one really expected it to go in this direction, so everyone's having to make concessions. And Tom Yum Kung, they're looking for another raise. I... <laughs> oh no! Yeah. Shot to the smoke. Been lucky. Yeah. Telegraphed it a little bit there with the smoke canister and uh, just up to Ziggy now. So unless he can pull off something even more superlative than what we saw from Bear Claw Gaming as earlier on, uh, it looks like it may be uh, a game eight that we go to. At least. At least a game eight. Gaming. In the middle of the zone right there, they've got the alternator pylon up, they've got a couple of fences, and they are three strong. This might be one of those games that we are hoping to see from Legends Gaming. That's sort of been missing a little bit tonight. I don't know that it would be enough to get them into match point territory, but it would get them probably into one game territory at least. Yeah. AGL playing the wall over here. You know what's crazy? That concrete wall that you see in front of you is just as strong as the tarpaulin that... Legends Gaming is sitting behind. Mm. Well, Ziggy's about to die. There you go. So we will go one more. XXFPS has just dropped the defensive bombardment right on top of that alternator pylon, though. So I'm not sure what that's really going to do to Legend. I don't think they're too concerned about that. But it has allowed AGL to sort of cross, at least. You can see them working their way around the side of that zone. They want to get to the rock, and they... Had to use the bubble, it's now painted and it's starting to go wrong for them. Legends Gaming are fighting back. And they're saying, no thank you, we're not very interested in what you're selling. We just want 11 more points out of this game and maybe it's possible. Maybe it is possible if they can get most of the kills. Alright, Legends Gaming controlling the middle of this circle. Easy flash, always with the damage here. Almost up to reds. A few more hemlock bursts will get him there. He's got a uh, taste of blood as well. He's gone for the less picked level 2 upgrade for Bloodhound. Oh, gets a beautiful stick. And that's a celebration to get him to red. But also take down AGL as they're now in the final two between Legends Gaming and Keep Going Gaming. Well, you can see Keep Going Gaming have made it to 51 points there. Legends Gaming, I think if they do win this, they actually make it. If they get those three kills plus the extra placement points, it's going to convert. But we'll have to check when we get to the standings. I don't, whether or not they even win, I guess, is going to be the next question. Of course they will. Legends Gaming, have they now done enough to make it into match point? Yeah, look, I reckon they have. I think, uh, I think the mass was right there. Probably would have been another six points that they pick up um, indeed to to move up and uh, into match point eligible status. So congratulations to Legends Gaming, um, one of our uh, one of our stalwart teams here in Apex South. And uh, you know, they've got that, that third place land finish that they want to hang their hats on lace, but uh, maybe they're looking for more at the split one playoffs. Yeah, this is exactly what we see from Legends Gaming. You know, we just reached game number seven in our regional finals here in Apex South. You know, Bear Claw Gaming wants on Dumpling being knocked out early there, Genome. You know, it set all eyes on Tom Young Kung as our third, you know, match point team. Um, you know, getting eliminated with poor Ziggy hitting such a terrible flight path. Um, you know, landing themselves on the on the ball, you know, having to fight for the life. So, you know what that means for us? That means the games keep on flowing. Um, and it's going to be exciting to see who sort of hits that uh, next match point eligibility. I do believe that there might be a few teams um, added in and amongst the mitts. Of course, it's going to be Legends Gaming, um, you know, leading the pack, leading the charge. Uh, you know, we definitely just seen uh, a couple of uh, uh, not so not terrible games, but not their best games uh, recently. And they finally just switched, flipped the switch, turned things around and they take out the win in game number seven. It's going to be exciting to see this. Here we go. Here we go. And we see them just absolutely obliterate. Again, Easy Flash with some hard-hitting damage there. We always see, you know, Easy Flash pulling out the big guns. Um, taking out the win with 11 kills. I think that means that they are now match point eligible. Of course, we'll take a look at that in a moment. Um, but again, keep going gaming coming into the mix with AGL as well. I know AGL uh, were uh, fairly close. Um, so we, I guess we're going to have to wait and see. 
All right. Well, as we take a look at the scoreboard, a second place with one kill from Keep Going Gaming. More like Keep Our Heads Down Gaming <laughs> has managed to put them on match point eligible status. That is uh, an unlikely and, and honestly kind of nuts scenario there from our game seven. So yeah, look, congrats to, to KPG, who at times looked like they might not even make the regional finals. Now, uh, all of a sudden, have their shot at glory and fame overseas. Uh, Legends Gaming uh, do get there, obviously, with that win. Uh, and then MDY White uh, also joining them, a team who, you know, only squeaked through um, to to land last year, Lace, and uh, mm. then became pretty much the crowd favorite after that. That was one of the most fun things to see, this team that, you know, typically had not had a lot of success in Apex South, um, just becoming a crowd sensation with all of that uh, lovely support from their fans over in China. Yeah, you know, we, we love MDY White. We've seen some excellent stuff from them. And obviously, you know, their sister team, MDY Black, they have seemed to be going a little bit head-to-head -head, uh, in uh, in today's matches, which is quite interesting to see. But, you know, they are the ones that stand out on top. I was actually uh, a little bit surprised to see Team Burger there um, not actually reach uh, match point eligibility. Oh. I thought they might have just done it. I think they're at 49. Yep. So um, depending on how these games go, we now have just doubled the teams um, that could take out the win today to Team burger you know have enough is it going to go there in their favor i guess in this sense but uh yeah i i'm uh i'm a little bit shocked that they didn't get it in that game like a curse for them right that's i mean yep. elvis has talked about it a couple of times today the the 49 point curse for team burger so they can't get it across the line um does, does that mean that they're going to win the next game lace because that would that would really kind of complete that uh that curse yeah, so if they can take out that win, that means that, you know, no one else gets it in those six teams. But we're going to take ourselves another short break and we're going to see if some of our six teams that are in match point eligibility can win it for us today. We'll see you shortly. <laughs> They still inside, walking, walking! Crack, 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 crack! I broke in! One, net, I'm for this guy! Crack, 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 crack! On me, on me! Just crack, 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 again! Nice, last one, let's go! Let's, let's get this player! Nice one! <laughs> oh. <laughs> Bro, I didn't, I didn't, I didn't get to do anything that I didn't get him! ไม่ได้ไม่ได้ไม่ได้ไม่ได้ไม่ได้ไม่ได้ไม่ได้ไม่ได้ไม่ได้ไม่ได้ไม่ได้ไม่ได้ไม่ได้ไม่ได้ไ
Pick the wall, pick the wall, pick the fucking wall. On the... Is that one? I'm pushing. That's my mate. Hey. Let's fucking go. Fucking go. Mati, mati, mati. Surprise. Hello again, everyone. Things are getting serious here in Apex South. We now have six teams in contention for the match point as we are about to head into game number eight. Um, you know, uh, teams like Team Burger, who are sitting on the 49 points, um, you know, need to take the win or have, I guess, Genome, all six teams that have been absolutely um, obliterating and performing today choke and fall out early. <laughs> yeah, that's a, that is one way to put it. Uh, definitely some teams, uh, you know, that we've been really surprised by today. Dreamfire have slipped down into 17th place. That is risky for them. They were looking very good going into today at 77 uh, points, uh, but they probably need, what, like 13-ish to, to probably make it through here, Lace? And that's... It's a far cry away from where they are at the moment. So Dreamfire actually, it's uh, like Boogie Board is at risk of, of not getting it through. Even though we have eight spots now in Apex Out, the most we have ever had. Uh, the region is still looking so competitive that we've got uh, a lot of these teams that are quite good are potentially not making it through. Yeah, exactly right. You know, um, you know, we've been keeping a close eye on uh, Boogie Borders sitting uh, third overall in the overall standings. And then, yeah, like you said, adding Dreamfire to that mix as well, who, um, you know, are underperforming, I guess, sitting at six. But that's two teams then being knocked out uh, of the way to make room for teams teams like Tom Young Kung and uh, MDY White here as well. Even Serenity, um, you know, they still need to, uh, like Berger, get a little bit of something in this next match to move up to match point, um, you know, eligibility. So, yeah, it is it is just insane. Um, but I guess we've, you know, had a little bit of a, a, another insane thing happen. A whole season change, season 20 genome. Um, so we obviously have, uh, you know, I guess our new characters uh, with all their, their yeah. different uh, things here. Why don't you take us through Black Bloodhound, which is a, a massive pick for our teams today. Yeah, it's been very prevalent in this lobby, and I think it's a good time to bring it up, Lace, because we saw at the end of that last match that Easy Flash was going against the grain there. He picked Raven's Blessing as well as Taste of Blood. Now, tactical cooldown, I know here it says 83%. I would have thought that one is actually, uh, you know, even the, the higher picked out of all four of these, um, with, you know, being able to use that scan on refresh, very, very good, as well as Odin's Glare, um, as you can see, definitely getting picked up more. But... Um, you know, we see it can definitely work the other way. Easy Flash picking, uh, mm. you know, both of the ones on the right-hand side because they enable him as a fragger, and he definitely popped off in that last game. 1,800 damage. He picked up a swag of kills, and you saw, um, you know, with the six, the wingman, all that sort of stuff coming through in that last circle as well. Easy Flash is definitely putting those perks to work. Yeah, that's exactly right. You know, um, I guess if we have the Ravens Bless, we always see, we were talking about teams that had like a longer rotate and that coming into play, um, you know, being able to scan, uh, I guess, all the Ravens along the way um, and moving forward. But yeah, to have, I guess, that's a, that's a great way of thinking it, to have it as a, a fragger um, is something that, uh, you know, is, is great to see in the mix. Uh, of course, you know, we've got a lot of other characters too that uh, we've been seeing I guess like the Bloodhound and uh, uh, sorry, over the Bloodhound, we've had like the Caustic um, come into play, which has been a huge, yep. uh, I don't know if I throw the word out, crutch um, <laughs> coming back into this season. You know, we had Caustic as meta for quite a while. Um, and then, you know, we saw him disappear, which, which Genome, I was, I was not mad about that. I was not mad that Caustic sort of fell off in meta, but now he's back. Um, and you can see teams, you know, uh, I guess, you know, choosing Particle Diffuser, for example, uh, I guess, over Parabolic Force. 
Look, I, I, I don't know why you're hating here, uh, Lace. I'm, <laughs> I'm really happy to see the big boy back, personally. Um, but yeah, as you say, when we look at uh, his effectiveness in comp, um, definitely more people going for that particle diffuser. Um, but sometimes it depends, right? Like, I think if you're set up, um, parabolic force is uh, not necessarily as useful, but uh, it can be um, of use if you're trying to push your way into um into someone else's uh building or something like that right and then you got residual toxins there um definitely getting picked over breathe it in a little bit more um and part of that is because of uh how long that vision lasts for and just enabling people in the the visual clutter the bang smokes the the caustic alts all mm -hmm. that kind of stuff um almost like sort of having a, a, a mini bloodhound on your team uh version two yeah, exactly right. But yeah, I can tell you why I hate caustic is because you know what? You could be one HP uh, and then run around a corner or run into the wrong building and a gas trap goes off uh, and that could be the end of you. So, you know what? It is It is a huge meta for our teams and, uh, you know, they are playing extremely well. And like you said, um, it's it's a massive change and uh, yeah, having the bloodhound, I guess, and all the smoke happening is, is great for them too. But I think we've got uh, something to have a look at. One of our teams that we've got to keep a close eye on in this next match, Team Burger, they are 49 points at the moment um, where they, you know, they need to either solidify this win um, or or have themselves, uh, I guess, uh, all the teams in, in match point contention fall off. And that's six teams. Yeah, yeah, that's a lot. Uh, that's a lot to ask for for Team Berger, who have been uh, sitting around at 49 points now. Well, actually, in the 40s for quite some time. Um, certainly the last couple of games, they have been struggling to find purchase here and, and get across. This was one of the highlights earlier on in the day where we are extremely impressed by how they paid it. You know, we, we saw some of that in, in the listening that they had here. Um, you know, this was actually a 3v2, which they struggled a lot in, but it's, it's kind of hard when you're getting, uh, pinged by the, uh, the stun from Rolling Thunder there. So, um, the fact that they were able to pull it out after that was quite impressive. This was, uh... Honestly, less impressive because it's just a really easy spot to win from. Uh, but nonetheless, it definitely helps them on their way um, to trying to uh, trying to take it out today, uh, or at least you know put themselves in a good spot, which they've done. So you know they, unlike teams like say you know Dreamfire, Lace, who are sitting down in seventeenth, uh, have done enough to, to make it through into that top eight so far. Yeah, it, looked, it definitely looked like the way that they were heading that they would have hit that match point eligibility a little bit sooner. You know, they yeah. were, like you saw on World's Edge just in the replay, they were collecting kills along the way, having nice resets from them. Then we moved to Storm Point again, getting more kills. But I think it was just a little tough on the rotate. And then I remember the, their winning match, you know, they had the height, they had the God spot. They, you know, didn't even have that much loot. But to, you know, be able to, you know, connect that one key uh, uh, I think it was a PK shot to the face um, and just taking out the win. Um, I really thought that they might have hit it. So, yeah, let's keep a close eye on them going into match number eight on store point um, because, yeah, they, they do need to pull out something here and get themselves another win. Um, but, of course, you know, we have uh, we have Wonton Dumpling. We've got Legends Gaming, Tom Young Kung, um, and all these exceptional teams in match point eligibility. Um, six whole teams that just need to solidify a win and have the potential uh, to take that win as well in in the way. Yeah, uh, that's, uh, that's quite a few now. Now that we're up to six, it's very hard to keep track of all of them. It's hard for us. It's hard for harder for the teams who are in the lobby, of course, still, you know, playing with Anonymous mode with Bead. That's been the case for quite some time now in, in ALGS, but you can see who goes out, but you can't necessarily tell who's still in. Yeah, exactly right. All right, let's take ourselves to match number eight. We got to keep the Apex games going. Let's head over to Storm Point. Yeah, going to be a bit of pill to swallow for Team Burger if this one ends right here because it would be all too familiar territory for at least the namesake of that roster. Yeah. In that they're stuck on 49 points and we've seen them there before in the match point format. Akuma though is going to be our focus as we jump into this once again on Countdown and that 30-30 repeater is doing some real work. Is that double 30-30 repeater from Killapoz? That's kind of goaded. Either way, Akuma have, uh, well, they've swept four Monster Firebird aside in that engagement. But what I wanted to say about Burger was, uh, you know, this is the game that they will win, Genome. They're going to win this game on 41 <laughs> points. 
And they're going to go well above 50, and then someone else is going to win the next game, and it'll be like bad luck. Oh, gosh. Yeah, they're actually trying to chase down Azu, by the way. The other times, they've left him alone, right? Because they were just like, whatever, we'll play our game. We've won the ch the, um, the POI for ourselves. We don't need to keep doing this. But because they're so close, I think, uh, mm. to match points, they were just a couple of points away. Uh, all of oh. these kill points actually matter. And yep, if they would get that, they'd need one more point yeah, for the entire game. Exactly. But he's on Pathfinder. So it turns out he's actually pretty hard to chase. Uh, and as he will get away and potentially uh, find a spot to try and res his fallen comrades. Now, with the ring pull, just having a look at that one, you can see it's pulling. Ah, finally, uh, maybe a little bit more towards Bean, potentially even Barometer, mm. hard to say, but X and Y who have been, uh, you know, they had an okay start to the day, but have really fallen off. Maybe this is the juice they need to get back into a Boogie Borders, um, who have gone over to Command Center here on Storm Point. They have been struggling with their rotations for there. They have been struggling with, frankly, everything today. Uh, and this uh, ring is not necessarily going to help them. I, I just have to wonder... Like, is the mental still there? Is it is it even possible to keep your mental up after having, you know, seven such rough games? I mean, if it ain't over, it ain't over. That's the one thing that you have to know about this match point format. Like, about that APAC North uh, lobby that went for 13 games. At which point, I, I don't know how many teams were actually on match point. Probably all of them. Okay, so we've got a, a quick scuffle here. Teams are falling into Sunose Caves. And this is Legend Gaming versus AGL. They find each other in the Spider Cave here. It's already being done, but certainly this fight is not over just yet. But Player K does get the first kill onto Jackie, and now AGL are routed. They're completely gone, in fact. And Gibby once more does not get the level 4 upgrade. I didn't really get time to touch on it because we were in the end circle uh, at, in the last game. Uh, Elfish, but we did finally see it, and he went for, um, he went for Bubble Bunker, the, uh, the bunker, sorry, the bubble that has the extra four seconds of lifetime, um, so we finally, we finally saw the level three upgrade. I get to see it in this game, and, uh, the important thing to note in that engagement was that Legends did survive, so one of our match point eligible teams, still in uh, the mix, it's got some footage of Bearclaw Gaming making their way in, and, yeah, Boogie Borders is another pertinent one to focus on here. Again, without having done the math, can't 100% say that if they stay in this position, they will not make top 8, but it's certainly not doing them any favors if they're going to only get one point out of today's lobby. And especially when you look at teams like Bearclaw Gaming, for example, will have definitely overtaken them with the points that they've got today, so it only takes another one or two of those kinds of teams, and then you're in the firing line, but Anyway, Dreamfire is not really one of those to speak to at this point in time, and they're just trying to trap up their building. They know that they've got a pretty good chance that maybe this zone's going to pull further in their direction because Circle's touching the edge again. Well, look, talking of trapping up there, Elfish, uh, I was just having a look at teams that have changed their compositions from Game 7 on Storm Point to Game 8 on Storm Point. There's actually two outside have switched over the Caustic. Uh, they've dropped that for... Con Sorry, they've dropped the Conduit and picked up Caustic. Uh, and then kind of the opposite, Tom Young Kung, one of our match point teams, have dropped Caustic and picked up Horizon. So they're now playing Bangalore, Bloodhound, Horizon. Fascinating choice here when you think it doesn't give them priority. Well, it makes it harder for them uh, to work out where the ring and, and the circle is ending in this game. It gives them more fighting power, but they don't need KP. They need... No. Uh, a win here. There must be a method to the madness. Once on Dumpling, I have not put themselves in a bad spot for now. I don't know that the zone's going to pull over to them, so it might not be a forever position. If it, if it would, though, I mean, this is uh, certainly a spot you can win the game from. Right on top of the tower in Barometer. Yeah, I mean, I feel like more of the teams that I trust are over in Sonote Cave, so I, uh, like, I, I'm kind of betting on that, but we will see. We should probe that sector over there. Target just try and take it uh, pretty easy at this point. Both those teams, once on Dumpling and Bearclaw Gaming, and just see what the next zone is going to bring them, if it's going to bring them anything. It's a pretty good spread of match point eligible teams. 
Legends and MDY are out toward the west. Bearclaw and Wonton Dumpling toward the south. And Tom Yum Kung will be coming in from the north, so... Sort of wherever this zone actually ends up going, one of the teams that's match point eligible, you'll think will be probably pretty happy with it. Unless it just goes dead center. Definitely yeah, unlikely for that. Yeah. APG, obviously late. Getting that scan on the survey beacon in the ring. Makes it harder for them. As a match point eligible team, but you can see six teams there that are eligible and it goes quite south so this is hmm okay I, I guess it's yeah it's probably gonna finish somewhere in between barrow and cenote caves but like you know is it maybe on the bridge between them um it's kind of it's a, it's a little too north for that house that's um that heroes are holding sort of down the, the southwest there uh we do see some that finish like sort of just on the eastern edge of Sonote Caves. This is actually genuinely a hard one to call, though. It tends to be that way, doesn't it, when you're getting into uh, these match point games? It's always, a, it's always a little bit... You feel... I find, like, I find like you get some weird zones. I don't know if it's just me. Just raise the stakes, you know? The game knows how important this lobby is. It's like, no one! Let's throw something weird in the mix. Have you got the Ouija board out? Hmm. See if I can find it. I'm telling you. Telling me that this is the game. Okay. Telling me this is the game. It's happening. <laughs> the uh, the little the little tokens moving towards the eight on the board. Yep. Maybe not for SWQ. Maybe for SWQ, but hopefully they can get some more points on the board here to start taking over. Lightning unicorn. Just trying to escape. Really, they're not interested in taking this fight, so they'll drop rolling thunder and. They're on their merry way. Lots of teams in front of them that they're going to have to deal with. But not in the orange at the very least, which can be a staging platform of sorts. Serenity who came in today in seventh spot. Just on the cusp. They'll need to have a good day. And at the moment, they're in seventh spot. Over Sorry, no, no. They moved down into ninth spot after that last game. That honestly could be... The, like, the difference between seventh and ninth for them may actually be enough to knock them out of contention. Maybe it even comes down to whether one of those top seven teams takes the golden ticket or not. Mm. Really tough. And they're a little bit off the pace as well. It's actually a bit of a jump. From them up to Akum is five points. And then another uh, three points up to Team Burger. So they've actually got some work cut out for them here to make up that ground. Nice shots from Ziki with the flat line, but it's not really going to amount to a huge, uh, huge total. We'll just be moving on. A bit of Evo damage. I don't really complain too much about it, but it's very much going to have to be an edge game from these guys. And I think that's why Tom Yum Kung are more than happy to just sort of spend a bit of time here. They're not exactly trying to like beat anyone into the zone. There's no real reason to do that when you're going to be one of the last rotators anyway. And in fact, you want to take this fight to War Monster Firebird? I mean, look, they're re they're respawning. I get that, but yeah. you don't need these points. And if you lose a player here or something goes wrong, like I don't know if I'm I don't know if I'm sold on this one. I'm gonna be honest. I mean, it's the kind of comp they're playing, right? They've they've chosen the horizon. They clearly want to fight people. That maybe they they're trying to get those early reds and just kind of bully the rest of this lobby. And look, I mean, more monster firebirds. They have been learning some valuable lessons about how a regional finals plays out today. Obviously, one of the newer teams to the circuit. And haven't been able to uh, play in a lobby of this caliber, uh, you know, when the stakes are this high before. And it's been a tough day for them. But uh, look, I, I've seen, you know, good things from them throughout the season. And uh, look, frankly, I am expecting them to uh, to continue their, their Apex journey and, and probably come back bigger and better um, in Split 2.
Yeah, no reason not to, obviously. Port being shown and oof. How about that for another pull? Very, very far south and it's not a lot of cover in that one to play with. Particularly when we're talking about water zones, like... Ooh, this could get a little spicy. Bearclaw Gaming might not be in a bad spot though, around Barometer. They'll have a, a little bit to play with. I think Belkin's position... Mm, you can't quite play it. So they are going to have to move out as well. This one will get spicy, that, that is for sure. So we'll see some Tridents blocking a few shots at some point. Teams fighting over Barrow. Hard to see what's going on over here with all the smoke, but the Bloodhound will help us see through that. Well, up along. Crazy Kong. He's not going to be lasting very long, one would think. SWQ eliminated as the 19th team in this lobby. Lightning Unicorn will take the spoils of war. They're not going to get jumped on by. Either Wonton Dumpling or Bearclaw Gaming, it's too dangerous for either of those two teams to jump into that uh, into that tunnel. Both are playing for their positioning and playing for the chance to win this game. Rather than those kill points that are just going to keep the scoreboard ticking over. Oh no, Akuma! We talked about them creeping up on match point, but they need... Two more kills. Placement points. Whatever it is, we'll do it. And they fall just short. Mm, painfully short. May not matter in the end, though. We'll see how the rest of this game plays out. Because there's every possibility that one of the teams that's on match point can finish it off right here. They've all been surviving pretty okay thus far. A lot of congregation around Barometer, at least for this next zone. But, ooh, Tom Yum Kung. Down a couple of members. Might not be their night. I don't see how you get out of this one, Aziki. It's just too impossible. And you just get so few opportunities when you're on match point to really clutch a game out. And that's, you know, I know that's still hurting Bear Claw Gaming, who we saw fall at one of the last hurdles there. And once again, Tom Young Kung will be removed to early, and now it's all up to. The other teams that have got there later. Bearclaw keeps going gaming. Bearclaw's about to go down, I think. And uh, it's just Heck that's going to be lasting there. It's Bearclaw gaming that's eliminated. I believe in the hands of MDY White. Yeah, so uh, I mean, two teams already on that match point that are now out of the picture in the blink of an eye. And that's actually fantastic for MDY White because, again, they are one of the teams that's match point eligible. And they are taking out their direct competition. It's exactly what you'd want to be doing. We have 14 squads left alive, and there are, there's currently one in the circle, in the next circle. So the next 30 seconds are going to see some real chaos here. VK Gaming have the most southern building in Barometer. That is the only real cover left alive in this next circle, Elfish. As MDY White, one of our other match point teams, is mm. suffering. Wanton Dumpling still in this. Legends Gaming, I, I think, if I saw that correctly, are the only... Match point eligible team with all three members left alive at this point. Well, MDY White did just get that res for both players that were knocked. So technically they're still okay. not free, but they're a bit worse for wear and they're on a very busy side of the zone. I, I like the move actually that's being made here by Legends Gaming. They're trying to take positioning early. If that pays out for them, X and Y over towards Sonote Cave. Uh, in a bit of a tough fight, but they're winning it okay. And that's Dreamfire out of the picture again, oh, no. who continue to have a rough night. I mean, 3, 3MZ was, uh, was leading a lot of the stats for them. Roy has really fallen off for Dreamfire in this finals when they need him the most. Tim Berger have apparently hit 50 points if this goes to another game. God forbid they win this game and then lose the next one. That would be just way too sad of a story for me having seen that before. I'm not sure that they're going to win it from here, to be honest, because it is looking not so good with Pricey getting knocked. Wayron is hmm, pretty unhealthy as well, and so is Sharky, but they're still fighting hard, and Boogie Porters gets eliminated again, but they get some at least some points out. Legends oh have now been God. eliminated. Wonton. Wonton. Dumpling gone. It might just come down to MTY White. Is that the only team I left? I think so. Yeah, I think so. 
Only team left alive on match point. And I mean, if anyone's on our multi-view right now and they're watching the map feed, you would see a very interesting situation. Every team just scattered around the edge of the circle. No one really occupying space within it because there is no cover there. There is nothing to play. And that's why we're seeing so many teams fall here at this hurdle, but definitely eyes on MDY White, who have found a position up the top. They're just above outside now. They have reset and they're on triple reds. This is doable. Oh, it's so hard though to guarantee anything. This surely has to be heroes as the favored team. They're the only team on the opposite side of the lake or the water, whatever it is. That maiden EMP and forcing ult combo is going to just devastate the team down oh my the God. bottom below. Uh, but MPY White, it means they're going to be fighting their way in. That's a very oh, no! fight. It has to be said until the knock comes through from the nade. And now they might not have time for the res. They're going to go for it. No pushes coming through. VK Gaming thought about it for a second. They've been forced away. It's one step of the way, but... Oh, oh he can't even walk it out through the gas. And Mingyue has just got there with a sliver of a health. But unless someone really special is shining down and uh, watching over him, he's not oh going to make it. That's a match nine, ladies and gentlemen. Watch Team Burger win this game. Just watch. Just watch. I've seen the story. I've seen it too many times. I've watched this movie before. I don't want to watch it again. Mm. Look, they don't have Sha. I uh, sorry, they don't have Pricey. Uh, he yeah, shouldn't win. He's they usually the uh, the clutch one for Team Burger. We've seen it happen quite a few times this season. He's also going up against the Kraber. Sorry, so Sharky has the Kraber and bangs out Zhao Kai here. What are they doing? Okay. They grabbed them, but heroes who were playing the building on the Sunote cave side for the longest time. They managed to walk it in, stunned by the bang ult, and they'll take out the win. Oh, okay. Well, we're going to game nine. Couple more teams locking in their 50 points there and getting themselves up to match point. I mean, look, Team Burger, they didn't win. They took a second. So I guess the storyline, it's not quite being fulfilled, but another one. Another one. Bit of an anti-climax, really. I guess we just have to, uh, you know, take a step back. It felt like, listen, I, I listened to the Ouija board and it said this was the game, but I didn't realize when it, when it said this was the game, it meant this was the game before the game. Like, this was the penultimate game. That's what they were trying to tell me, I think. I see. I'm you sure it's called the it next there. Game. Exactly. You know, our match point teams dropping like flies. And uh, like you said, did our prayers for Team Burger become a reality? Because, uh, you know, usually we have like the caster's curse. But I'm going to be calling it the caster's crutch. Um, because, you know what, that that's what Team Burger needed. They, they didn't take out the win, but, you know, that puts them into match point um, eligibility. Uh, it might even be enough for heroes. They were sitting uh, around 32. Uh, they're going to be itching a little bit closer. Uh, maybe not. You know, they didn't really get too many kill points there, but um, it is something insane, um, you know, from them. They've sort of been a little bit quiet playing. Uh, in these in these recent matches, we, we haven't seen too much from heroes, but, you know, taking out that win is something. Um, and they just did it, actually, Elfish. Look at them. 53 there, heroes uh, in at seven. So they just made it over there. Team Burger, of course, who we were praying for, um, have just, uh, you know, pushed themselves further as well, um, just to add in, in, in amongst the mix. Yeah, KPG, heroes, and Team Burger joining the pack after that game. I don't, I don't even know if Heroes might not have actually got that if they didn't win. So it's a good thing for them, at least, that they were able to win. Uh, Akuma, VK Gaming, just missing out. Serenity, not too far away either. So if it goes one more, we can reasonably expect probably at least half of our lobby uh, if we go into 10 maps. But, I mean, eight teams with a chance to win. I, we've gone deeper than this. We have definitely gone deeper than this. I recall a time where mm. I think in APAC South, we might have gotten to uh, 13 teams. Uh, that's the name. That's the number that's sort of sticking in my head uh, from a couple of years ago. But yeah, I think look, you've got a lot of the teams that have been performing not only today but throughout the entire season that now have kind of got themselves into the match point eligibility. Like the only one really that you think is, is kind of missing out a little bit is uh, Boogie Borders, and they've just been missing out all day long. So it's kind of like well. You know, you can't, you can't rightly say, well, we would like to see Boogie Borders because we think that they could win. Because right now, you can't really say you'd think they'd win a game at the moment. Uh, as, you know, that's, that's really harsh to say, obviously. But tonight has not been their night. 
Uh, but, but any team right here that, like, if you were, if I was to ask you which team's going to win the next game and you were just going to take a punt on any team, it would be realistically one of those teams. So, uh, you know, it's it's going to happen eventually. I have a feeling it'll probably be next game. We're, we're already sort of getting past the average number of games now. Like, once you get to about seven, eight, mm. that's kind of when you're starting to expect to see that match point win. So going into nine, it's it's starting to go toward the longer side of a match point format than what you would say is the average. Yeah, you know, I'm a little bit happy that uh, I'm not. I'm not. I'm just glad I made myself another coffee. I had a feeling that we were going to head into another match, so I'm just getting myself fueled with caffeine. But uh, what makes me a little bit happy is that uh, you know Team Burger are now in and amongst the mix. Um, you know, they they had uh, a little rocky start to you know split uh, the split. We didn't see too much from them, but something has just flipped the switch in their mind, and they have just been excelling. Um, throughout the split and obviously today, you know, taking out a win um, there, what an exceptional win and, you know, a good call for the zone rotation for them. Um, now like a second place as well. So um, it, it is definitely in the cards. You know, we've seen uh, once on Dumpling uh, and I think it's Bear Core Gaming have, you know, two wins today. So why not Team Burger? You know, they, they could itch close to that win and that would be you know the match point for them so i guess uh yeah it's kind of uh it's kind of nice having all these teams sort of in and amongst what that makes it about eight teams i think now in contention um eight or nine so yeah why not half the lobby our region deserves to uh have that chance you know to to win and go through to land um but we're gonna take another short break guys uh it's been a long goddamn journey but we're gonna head into match number nine shortly and we'll see you soon Okay, 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 Okay,我们先来。Okay,我们先来。Okay,我们先来。Okay,我们先来。Okay,我们先来。Okay,我们先来。Okay,我们先来。Okay,我们先来。Okay,我们先来。Okay,我们先来。Okay,我们先来。
Uh, we now have mm. eight teams who just need to take the win for a one-way ticket through to LAN. Um, Elfish, we just saw Heroes take the win with Team Burger coming in second, making them match point eligible, uh, you know, with some other heavy, heavy hitting teams. Yeah, I mean, the heavy hitting teams is one thing, and I think we've talked about them quite a bit because they were obviously some of the teams that were kind of quick to make it to that match point eligibility. Everyone knows Wonton Dumpling, Tom Yum Kong, Burger, Legends, etc. These are the kinds of teams that we expect to be going through pretty much regardless of whether they win or not. The teams that I actually want to focus on now are the ones that actually there are a couple that you think, well, maybe they wouldn't have even made it, wouldn't have even had a chance. I mean, obviously, one was Bearclaw Game. We've talked about them extensively because they were the first team to match point tonight. They weren't able to capitalize on that still yet. May still happen. But now they've been joined by KPG, Keep Going Gaming, who were 17th going into today. So Bearclaw Gaming 16th, KPG going 17th going into today. Both those teams now match point eligible, eligible rather. And if you have a look at it here, if you would have had to pick which teams were going to go through to LAN, yeah. 16, 17, Bearclaw Gaming, Keep Going Gaming, they were not on your list. And they're probably still not on your list because the way that they do that is literally to win this lobby. That's the only way, pretty much, that these guys make it. Uh, you can do the math, and I think for Bear Claw Gaming, it might technically be possible if some witch shenanigans go on. But realistically speaking, you, you have to win this lobby. And now we've got two of those teams that might be able to make that Cinderella run. And uh, I think that's really cool. Yeah, they've absolutely climbed their way up that ladder. Um, you know, like you said, Bear Claw Gaming were one of the first teams to hit the match point eligibility. And, you know, they took out a win as a little duo. I remember that game and uh, having the Gibby drop down and, you know, you thought it was all over for them. But they've just been absolutely fighting today, no matter what they have had thrown at them. Obviously, Heroes as well, um, joining in the mix of the match eligible um, teams too. You know, they're sitting about ninth overall in the leaderboard. So this is massive for them also. So um, to get above and hit, you know, one of those eight spots, um, we're going to head ourselves back to World's Edge um, for for our, I think it's game number nine. Um, so, you know, we're, we're going to see, uh, I guess, uh, a little bit more action from them, um, potentially, um, you know, uh, we've obviously been keeping a close eye on poor Boogie Borders as well. They've been having such a tough mm. time through this Um I'm hoping or praying that something happens for them in this this game um, because, yeah, a lot of other teams are, are, are creeping up. Well, yeah, exactly. It's like you said, if Boogie Borders don't get anything done, there's a chance they miss out. We haven't, mm. again, we've got to reiterate, we haven't done the math. We can't 100% clarify that until exactly. the results at the end of the day. But uh, if you're only getting one point for the day, it's not really looking too good. So, they, yeah, they are running out of time because at some point, exactly. someone's going to win something. That's it. Well, we have eight teams ready to go. We're going to keep keeping a close eye on them as we hit match number nine. Let's head back over to World's Edge. Right back into it indeed. Ain't no rest for the wicked. And how long is it going to take, Gino? And what's your bet? I said last game I thought it was going to happen. But what I really meant was I thought it was going to happen this game. What do you think? Um, yeah, I guess at the start of the day I said uh, Wonton Dumpling in six. But clearly I, uh, I I misspoke as way. Whoa! We've got some fun going on. Let's worry about that later. Wonton Dumpling are taking on... Legends Gaming, and by that I mean Legends Gaming have surprise dropped. I gotcha. What? On Wonton Dumpling? Why? Well, I guess we we kind of we sort of talked about this scenario before, right? It was like uh, the only way for Legends Gaming to get first is if they can do significantly better than Wonton Dumpling. I mean, I guess it's kind of weird. Like, like Team Burger straight into Lava Siphon as well. So yeah, I don't know. Like if there was like some kind of conversation that happened in the lobby chat because that that sometimes does happen. Yeah, uh, true. That's and, yeah, like, that's a good Legends point. Legends was hey. like, we're just we're just gonna hot drop you guys because that's the only win con. And look, I you can't necessarily blame them. It's kind of a weird weird thing to do, I guess. But like you can't like you can see the you can see the justification basically. Yeah, but you're uh, right. It, so I mean, some sort of conversation must have happened, right? Because Burger yeah. aren't dropping in Skyhook. Uh, yeah. I'm just trying to think, where did the... Actually, no, the, the, the ship went from south to north, I think, right? Um, so I, I guess so. there's, like, there's a tiny possibility that Burger could have seen that, uh, you know, no one dropped Siphon and said, hey, look, if you guys don't want to take it, we will. Um, mm. but yeah, either way, that's massive for a couple of reasons, right? One, because the ring is pulling south, and Wonton Dumpling now actually have a great chance, um... To grab this, they do not get. Uh, actually, wait, is there even a ring called Thermal Station? I'm, I'm wigging out here. I can't even remember. But um, 
Uh, they have a survey yeah, beacon. Yeah, they got a survey beacon, but, uh, I mean, sure. So, um, yeah, either way, the, the ring is going to them. So if they, they notice that there's a lot of people joining them down here, um, then, yeah, it's, uh, it's uh, definitely a possibility for a good game for them. As well as, hey, like, even Boogie Boarders, honestly, who, uh, you know, they got Hot Zone. Um, they are moving in the right direction. They got two, uh... Survey beacons on the way as well. So, yeah, look, uh, potentially uh, a chance for them to redeem themselves. Mm, KPG's in the zone already. So is uh, Team Burger. All of those match point eligible teams going to be getting themselves set up nice and early on in the piece. Oh, whites, though, for Team Burger. And they dropped in Lava Cypher. That seems a little bit strange. Okay. On the move. Back off of the nade. X and Y will be taking this fight against Outside, who are doing a bit of a number back to them. Uh, the problem for Outside is that they're actually in the middle of a sandwich. Keep, keep going gaming on one side, X and Y on the other. They actually don't want this fight to happen, and they'll be glad to see X and Y moving away. Yeah, keep going gaming. You know, they've just pinged the survey beacon that uh, is in that building as well. Doesn't get the many Evo upgrades, just get some some good knowledge. And wow, actually they're well, okay, they're gonna push it. Yeah, okay, so we're watching this now. They've taken out the other side of the house here. Uh, I think they'll go down to the lower house. That would be probably the smarter move here from outside. Yes, they do. They leave that one to APG. So yep, now they can both peacefully coexist. Meanwhile, X and Y, uh, they've moved backwards now to take on MDY Black. A tough one to fight, but they've got themselves nearly a knock onto that Bangalore. It took a little longer than expected for X and Y, and it doesn't matter because they are just about the better team. Quickly going to pop themselves the Bangalore ultimate to keep anyone away, and I think they'll be okay as a result of that. It was a close fight. X and Y survive, and MDY Black are undusted for now. Alrighty. Well, game nine. Things getting a bit silly up in here. Yes. Getting late. Everyone's getting that fatigue as well, right? Yeah, sometimes these players do have to play 12 games in a day, but they normally get a break in between. Yeah, exactly. So that's, uh, that's something. All right, well, look, uh, you know, uh, things are getting silly. A uh, burger getting silly. Uh, let's listen in and, uh, and check out if that's the case. I mean, fuck, ma main prior way is your side, I think. Alright. We just can't let anyone, like, evac high ground. Horizon queue up if for some reason they're playing Horizon. Uh, not an actual site, so the 2x. I wish I had a site, Sharky. You're privileged, bro. Mmm. Nah. Team flying in? Where? Uh, they're flowing to bleachers? You mean tree buildings? Mm -hmm. <clears throat> yeah, they're, yeah, they're flowing to bleachers. On 7 1, what are we? 19 2. 12 4 and a Phoenix. Fuck! Uh, I mean, it's only. What's uh, elsewhere? Uh, I can't hold them up where. Uh, I can't hold them too. What? What the hell? Can I have a bear tracky? No. Oh, that's fucked up. Drop it now! Alright, I'm told to. I mean, I think he's gonna be this soon. It's like. Yeah, I mean, I don't know. The thermal pools are weird. Worst case scenario pulls up here, and we just have to slide down towards these buildings. <laughs> okay, well, there you go. All right, like, they're getting a little bit silly. Yeah, having fun. Not much happening, really, for Team Burger at the moment. I guess that's fair. Acknowledging their privilege, at least. Yeah, they're just making sure that they're locking things down, which is all good. Standing right on top of Bearcore Gaming, who are in the train tunnel underneath them, and... A real surprise to see that that zone is going to continue to shrink over the top of Thermal Station. Look, I think if it doesn't happen here, I'm going to be a little bit surprised. MDY White are inside of Thermal Station. You've got Wonton Dumpling True. already across as well. Like, if it pulls back down south for whatever reason, KPG are going to be in a good spot to play from. So, it sort of feels like wherever we end up going, we do have at least one team that's got that win potential. Okay. What's happened to Tommy and Paul? Yeah, indeed. What has happened? They X maybe ran into X and Y, I think. Yeah. yeah. Um, we've actually picked up 
Four kills so far this game. So we'll start for them. I, I guess we, yeah, we saw the first three. Uh, maybe doing some gatekeeping over here, but now they've got uh, VK Gaming on their case as well. Who obviously wanted to find a, want to find a team and want to beat them because that means they're on match point. Of course, I've got bigger fish to fry as well. Can't just uh, rely on that anymore. You kind of need to make sure you win the game yourself because otherwise there's every chance one of those are... Uh, there's six now. How many, we, how many are we up to after this game? Yeah. Eight or something? Eight. Yeah, eight, eight match point teams are um, uh, up there. Yeah, if we get to another game, it's probably likely to be 10 or 11. Damn. So it's, uh, yeah, it's certainly getting there. There was a lobby, I remember, uh, that we did. Was it last year? It must have been last year. I think we got to 13. Oof, is that right? Does that sound right to you? I feel like we got to one where we had more than half the lobby. Really? Sounds like too many, yeah. but I, you know, you, you could be right. Yeah. Well, I wouldn't be surprised if it uh, happened again, to be honest with you. Feels like one of those kinds of nights. Raver in the hands of Lightning Unicorn might assist in that. Those heads down. It's going to be Serenity trying to push their way forward against Akuma, who have at least one member at the bottom of the bridge. It's Crusader that's isolated away from this fight. I don't actually think that Serenity were aware of that, and they did not push their way forward. Interesting to hear, though, how Serenity go about this one. So we've got to listen in prep for them, and we'll see what they're thinking. My next gun, I might be able to drop. I can be careful, Harvester. Oh. We're getting flown. No, no, they're flying back. I'm um, underneath me. Behind me, behind me. Walking up. Okay. Uh, That's a new team. Yeah, new team. I'm can we go green? Oh, can we go? Can we go fast? I'm batting first. Oh, yeah. They're gonna peek you, maybe. I'm running. I'm running. Smokes, please. They're ready. On you. They're peeking. I'm running. Okay, I'm, I'm needing left. them. I'm got. No, I'm, I'm going fence. I'm going fence. I might die. Yep. Turning around. I'm good. I'm batting good. I'm batting. We have scan. I'm not kidding. I'm scanning now. In my gas, up top, on cart. The other teams run. Just three, two teams. Yeah. They're stuck in this corner, Flash! Oh, on I my peak! I can't peek. I can't peek. Yeah, it's, okay, it's okay, it's okay. They're dying. Yeah. Two died. You look over it. Guys on bridge. Oh, no, it's still Guys on bridge much. still. Yeah, yeah. We might get pushed from here. There's a smoke there. Yeah, I'm watching it. Okay. Looking off. Might be AJL pushing us from that side, yeah. Team on yeah. car looking at us now. Uh huh. My scan doesn't lost. get far enough that way. That team should go left. Alright, well once again, a bit of a non-event for Serenity. They do have to make a little bit of a cheeky cross, but realistically speaking, not, not too much happening in this game. This is feeling like it's going to be one that's actually quite climactic in the end. We've still got 17 teams alive. They're all going to be Ooh. trying to dump their way into Thermal Station. It's going to be busy. Yeah, actually, well, just just after you say that, AGL actually pop dog and uh, start pushing up onto uh, Serenity. But there's, uh, I think it's just about the time where we're going to start kicking off here. Because as you can see, X and Y are also getting into it with VK Gaming. Seemingly get getting the better of them. Um, Serenity do eventually finish off AGL, but uh, do they... Reset in time for Akuma, who are coming at them next. Guess we'll see that one. Okay, happy days for VK Gaming at the moment. Zone shift is not going to be too far away. 20 seconds left to go. And VK Gaming are really out uh, against the wall. They're going to have a long run to make with lots of teams looking at them and not a lot of cover. The bad spot to be in. I think VK Gaming might be on their last legs for this one. We're pulling down to back thermal, by the way. Heroes, another match point eligible team. Down and out. Um, so once on Dumpling, who are occupying that back village. Pretty much all by themselves at the moment. Great spot. Outside. Yeah, they're looking like the team to beat. Also pretty good. Boogie Borders. Anybody's riding the wave in chat? In a decent spot. They're in Dorito House. Mm. Yeah, tough day for Boogie Borders, that's for sure. Hasn't been much swell. Like that sometimes. Gotta make your own fun. Team Burger have been doing that. A little bit busier than when we had that listen in with Team Burger now. 
They're taking it pretty chill earlier on, but we're going to have to fight for their territory at this point. Still feels like we're in a bit of a holding pattern as pretty much every team has now made their rotation into that next zone. And as you can hear, there's not really a whole lot of fighting going on around the map. So we'll have to wait for that next ring pool for us to really go anywhere. But as you said, we're going toward back thermal and that is Wonton Dumpling. That's, they're the only team really that have any sizable control of that next zone. They have just been gifted. Yeah, once on Dumpling have just been gifted. I mean, they've put themselves in this position, obviously, to, uh, you know, to be on match point. They've done, they've played very well today. They're at the top of the leaderboard, but uh, it's kind of up to the other teams now to, to really push in and take this game away from them. And that's pretty hard to do when you've got uh, someone, the skill of Gugu, just holding that down. Becklaw, they had their chance and didn't quite take it here. And now Rudine, a good gas grenade out of the core stick, but uh, you know, barely any time to try and pop this uh, Phoenix. You can see in the back of his kit here. He needs to, he needs to pull it off because uh, he's pretty damn low, but finding a spot, well, that's another. Even if he does, even factor. if he does get it off, he's going to be solo. And yep. he is being shot at right now. I can see from Wonton Dumpling's POV. Uh, it'll be tough for him to do anything in the rest of this game. He will be dealt with by Donut. And VK Gaming want to take the fight forward. Not exactly the uh, greatest of fights to be taking. That uh, low ground position causing them problems. Kassa dropping dangerously low, in fact. And the Arc Star's heading in their direction. And this is now where I'm talking about it's going to start to get a little bit chaotic because okay. 15 teams, there's just a little bit too little room to play. Yes, this, this next circle close is going to be crazy. Keep going gaming as a duo. Again, they're MP eligible. They have moved into right into the middle of this uh, this next zone, setting up with Watson actually, um, but they are only a duo. Team Burger now making their move. This is such an important rotation. They're going to try and play under. Oh, I don't know if I love this. Uh, it, it can be a good spot, but you're also very vulnerable if people pick the right angles out against you. Well, they've got the smokes down. No one's really shooting at them at the moment. Might be a genius play. We'll have to wait and see whether or not that Galaxy Brain is going to play pay off SW2. Dropping their alternator pylon, but I'm not sure that's going to keep them alive here. Zone's pushing its way in, and so our teams have a look at that kill feed. SWQ outlining Unicorn as well as Springfire all gone. And there's going to be more to follow as the dominoes will continue to fall. Teams still have to make their way in and have now started to do so. MDY White, a little worse for wear, but surviving. Oh! And that is the important thing right now. I saw Boogie Boarders go down. They were challenging Wonton Dumpling. They were pretty much the, uh, maybe the best chance this lobby had to continue to, uh, a match record mm. 10 games. Uh, nine, we're at nine here. That's equaling the record of, uh, the Makes most we've out. ever had in uh, a match point series in, in Apex South. Yeah, as you say. Serenity now. Uh, the Serenity is the only team. Only team. Only team left, and they're in, you would have to say, the worst position of any team as well. They're still out on the eastern side of the zone. They have to cross the lava. I, I mean, mean, they've got good loot, They're prob but... probably checking for some survival items at the moment in these boxes. There are none. They have not picked up an evac tower, so as you say, yes, they probably have to cross the lava. Not fun. I think this is where it ends. It has to end here, surely. I mean, it would be an absolute miracle for Serenity to win the game from this position. So, who's it going to be based on the positionings that we've got? I mean, right now, you might even be able to argue Team Burger if they can keep their head under the water. But that is something that will remain to be seen. First of all, let's focus on whether or not Serenity can get across and keep this lobby potentially still alive. They're going to go for it. They're going to jump and they've got no other choices. They aren't actually copying any shots. So, wow. Okay. As far as crosses go, that's not too bad. They go early. They're underneath KPG. This is important because remember, KPG are a duo. If they work this out, and of course they should, they've got the scans from Bugi. They take that spot off, then maybe they can even steal the gen away? This could be huge for Serenity. This would, this would be insane if they really this game. Anyway, MDY White, they're getting themselves into an engagement against Team Burger, who... Uh, a little worse for wear themselves, but MDY White really struggling in this one. It, it doesn't even look like really Team Burger want to take that fight, but they kind of need to. They're down to blues. They're going to fight on multiple fronts as well. Not going gaming as the duo. They don't want to do too much either. They can just let the zone somehow. kill them, right? I mean, it's, it's only somehow. Fade you left alive, but he's managed to take out Sharky. 
That's not I think good. Serenity might win. I think Serenity might it's, win. It's absolutely possible here because Wonton Dumpling are underneath KPG. And I feel like those two teams, are, you know, they can grief each other and then Serenity can just sweep in and clean up with the triple reds. Pricey is by himself. Yeah. A couple of rogue elements here left in this last circle, but as Serenity hunt him down, a scan will probably reveal his position before too long here. Yeah, he's been found. I was going to say, Pricey is the clutch master for Team Berger, but not this time around. And uh, I mean, Serenity, it's Serenity's to lose. It is It is match point. It's, sorry, it's match 10 on offer. Okay. Is, they're the only match point el non-eligible team. And they they're, are in the best spot possible. They're inching closer towards this end circle here. You can see there, they've got a lot of space to play. Walls, they've got... You know, plenty of death boxes if there was anything that they needed. They've also got two ultimates. I don't think they've been able to find another ult excel to get the bang ult back online, sadly. But there's potentially time for that to come up as well, because he's got the gold helm. They have shuffled that across to Legacy to try and speed that process up, but they do have the gas grenade. They do have blood. Oh, the bloodhound ultimate here. So much going Serenity's way. Yeah, I'm not sure what the end game really is for Wonton Dumpling and KPG right now. APG just want to hold on to the high ground. I mean, once on dumpling, could they wrap right and go maybe around the rock while KPG is being harassed by Serenity? I think maybe. that might be the only play that they've got. Leapfrogging forward with the barrels now. Jesco trying to buy even more and more space here for Serenity. Holding that utility all of a sudden. KPG is going down first. This is not as good here for Serenity. They want the other two teams to fight. Can they force them into each other? Great damage, though, from Serenity onto Wonton Dumpling. Both of the members that tried to beat their head up just straight away losing all of their shields and the zone pushing at their back. Serenity, I think they're going to do it. Wonton Dumpling, they have to climb, and they're climbing into a choke point, but they're doing it together. It's one player left. Jackie Chan, can he pull off a miracle? Oh, no, my God. Serenity. Get the job done, and we go another. Okay, that's history. That is history being made here. A tenth game. I mean, I feel like you maybe could have predicted this just off the start alone, Lace, because it, it, it took so long for anyone to even get to match point that we've had less chances than you would usually have in this situation, right? Uh, uh, so, yeah, I was just looking at the stats before. Uh, game 9 is the most we ever had in APAC South. We have now officially hit a Game 10 in the longest-running match point series we've seen down under. Yeah, the only one. No, I mean, yeah, it was hard. They were on the low ground. They, they basically had to climb. They probably would get shut, shut down by uh, KPG if they, they tried to do that, honestly. And as we have a look at the scoreboard here, 11 teams on match point. Akuma just make it in. VK behind. The other thing I think that really hits me about this scoreboard, Lace, is that the longer the series goes on, the harder it is uh, to change your fate, right? The, the, more, the, the further apart these scores will get and the harder it is to actually jump up um, spots on the leaderboard, right? So you look at a team like Boogie Boarders, they are now 10 points behind just getting one extra point, right? Like a, a, a huge game, 20 points, uh, 
might actually do it for them. They would literally need to, like, drop a nuke um, just to last one more game here and, and maybe uh, increase their chances of going to land. Um, but, uh, yeah, it's just... it's <laughs> Even towards the middle of that scoreboard, there's still a lot of people who... Um, uh, you know, aren't that close together anymore because we've had so many games played. <laughs> hmm. <laughs> Let's go. Yeah, you think we should go for the record? Should we, uh, should we take that off uh, APAC North? We usually beat them in FFL. Maybe we can, uh, you know, maybe we can take them out uh, <laughs> in uh, in a uh, number of match point final games as well.
Welcome back, everyone, where we are witnessing history in the making here in Apex South. We have 11 teams with match point eligibility. Um, you know, we thought we were going to see the end of it all in match number nine, um, with only Serenity being the only team um, not match point eligible. But, uh, you know, of course, we just want to keep it going. And Serenity take out the win to just keep the games going. Elfish, it's just insane to see these teams just fight for life um, and just carry on, you know, the games as we know it. Yeah, I think, look, I said <laughs> during that cast, I said this is going to be a miracle if Serenity can win this. They had to fight against the odds to actually make the cross that inevitably won them the game. But to even get across as unscathed as they did was like an absolute miracle. And then they went on to win against like, what? It was like five teams total or maybe six teams. And all of them were match point eligible except for Serenity, who then became the people's champions to keep us going for one more game into game 10. That is starting to get a little bit crazy. But look, it might not end here. To be quite honest with you, there's still some good teams that are playing in this lobby that haven't made it to match point that we know can win in a lobby like this. I mean, Dreamfire is one of them. They won the last regular season lobby of the split, so it's not as if they couldn't put a, put a win out of their hat uh, here. I mean, Boogie Board is like, they've just gone completely missing all day. Their confidence is absolutely cooked, but they're still a very good roster as well. So those I see are two key threats going into this game that might still force us through to another game. Elfish, I'm going to need you to stop with that. You know, we talked about the caster's curse. Now we've got the caster's crutch and everything that you keep saying is coming of reality. Um, mm. And it's just absolutely insane. So now that you've just put boogie board, uh, borders on the map here, I'm sure that they're going to win, Gino. Like, it's just going <laughs> to happen. Like, we're just going to we're just gonna carry on into the AM at this point. <laughs> oh, I believe it. I, I completely believe it, man. I mean... If there's a time, if there's a time for uh, for Boogie Borders to show, I mean, they got nothing. It, it kind of feels like they got nothing to lose now, right? So, yeah, uh, yeah why not? Why not show up? Exactly right. Oh, let's head on over, guys. This is match number ten, where anything could happen. Let's take it away, guys. All right, well, straight into things, and it is game number 10. I am going to be honest, I didn't think we would be at this point today. It might <laughs> not be uh, today for that much longer. There's six more minutes of today, so this will end tomorrow, basically. And, uh, well, geez, what a, what a day we've had, but uh, who's to say it's going to end right here? Indeed. Uh, there's, there's no guarantees, Elfish. Uh... Not in life, not in game 10 match point finals either, honestly. Yeah, indeed. Well, look, uh, I want to see what, uh, oh my what's God. going on with Legend Gaming right now. Because I can yeah. see uh, Wonton Dumpling and Legend Gaming are both... Uno uh, Reverse. Uh, you know what I wonder if they're doing? I think they might actually just be hot drop cracking. Like, they might actually be. be contest cracking be. against one another. For, because they know, they both know that they're going to go to land. Yeah, so they're thinking, we want to hold on to our position. We want to practice. And this is the best team to practice against. Let's see what legends are thinking. They didn't it. Just to see how that contest was uh, was going at the start. We didn't quite get it. Um, once on Dumpling, they won, but at what cost, Elfish? Because MDY Black turned up immediately after and are now chasing down the last member, Jackie Chan. Looks like he's actually going to get out, and because they dropped with Conduit, um, does potentially have a chance here uh, to bring that back up and get the reses. Yeah, you know what? I think I'm actually on. I'm onto something. I reckon with my theory there that they've just said we're both going to land. Let's practice our uh, our like contest because obviously at land you're going to get contested for your position, particularly if you're a lava siphon thermal station type team. Um, these are these are high value drop locations. So they've uh, decided potentially. I mean, I look. I'm I'm crafting this story out of nowhere, but this is my assumption that they're going to practice with each other and try to uh, give themselves some, some proper match practice contesting because that could go a long way when they do go overseas. So interesting. Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe I'm right. Either way, it's kind of cooked their game for both of them. 
Obviously, yeah. Legends didn't get much done in that previous game. They're not going to get anything done in this game either. And uh, Jackie Chan is the last one up for Wonton Dumpling, so <laughs> I'm just... not sure that he's going to win this game solo. I mean, it's a, a, like if anything's leading towards a game 11, it's it's the match point eligible teams just inting each other at the start of the game and knocking both of them out. Yeah. <laughs> oh my god. Ah, oh, we're losing it. We're losing yeah, it. Uh... It's getting, it's getting a long day at this point, but Bearclaw Gaming will be happy to see it because it means they'll still be thinking, you know what, we're in with a chance. We might still be able to take a position at land. Oi, oi, oi. Jackie Chan, still running, by the wouldn't way. Wouldn't you be most mad if you're like that team that's sort of sitting in eighth place because you're like, on based on placement points, because... You'd be like, well, if one of yes. these guys in first or second wins, then I'm going to go. But if True. one of these, like, APG guys wins or something, you know, you're like, that's my slot. No, that's, that's actually absolutely true. Yeah, well, you read what you sow, I guess. And if you wanted to have your own destiny in your own hands, you should have played better during the regular season. I guess that's the argument. And that's also fair. I don't think it makes complete sense. So, we're going to get an overlook zone. I don't know if we uh, got a chance to look at the map with all that craziness going on at the start. Uh, but it is heading very much overlook. Remember we saw a couple of those zones end out towards the rocks, like north of overlook and near the tower that we're looking at right now. Um, so there's a couple of teams uh, posted up out there. You got like Serenity, um, who I can't even remember after all that nonsense happened do they they did they reach match point yeah they did they oh my god they're up to mm. third spot now they didn't just reach oh, yeah. match point they yeah woof. they killed so many players they killed so many people when they were working their way through that uh it was it was kind of strange like they it's it was almost like no one even sort of recognized that they were there and they just got to do whatever they wanted and it was like match made in heaven really for another game yeah they do why black is out zip line up the leaderboard doesn't take much, really. Like, you know, one or two good games and you go from being a non-factor on the scoreboard to being toward the top end. Although, it is becoming harder and harder to have an impact in only one game yeah. when we've got so many that have been played. And that's like, that's the issue now for teams like Boogie Boarders, who we've obviously highlighted a lot tonight. This is uh, Cheeky from MDY White being a little bit sneaky down in the train tunnel. I mean, they're in a killer spot. Crossfire. Hmm. Overall, right? They're second. Um, incredible consistency from them. Haven't changed their, their comp up all day. Bang, Caustic, and uh, Crypto being picked for every single match, regardless of Stormpoint or World's Edge location. 26 kills on LD today, by the way. Wow. Damn. Still a good uh, Oh my god, that actually might be the most in the lobby. Nearly free a game. Really started yet? Really yeah. stable rotations coming through from most teams now. Still got a couple over toward landslide and staging that have yet to start moving. AGL's a little bit slow coming out of Skyhook as well, but again, this is this is kind of the nature of the beast. When you know that you're one of those teams that's going to be rotating later than others, you don't tend to leave as early. You do do a little bit more looting, you sort of have a bit more of a look around, see if you can sort of pick things up on the way. You know that you're not going to get to a strong position if you move quickly, because you're still, just by nature of having to travel further, not going to be one of the first teams into the zone, so... You've got to find your advantages elsewhere. Got to feel a little bit for War Monster Firebird, they're just... They're basically stuck in this eternal hell where they just have to keep playing these games that they're never going to be able to get anything out of. I mean, it's good practice. I, I think that's the way you have to take it, right? Like, yeah. if you're a team that is going to go the distance, that's probably the way that you do think about it. But it is getting quite long now for them. And uh, they definitely checked out a little while ago by changing that composition up. And, you know, obviously you can see... Even now, outsiders are going for something a little bit unorthodox as well. So zone pull back towards the tunnel. And you can see a couple of teams actually maybe uh, getting into it in the tunnel. You've got outside down there as well as Lightning Unicorn. 
But certainly most of the teams clustered up into Overlook. Uh, but it won't be a Rocks ending like we saw those other times. So we are getting a little bit of a change up here. Nice. Nice to have some variety. Just like we've had a variety of uh, of match winners over the last... I don't know. what, what eight, eight wins? I don't know. Has anyone won two games today, actually? That's a good question. I'm really starting to forget things which happened today. <laughs> uh, so Actually, sorry. It's 12.01 yesterday. Things that happened yesterday. Team Burger out! Okay. That's one of them. Uh, Bear Claw Gaming. Right. Yes, of course. Of course. Yep. But aside from that, what I'm looking at here is... Yeah, everybody's only 1-1. One, one. Mm. Only one that has 1-1 one, one has only 1-1. One, one. Anyway, one wants to Firebird. They've, uh... Come back to something a little bit more standard. Azu's on to Valkyrie, uh, but uh, not the most unorthodox of picks. I mean, hey, some kills for the boys. I feel like you're you're starting to get though, like uh, you get a sense that maybe the. The lobby's sort of changing up in terms of how it's playing. Like, we've got 15 teams alive yeah, now. Yeah, no, for sure. Like, some of that, uh, what's the word, mental resilience or consistency, I guess, as well. Yep. Maybe starting to falter a little bit. Like, people are getting tired. They're making sloppier decisions. And as a result, we're kind of seeing a few more earlier skirmishes. Yep. I mean, I feel, I feel like we used to have a break at six games. Um, a, a longer break, as if it was kind of like a match day. But, um... We did, I remember that. Yeah. Uh, no, just, uh, just plugging through it today. Um... Admin, admin, admin told me, you know, if it goes to 99 games, it goes to 99 games. It's uh, just what we do. Honestly, fair enough, because like these are the kinds of days that can really blow out. So if you then have a 20 minute break in the middle, it's like that's an extra long day. Um, and I, I think to be fair, there's also like an element of uh, it's like a test, you know, it's like which of these teams really is mentally resilient enough. This is supposed to be the hardest lobby you're going to play. It's not supposed to be easy. Okay, so you really have to show that you, you are worthy of making it to land. And this no. is a very punishing format to do it in. I'm not going to lie. There's no doubt about it. No break. It's hard. It's it's obviously late in the evening. We start at 7 p.m. Australia time, which yep. will be 5 p.m., 4 p.m., depending on where you are in Asia. Oh. You know, we're playing through dinner. So you just have to continue to show that, yeah, exactly. You, you can work hard to make it. No, absolutely. Some of those teams, uh, you know, that... Uh that are going to get through today are going to have earned it, right? And as Asia hits this ring console, he's going to get some great news. The zone has pulled back down on top of the tunnel. And that gives them a chance. It doesn't mean it's going to be easy to push through Lightning Unicorn, who are above them in the tunnel, but they're currently running with Purple Purple Red. Lightning Unicorn still very far away from Triple... Uh, on Triple Blues, right? And, and not anywhere close to Purple. So... Um, there's a chance here for Tom Young Kung to shove up through the tunnel, take that spot, and then be in a wonderful spot coming to say zone zone five. Um, this is so good for them. And as when you can see now, team? like you know, who else are we relying on here? VK Gaming, uh, SWQ, Warm wants the Firebird, AGL, Boogie Boarders, Dream Fire. So a couple of names that can definitely win a game here, but more than ever. It's likely that we're going to finish it here on game 10. I mean, yeah, that's true. But Lightning Unicorn... You would say Lightning Unicorn right now has got pole position, in just in terms of their map positioning. What I, I am liking uh, and appreciating about this from Tom Yum Kung is, if they are going to go through that tunnel with Lightning Unicorn, they are at least clearing out left tunnel as well, which they need to do to ensure that no one's going to come in behind them. So it's it's been smartly played so far from Tom Yum Kung. Keep going. Gaming is another team that we should mention. They've obviously man managed to make it to match point, and they're another one of those teams that would need the win to make it through to LAN. So it would be a very special storyline for those guys if they could make it happen here. Serenity trying to take up position up here. Might be thinking to themselves, ooh, we found a good spot. 
They don't have this own info. They don't know that they're going to have to move here. So they might have lost someone for nothing. APG. Not on the silos, but close to them. And then you've got Tommy and Kung making this very important push now. Lightning Unicorn with the EMP. They've got the grenades ready. Is that enough to push them back? Some good prowler shots to open this up. It'll be a lobby-defining push from Tom Yum Kung. They have taken a lot of damage on the initial engagement, but they've found a chance to reset. They certainly have the shield advantage over Lightning Unicorn, who are running triple blues. And for now, it seems they'll be happy to just play down on the bottom and allow Lightning Unicorn to play topside. Maybe I've lied. Tom Young Kung starting to have a little bit of a peek up. Slow and steady going, really. You, you've got to be sort of aware of every single angle as you make your way up that tower. But jump back over to Dreamfire, who are still hunting for some points. We're only on 36 for the day, which is quite poor considering. And again, this is especially how many games we've had. There's a big gap above them, right? There's 10 until they can move up even one placement spot in the in the leaderboard so it's getting it's getting tough out here now and dreamfire you know they weren't in a position like boogie borders where they only needed a few points they needed a couple to get up the top there Kuma gonna be taken down not match point eligible that is one of the few teams remaining that will uh keep this lobby going dreamfire on 36 points i mean Ooh! Okay, sorry, just saw something in shifting around on the map here. I found Boogie Board is in a good spot. Not only in a, a good spot, they're playing double Kraber at the moment. Ooh, that's kind of gross. Well, Dreamfire is not heading in the direction of Boogie Borders, which they will be happy about. They've actually set themselves up about as far south as they possibly can. There's uh, one of those Krabers on Pana. And the other one on Rafi. So that, I don't know how they managed to do that. Yeah, it's not like they've got a lifeline on the team, right? I mean, we're seeing a lot of interesting picks come in, you know? Maggie, more Crypto, Wraith. Heroes, War Monster Firebird, Dream 5, VK Gaming, all in the space of about 10 seconds going down. That zone shift is going to cost a couple more teams their lives as well as X and Y and Bearclaw Gaming join that party. It's not the kind of party that you want to be jumping into. MDY White also picked up as well. And Boogie Borders, <laughs> they haven't even really had to do too much about it. But here's where they get to pick a couple of those points up. Racky's literally just like looking at the uh, the cracks from his rolling thunder and trying to throw some bullets in. But before he even starts shooting his gun, they're gone already. I, I can see you like most of the lobby. So we just have to completely reset and reset our expectations here and see where we're at. Okay. Okay, don't tell me. Dude. Do not tell me this is the one Boogie Borders win. I mean, they definitely can. I mean, they're like they're in a killer spot, right? We said two Cravers, and not only that, but everyone above them. Every team from the North has just died. Boogie Borders have essentially this entire field to themselves. We've got AGL down the bottom. There's no shot. Uh, Lightning Unicorn. They got taken out. Not not taken out, but uh, definitely dealt with by Tom Young Kung, who are now trying to push up to APG. Uh, and, you know, when we look up the top gear to tell us which of these teams are match point eligible, guess what? There's only two left yeah. out of five. Two. And they're fighting each other as well, by the way. <laughs> it's Tom Yum Kung and KPG fighting each other. I mean, this is, I think, I, look, if I had to put money on it right now, I would be saying, next game, we're going to another game. Tom Yum Kung, he's on the floor, not feeling too good about things. KPG, they've only got triple blues. And they're running low on ammo as well. So it's not a perfect setup for oh either of those two teams. Also, Lightning Unicorn are finally going to come from behind and try to deal with Tom Yum Kung. So there's a threat coming through there as well. But that has been dealt with in oh. KPG. That would have been their moment to take the fight. The issue is that they are preoccupied Fussy. with what's happening outside. And it's oh really causing problems. I mean, okay, they're close. The boogie borders. They're close. They're 91 damage away from triple red now. KPG are pushing up towards him. They did some good damage. Fusty was a little bit too far forward. Struggling to get that health back up now. Does survive the Rolling Thunder. But they need to take out KPG quickly enough that Tom Yum Kung aren't going to be an issue. Yeah, the other Tom two teams got their reset. now on That's match point, right? Yes. It's only oh, no! that can force this through. And Rack Rack is gone. has been finished off. 
And ah, uh, with the Kraber unable to land a shot, this is where it starts to get critical for Boogie Borders that these two individuals can continue to step up. They need to get as many points as possible. Still sitting only 17 for the lobby. Is that enough to stay inside the top eight? Not sure, but they have their destiny in their own hands. They can force us through to a game number this 11. Is a top two. Tom Yum Kong have finished off Keep Going Gaming, and it is now their opportunity to finish the day right here, right now. And surely they'll do it. Tom Yong Kung are forcing their way through to the victory as the champions of game 10 of the APAC South Regional Finals. And they will take the top spot. Wow. Even with everything going their way in that last circle, eh, Boogie Board still can't cut through there. Grave is online. It's really all for Tom Young Kung. An incredible effort from them. I mean, you know, we saw they had to work their way through the tunnel. Uh, there was that surprise attempt there by uh, KPG. Oh, sorry, no, Lightning Unicorn coming from behind them. The the ghost of the uh, the vault. But in the end, they uh, they come out on top and we finish it finally, Lace, in game ten. Yeah, I almost thought uh, Elfish was gonna. <laughs> Gonna call it again with a Boogie Borders win. Um, you know, they were looking uh, quite strong there, sitting in that in that zone. And like you said, double Kraber in their hands as well. And they were hitting out huge damage um, on, uh, I think it was Keep Going Gaming. Um, but yeah, like you said, Tom Young Kung um, were doing work in that tunnel um, and just coming out the end there and just absolutely obliterating it all. Um, you know, that was match number 10. It's been completed. You know, we, we were making history here in Apex South where we, you know, had 11 teams with match point eligibility. Um, you know, we thought we were going to see the end of it all in match number nine, but Serenity pulled the plug on that. And then, yeah, I almost thought Boogie Borders were going to, you know, join in on that action too. But yeah, Tom Young Kung just uh, absolutely obliterated Zicky here, just absolutely doing work for the team. Um, you know, this was an excellent game from Zicky, solidifying them, I think, about fifth at the end of there. And uh, yeah, they've just been absolutely annihilating this whole time, Gino. Oh, it has been a big day for our Thai boys. And, you know, we, we, we definitely touched on it before. They have showed up at LAN. They've definitely got that quality to them. And, you know, they've it looked pretty damn pretty damn good the, the whole way through. So as we get a sense of our final standings today, Ooh. it's a win for Tom Young Kung. <sighs> not uh, not in, you know, with the most points. That glory goes to Wonton Dumpling, who will secure first place overall in the split. Congratulations to them. That's an amazing effort. And then going down from there, MDY White most likely punching their ticket through Serenity. Ah, uh, mm. with a massive shove uh, to not only keep the lobby alive, but keep themselves. You know, remember they were down in ninth, which might not have put them through. I think fourth probably will. Bearclaw Gaming, we said they probably needed to have a first, uh, a valiant effort from them, but I think they go down. Uh, Team Burger there, 73, most likely going through. Legends we know already are through. And beyond that, it's... It's up for grabs. I, there, there's what, like, what did I say? Three or four spots there, maybe? I think there's definitely another three or four spots here that we are going to have to wait to find out and see who makes it overseas. Exactly right, Elfish. How are you feeling and looking at this, going into, uh, you know, all the action that we've just seen today? Um, you know, I'm sitting here and I can't even riddle any sorts of maths to see uh, <laughs> who's going no, to slot in those possible. those spots there. Um, I guess it's just a waiting game now. You know, we've been uh, mm -hmm. waiting uh, about 10 matches worth um, to see who sort of uh, takes out those eight spots to land. But uh, yeah, how are you feeling, uh, I guess, after these 10 matches? I'm just a bit shook that we got so close to potentially going to an 11. <laughs> <laughs> that was so winnable for Boogie Borders as well. I just can't. I, look at me. I'm in a shambles at this point in time. I mean, the hair's held up, so that's really what matters. Nice, but, man. Uh, I tell you what, um, I did not expect to be sitting here at quarter past midnight uh, on Monday morning now uh, watching Apex still. I thought, you know, I, I was thinking <laughs> a seven, eight game day. We might, that's probably where we'll be, we'll be uh, sitting, but. Yeah, like exactly as you say, it's like it's pretty much impossible to really say who's definitely going through at this point beyond the ones that we'd like, like already kind of locked in. Uh, but we've, uh, yeah, we've got we've got not long to wait apparently. So. Yeah.
So our region has produced the likes of Moist Esports and Dark Zero teams who have paved the way for Apex South, allowing us to secure eight spots to land and doubling our prize pool for our region. The time has finally arrived for us to witness greatness in the making. Okay. Oh boy, Genome. That Ooh. is our top eight, and a couple of surprises here. Boogie Borders Ooh. do actually make it through by a couple of points. Maybe I was a little more worried about them than I should have been there. Up at 89, so th I mean, they picked up, what was that, three points or something, but it was still enough. I guess it was such a competitive uh, format today um, that just a few points does tick them over. This is probably one of the lower cutoffs uh, that we have actually seen. Yeah, this is uh, this is crazy. I mean, look, Boogie Borders, you're right. If they would have actually, I think just quickly doing my math there, if they would have been in 19th, they would have still just made it. But man, that was <laughs> that was definitely a tough day for them. Uh, it will hit the confidence. I feel a little bit bad for Bear Claw Gaming sitting there in 13th. You know, they they played their hearts out today. They won a couple of lobbies or a couple of games. They just couldn't win when it mattered. Same for Keep Going Gaming. They were pretty close as well in a couple of cases they were in the top three for that last game as well and it could have just as easily been keep going gaming in first and going through as the the automatic qualification and heroes missing out and and that's the difference that that kind of a result could have made but yeah for both keep going gaming and bear core gaming gotta say credit where it's due they they fought hard today but they weren't able to do enough and that's where when we're talking about it during the regular season we're saying every sort of game matters you can't afford to have a bad week this and that and they all sound like cliche statements but Tell you what, I've been around. Uh, I've been around esports. I've been around battle royales. I've been around Apex long mm. enough to know that uh, it is true when it is said, and that's exactly why. Yeah, I guess I just wanted to touch on as well, Dreamfire having a little bit tough mm. there. You know, they were looking like good contenders, but, you know, sitting in 11th, um, unfortunately not making it through to one of those spots. But, you know, that paved the way for Heroes um, to move from, you know, ninth up into one of those slots, Genome. So yeah. it's just it's just great play from all teams. I mean, yeah, there's a couple of those players, right, that we haven't seen, I think, since Sweden. Um, so, you know, the Revenant team that, uh, that actually showed up, that scared some people that want some cool fights. Um, back there in our first LAN post-COVID, uh, you know, that's where, uh, that's where we've seen Lahim at LAN before, um, Bastion just having a look back, uh, he was on a Dewa United back then, so again, um, I don't think we've seen him at LAN since then, uh, either, uh, and then Kissans, I don't think maybe ever has actually made it to LAN, he, um, uh, but of course, he did win the, the 2021 championship uh, when he was playing for Wolfpack Arctic. So, you know, they've, they've seen some heights before, um, but, you know, it's just all about getting over there and experiencing that, uh, that fun with the crowd, which none of them had because we didn't actually have a crowd in Sweden. So that's going to be a new experience uh, for all of them at LAN. And that's the, that's the fun of getting these, uh, these guys over there and, and, and letting them compete with the best in the world. So... Uh, big congrats to those guys, uh, you know, sticking it, in, uh, sticking it out for that, what, like year and a half or something since they've had that big shot. Yeah, exactly right. And, you know, until we find out where land may be, you know, these teams, uh, you know, still have a lot to sort of, uh, I guess, come together and get sorted. Um, you know, we've had such changes in Apex recently with Season 20 um, coming in at a mix. So, you know, they, they've not only had to fight for these spots and, uh, you know, take themselves through to land, they've just had one of the biggest season changes that we've seen at Apex Legends. Um, but, you know, that hasn't stopped these top eight teams going through to land like they just managed to be able to absolutely hone that create a meta that you know we see a lot of teams using now and you know that i'm sure us apex players and the people at home are gonna you know definitely take through um to us playing the game also elfish but um you know, it's it's just been such a great time. Um, but we're, we're going to show you some fun little things and uh, take you through some of the, you know, the, the great highlights that we've seen from players and teams with some stats here. So we'll jump on over to that. Um, but, you know, once we have a look, you know, we, we have seen these people before. We've seen the name Gugu. We've seen the team once on Dumpling. And again, huge numbers in damage, Elfish. Yeah, just not quite hitting the 10k, but solid, solid stuff indeed. Across the entire season, Gugu, not just in the regional finals, was a force to be reckoned with. Uh, there's no doubt about that. I mean, I think you have to also give a shout out to both Sharky and Heck, who I think kind of performed above expectations today. Both of those teams 
look, I mean, Burger we thought probably would be in with a pretty good shot. Bear Claw Gaming, I don't think would have been on anybody's lips. So especially Heck being able to put that kind of damage number down in the regional finals. Really, really impressive performance considering it's, it's the best teams in the region. And yeah, it didn't amount to, uh, unfortunately, a, a position overseas, but it was a, a mighty fine effort. I mean, I know we're not in Rostamania territory just yet, but I'm just looking at these numbers and saying Hex doing pretty well there. I wouldn't be surprised to see him on another roster come split two. Um, you know, there, there's always there's, uh, you know something to be said about you know keeping the roster together and, and growing together. And obviously they had a good result today on Bear Claw, but yeah, with uh, with that big performance uh, on the big stage for Heck, uh, that's a that's a bit of a signal, uh, I would say. Yeah, exactly right. And, uh, you know, we, we we tend to always see like Easy Flash Kid up in there as well. And I'm sure, you know, with uh, more progress, we're going we're gonna to be seeing that name in the top damage hitters also. But uh, yeah, it's been an absolute exceptional day for all our teams. Um, yeah, imagine going to another game like that would have just been absolutely insane. I know we're getting a little bit tired here and I'm sure people that have been watching from the first match till <laughs> now, you're just like, is it over? Is it ending? You know, but it's just the passion that we, we have in this region. And, uh, you know, like like we said, you know, we've 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 had Moist Esports, we've had Dark Zeros come out of here, but yeah, now you're going to see some more teams that, you know, could potentially reach uh, you know, those those masses and Tom Young Kung um, absolutely exceptional from wow. them today. Just look at that, you know. That's interesting, isn't it? This is the you know, the path of victory here. Yeah. Don't win mm. a game until map ten. And, uh, you know, definitely had a, uh, a couple of uh, clangers as well. But, uh, you know, it was sort of four good games out of out of ten is enough to get them through there uh, in the end. And, well, we have to take our hats off to them. They second in points overall. Uh, and, of course, yeah, winning that last game is, is what counts in match point. Yeah, I really got to say a big props to Zicky on uh, Tom Young Kung. Zicky, Zicky definitely did hold it together for that team you know hitting some placement points so you know i'm sure they're going to give uh, ziki a big pat on the back but uh what an exceptional day for all our teams one heck of a split guys it was so tight for our teams at the end there such talent coming out of this region and we now have our team solidified for LAN. everyone give yourselves a pat on the back we are the long shot production uh a big thank you to the people behind the, uh, the scenes as well. We also want to, you know, say a massive thank you to them for making everything um, become a reality and having us uh, do all this sort of stuff now. Um, you know, and and as we as we could tell, you know, this region is exceptional. We're going, we 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 have such talent. And now we just we just look forward to land, right, Lace? Uh, you know, it'll be uh, what is it? I think it's maybe two months or so, or so from here um, that the uh, the split one playoffs will be happening, and we'll get to see obviously those eight teams that we just sent through on the big stage um certainly some of them are going to perform uh apex south always seems to, to do very well we often get quite a few of our teams into those final lobbies so if you're an apex south fan make sure you uh you look out for those announcements and follow along for when we do get to see the uh the bright lights shine on all of the best that we have in this region Exactly right. You know, we've had it in London uh, and, you know, it's been in, in America a couple of times. So I guess we just got to wait patiently to see where they might be having it. I'm hoping for Japan, but you know what? It, it may not happen this time around, but you know what? Only time would tell. Um, but thank you so much, Genome and Elfish. You guys have been absolutely exceptional. So a big thank you to our casters. And of course, a big thank you to everyone behind the scenes that we've had. And also a massive thank you to Play Apex for allowing us to be on the channel and showcasing, you know, what our region can do. Um, my name is Lace. I've been your host for Split One. It's been an absolute privilege and pleasure being able to bring you all the action for Apex South. I hope everyone has a wonderful rest of their day. I know we're sure going to go to sleep and we will see you next time.